though. As I mentioned, uh, Evan Bancroft, the, the Doughboy Doctor, usually comes in about 3 o'clock. And it is a true anomaly. It's Sinfield to take up the attack from the, the southern end. But at the moment, not a lot of breeze. There's a lot of trees around from, oh, I suppose, from the clubhouse all the way around to the netball courts. Sinfield. Quickish ball! Beats the outside edge of the batter. Look <laughs> off Usman Kawaja. Usman Kawaja still standing. Can't believe what happened. Yeah, young, young Jack Sinfield looking forward to uh, catching up with the youngster. Came into the scene late last season. Still in grade 12, so juggling uh, end of year exams. And well, That's and a chance. Oh, it's dropped. Good start here from uh, Sinfield, Billy. It's the second time we've seen one just fall short. Good little test for the uh, bowler against Kawaja. Doesn't mind playing spin a bit. Sinfield again. Lachlan. Sorry, uh, this one Kawaja on the back foot pushes that out to point. Probably have to get up the other end and have a look from that end what Sinfield's doing. I think might have been, was it uh, Usman Kawaja hit one to mid off that just fell short as well? Yep. Yeah. So he's. I say it's two lives, but nonetheless, Sinfield again. Push that one through a little bit quicker. Half an appeal going down the leg side. Yeah. Well, Jimmy Pearson. To the 18 year old is, uh, yeah, certainly making, making the batters think a little bit about what's going on out there. He's coming round the wicket with his off spin, which will be there to really straighten things up more than take it away from the left hander. But he's getting the ball in towards the batter and not giving them a lot of space to do too much. So square leg has gone a little bit squarer. And that's going to find finally just inside. They're going to throw it to the uh, the non-strikers end, but Beef makes his ground. Good over this one here from home. Uh, Sinfield, outstanding. Everybody guessing. Moving the field around, almost like uh, Brendan McCullum chasing the field every ball. <laughs> around the wicket again. That one's been pulled over mid wicket, and that's six. That's the first six of the morning. Just gets over the rope here. So, well, he asked the question of Usman Kawaja, and Kawaja replied with a six. You just, yeah, just undid a lot of the good mm. work in that over that last ball. Just a bit short. Kawaja, quick as a flash onto the back foot, just rocked back, got underneath it and helped it over the deep mid-wicket rope for the first over-the-boundary mm. score of the match. Oh, look at this. Bushka right in the middle of the bat, and that's a long boundary down there. It's gone for six, so, yeah. Good start regardless, I think, from... Uh, yeah, no, uh, I'd be Sinfield. very happy yeah. with what he did in that over. One for 61 off 12 overs, just... Going at that five runs and over mark. Good start by the um, away team after having lost the toss mm. and, and being put in. I suggest they would have batted, Valley. So I could be wrong on the on the well, consensus. Thought. Generally, both sides that win the toss, they usually bat first. Especially in a in a one day game, you want to get the score on the bound yeah. on the on the book first. Honan pushes that one in. It's going to come off the hip. Pearson does the fielding. It's got a leg bite. So they just, yeah, like you said, going along nicely. They, I was on the call there with Evan Bancroft suggesting they'd be disappointed with winning the toss and bowling first. They didn't get a wicket, and then the next ball they get Lachlan Pfeffer. But now into the into the 13th over, and still only one wicket down. Kawaja looking very, very confident. He, he takes strike. He just dabs at all the time in the world there from the class act that is Usman Kawaja. Another single. He knows where the bats are, where the fieldsmen are. He's making Simon Malenka have to think about his field placements now, Bill, because uh, it's so, so easy. And again. Short ball, pulled down to fine leg. Again, one more. So six runs and over, you're going to get yourself a pretty good total. Certainly are. <coughs> And another one of these good youngsters coming through the Redland system, just pretty unhurried run-up, quite ec economical. Mm. 
gets a bit of gets a bit of pace and bounce being a tall fellow and, and pretty strong across the chest. Something of, not since the very first ball from Simon Malenko, Billy Dean, have we seen a Yorker. I really would like to see pitch it up into the block hole and see what you can get. See if there's any swing out there. Because at the moment, it's anything short of a length, and Usman Khawaja is just putting it wherever he likes. Jack Beath, he's starting to get a lot more confidence. He's on 19, so taking a long time to set their field here. Remembering they've got to finish by 1 o'clock. It's an interesting field. Just put a very deep mid-off on the rope. See, now they're not too sure. See, their third man is actually in no man's land. Now, I don't know where he's supposed to be, but anyway, he's... he's come up to just inside the, uh, in the circle. circle huh? That's gone straight past him, four runs. Picked the gap beautifully, Kawaja, <laughs> between that third man who just came up and... Um, Marnus, who I think said a gully, so it's a short third man in the gully there and, and picked the gap, bisected him like it was a uh, grade 12 geometry exam. <laughs> Amazing shot. Look at this in the KFC replay. Goes back into his crease there and just drives it through. He didn't play it very hard, Billy. He just ah, glided. It was, it was all, a perfect shot. It was all risk. Yep. But, again, that's the Kawaja formula. A very risky player. Third man's on the fence now. They still have a war, very wide gully in Marnus. Honan pitches that one up. Finds mid off for no run. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, young Malenko just yeah, not quite sure what to do with Kawaja. The, the, the Valley's batsmen have been uh, pretty unsettled, unhurried through most of their innings. Mm. Beath took a while to get off the mark, but he's got himself up to 19 off 29. Kawaja right. eyeing that man at deep point, Billy. Here we go, short ball. That's going to be your wait for square leg. Say something. It was a pretty slow <laughs> full toss. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't exactly say it was dangerous because no. it, just, it just tennis balled off the wicket. All right. What have you got now? I hope he's not... Uh, He's just a little bit timid now. Stick to his game plan. That's a lovely ball. That's going to be straight driven to mid-off. No run. So, good comeback. You've got to try and forget who's underneath the helmet when you're bowling, Bill. Uh, that's the case. One for 69. Comes off the 13th over. The uh, opening day of the KFC Queensland Premier Cricket. Kookaburra one-day cup match. 50 overs each side. Here at the Peter Burge Oval. Redlands playing Valleys. Yeah, that's when out. It was Lachlan Feber caught at, well, it's caught by the keeper, James Pierce, but he took it in front of first slip. And that was the breakthrough that they needed. He's on 10, Lachlan Feber. Not quite the explosive start as he accomplished last year, as we see... Sinfield again, oh, just outside the bat of beat. He wasn't sure what to do. They just, they haven't played him that well. At, and again, that was a nice one. Just a bit of movement, mm. enough, just to take it away from the edge. Played down the wrong line, really, Beath, in the end. Around the wicket, it just smothers that one. Yeah, you know, apart from that six, Billy, it's been uh, quality from Sinfield. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's been good, and again, I said it a little earlier that maybe pace off on this wicket might be the key. Yeah. Agreed. Right arm around the wicket. Quicker ball. That's going to be slashed and well fielded at that cover. No run, but full face of the bat there from Beath. Again, Redlands in that true tradition. You put your better fielder, best fielder in that cover area. Lemon Shane there. Yeah, just shoulders, arms, with respect from Beath. Pushing Beath back into the crease now, but keep her piercing up. We're having a bit of a chat. Quicker ball. It's going to be squeezed out to Brennan at mid wicket. No run. Getting through the over rates, which they probably need to because the Honan over seem to take an eternity to set the field. So. Sinfield, last ball of the over. K 
comes out of his crease, belts that one straight down the ground, half a chance, splits it. Oh, he's safe. What's oh. happening down in the corner there? It's crazy stuff. In the end, I think it's six runs, but wow. What are we playing? Volleyball here at Peter Birch Oval. Well, it's gone for six in the end because he's dropped the catch over the rope. Oh, ordinary stuff. I think that's well, he sure should have was, taken that. I'm sure if it was ordinary. Well, I don't know if he expected the fielder to actually catch <laughs> it to throw it back in. I don't know whether the breeze might have pushed it back in. I'm going to jump out here. Evan Bancroft's going to jump in here, and he's going to try and make sense of what happened just then. As we look at the replay here for KFC, he's come out of his ground, beat, belted that right down. I thought it was six for all money. And then boom. Yeah, it was last minute where his fielder actually got to the ball to catch it. Knew he was going to land on the ground, threw it up in the air, which I think his teammate wasn't quite aware. He did get his hand to it, but not enough to stick it in, and I think he would have carried it over the rope anyway in the end. It was a great effort, Billy. It was, um, he, he dived full length for that and flicked it back in. You see a lot of those catches now happening in, the, uh, in T20 cricket and one-day cricket. Lachlan Hone in the bowl. Little push down to, to third man. Valleys are going all right now. One for 75 or 14 overs, Billy. They've got a, they've got a, no wickets uh, for quite a few overs now, and they are going okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, probably not where Redlands thought they were going to be by putting them in. Because no. the Valleys have got, last year, what did they get? 428 in one innings last they sure year. I'm not did. sure they're going to get that Here's today. Again. Hooks it. It'll be one bounce down to fine leg. And back in, nice throw back to Pearson. Honan just trying a bit hard there. He's, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, Billy, he is a, um, a really good bowler. He's worked on his cricket in the last few years. He's a regular in his first grade Redlands, Redlands side now. And um, lovely fella who just uh, just works very, very hard. Yeah, he's quite, quite an economical bowler in that there's not a big long run up. He's not f sprinting in or anything. Just all power at the uh, at the crease. Sure is. He's into bowl now. Oh, that was that just held up a little bit. He, he he rolled his fingers over the top of that one, and Kawaja, who's set, was um, was just had to check his shot a bit. That was very well bowled. And we've seen a bit, as we've said a few times now, the pace off seems to be the ball that troubles the batters. They're getting onto it early. Um, and just hitting it in the air or playing and missing. He sure is. That's a nice pull shot from Kawaja just for one. And just dropped a bit short there. Maybe a plan. We've got a mid-wicket there that's sort of just be in front of square and a deep mid-wicket. And Kawaja just knocked it over the top of the first one. One bounce out to deep mid-wicket for one. Yeah, the catches out there are back rather than up close. Beef back on strike and just plays it gently down on the onside. He'd be happier with that one, Honan. We have a quick survey of the field, no slips now, just the uh, the only field of behind the wicket in that area, the, the keeper and a point, and a point right on the rope as well. Yeah, Cover, got... mid off, mid on, square leg, and a backward square leg, fine leg. Yeah, very well bowled again. No run, very well fielded too by Malenko. At cover, saved one. Smith was out there on the deep point boundary, as you just mentioned, Billy. And it only would have been one, but that can make the difference at the end of the day. Just a beautiful day down here oh, at Redlands. Locals have turned the weather on just nicely. A nice little breeze uh, blowing in from the bay. And lots of people here, lots of old boys, lots of Redlands old boys. I've run into a few down here already. I see Terry Swenson, the CEO of Queensland Cricket, is here with a few of the other luminaries from Queensland Cricket. I think John Salter is on the board there and also a life member of East and Redlands Cricket Club is uh, on his way here too. John, former state halfback, a fine rugby league player in his own right as well, Billy. He was. Doing a great job on the, on the board of Queensland Cricket. And we've got a lot of politicians here and that's a lovely shot again for one. Probably uh, fair to say that Jonathan Salter was uh, the last of those that could do both summer and summer cricket, winter rugby league, it, it, or, or, or any ball code in winter. Nowadays, it's, it's been incredibly difficult to do both well. It sure is. Here's Sinfield. He's just 
last year, just you still a grade 12, Jack. He, he gets more revolutions, or it, very similar revolutions to Nathan Lyon, and he just needs to hold it back up a bit. Sometimes he tends to push it down a bit. But that was well bowled. This is next year as a 17-year-old just turned 18. Yeah. He didn't play a lot of grade cricket last year because he still had to play the, the school GPS competition. But I'm very happy with the way he's bowling today, and I think this year will be a big year for him. Uh, he's done very well. Oh, big he's, shout. He'll be back at school on Monday telling his mates that he bowled to Kawaja. He did, and he's just... And that was one there that I noticed that Beath... Beath is a bit close to his body, but very well bowled too, and he's getting a lot of... A lot of grip and a lot of rip in Sinfell. Oh, that's super leaf. That was beautifully bold. So after that other one, Billy, he's pushed that one through and he's just given that one a little bit more air and said, come on, have a go. I've got two. I've got deep mid on, deep mid wicket, deep mid off. Take me on. He's done very well to these two left-handers. It's always and a challenge sometimes for the off-spinners to do that. Coming around the wicket and more straighten it than anything. And... And he'd be, off with a nice over. He finished off that over. Three overs for 15 and in one day cricket. Okay, he'd like probably be 10, 10 off three. But that was his best over his bowl. And he that over he did slow down a little bit. He's just taking his time. And at 17, 18, you're playing in this sort of level. You're playing and you're bowling to Kawaja. You, um, you can sometimes just, as an off spinner, get three overs a little bit too quickly. So I'm going to send Lachlan Honan again to bowl. He's at a... Um, He's bowled very well so far. One for 79 off 16 overs. Still got the deep point out there. And the plovers seem to have died down a little bit, which is a good thing. I think they're getting a bit tired of attacking. Can't have a sleep, plovers. Dismiss yourself, otherwise, uh, here's Hyun. To Kawaj, he just pushes it down the gully to. I'd like to see just an attacking catcher. In that still a bit defensive to Kawadri. He can just ease the ball around without any problems to keep the scoring going. Just something just to make him feel a touch of pressure at the moment. It'd be just, it's just like a net session. Yeah, you're probably right. I think you, it wouldn't hurt. Here he is. Oh, that's it. That was a, a late... Tried to square drive it, got it a bit late and nearly put it into Gully's hands. And uh, Kawaja sort of just hand on hips there, a little bit disappointed in that shot. It was a single. But you're right, Billy, it doesn't hurt sometimes. I know in one-day cricket and you can and test cricket this happens where you can sometimes just let things go along a bit. Oh, brilliantly fielded by Pearson. It certainly was great wicket-keeping effort. He's come along in the last couple of years, Pearson. I mean, his effort for the heat last year, finally getting discussed. Yes. Um, at a level where he could go to the to the next step. We all know here, as Queenslanders, what a great cricketer he is and what a great keeper he is. And bats very, very well as well. And it's great to see him in. I still think he is, should be in the conversation as a next, next test keeper. Oh, brilliantly fielded. Well, the, Timmy Payne's certainly coming to the end of his test career. Um, and I'd love to see... Jimmy Pearce and not go down the same path that Chris Hartley and Wade Seckham did where it should have been picked, never did. Very disappointing and it's so hard with a the keeper, there's only one spot yep. and there are some magnificent keepers around the country at the moment. He's just thrown that in there. Well, a bit short, deliberate though, he's got the deep mid-wicket there, hoping maybe that Beath might have knocked it. Hit of the bit here, got a bit of a top edge, taking a few, and I like Honan having a bit of a crack, trying a few different things. And that's what he's been doing in the last few years. He's, he's cemented his, his place, as I mentioned earlier on. It's great to see him um, in playing at this level with this sort of a competition today. And that's just cut down in between the two players. It'll be two runs to Kawaja. Great arm by Smith. And yeah. clapped by his teammates as well. Bit of a big field here too. It's not, not a small oval. The boundaries are set well back, but uh, you do get value for your shots because I don't think there is a uh, single, not even a hint of an ant's nest or anything on that field, so everything is just billiard table smooth. Yeah, we, we are very lucky. I play, still play a bit of veterans over 40s down here, Billy, and it's, um, it's always a pleasure to play on this ground, and we occasionally get to, um, to play on it still. Quite often we're out the back on the number two. But when we do get to play on the number one ground, it's fantastic. And a lot of the old uh, 
East cricketers that I played with are still down here. And we catch up and Bruce Schmidt and Paul Stenhouse and a few of those guys. Brian Brooks is down here today that played in the 89 Premiership. Great to see Brooks here along. And it's just a great oval. And you can actually see that here. So we've got Sinfield bowling again now to Beath. And just lays back and pushes it out to deep cover. No, it's actually fielded there by Marnus. Love of Shane, who is fielding well. I love seeing the attitude of a, a test cricketer, a superstar, playing club cricket and just going hard for his teammates. Just looks the level of the other players up as Sinfield around the wicket. Kawaja back on that back foot, plays it out through point. I think about two, they'll just stay at one. Good, good quick bit of fielding. Good arm by Baisley, and that's again, Sinfield's just again pushing that off spinner down. He just needs to get those fingers a little bit looser. And give it a bit more air. He's got his deep mid on deep mid wicket. That's a better ball. He's got the breeze blowing from his right to left, which will sort of, if, yeah, as you say, if he just gets it up a bit more air, will bring it in, and then maybe the odd one that'll spin back away. Yep, you're so right. And he pushed that one down. It was full up, but it's down the leg side. And Beast has helped himself for two. Kawaj is looking for three. Coming back on it, Kritzinger throws, and an easy, comfortable three to Beef, who moves along to 31, batting very well off 49, Kawaja 41 off 37, and Sinfield again, get through this over, 3.4, two balls to go, work hard on these next two, work very hard, that's what he's, that's what he's thinking, that's what Jimmy Pearson's saying to him. Changing the field a bit. Good, he's slowing it down a little bit. That's that's what you do. But take toss take this some one of that nervousness out of his play. Again, too short. A little bit short. That's a great pull shot, but he'll be very disappointed with that one. But he'll come back. He's got another ball to go. He's bowling to one of the the best cricketers in, a, in Australia. Averages, as we mentioned earlier on, averages 40 at test cricket, test cricket, first class cricket and shield cricket. And here he is playing at Peter Burge Oval today. Sinfield, one ball to go. And a, just a one run to Kawaja. Out to deep point. Baisley throws it in on the bounce to Pearson. End of the over. And that's a drinks break. A well-deserved drink. It's a... A little bit warm, not too bad though, Billy, is no, it? Today no. it's a nice day, a little bit of a breeze. No, it's, it's perfect, we perfect weather for cricket for the opening day. The uh, KFC Queensland Premier Cricket watching Redlands take on Valleys. As the uh, players come on for drinks, it'll be an opportunity for us just to take a, a little pause and we'll be back as soon as the players have finished with their drinks. Short ball smashed through mid wicket. That will go all the way for four runs. He got that one out of Brendan McCullum chasing the field every ball. <laughs> Around the wicket again. That one's been pulled over mid wicket. And that's six. That's the first six of the morning. Just gets over. Brendan McCullum chasing the field every ball. <laughs> Around the wicket again. That one's been pulled over mid wicket. And that's six. That's the first six of the morning. Just gets over. He's come up to just inside the uh, in circle. circle huh? That's gone straight past him. Four runs. Picked the gap beautifully, Kawaja, between that. Anyways, He's come up to just inside the uh, in circle. circle huh? That's gone straight past him. Four runs. Picked the gap beautifully, Kawaja, between that. Sinfield, last ball of the over. Comes out of his crease, belts that one straight down the ground. Half a chance, splits it. Oh, he's saying, what's oh. happening down in the corner there? It's crazy stuff. In the end, I think it's six. Yep, you're so right. And he pushed that one down. It was full up, but it's down the leg side. And Beast has helped himself for two. Kawaj is looking for three. Coming back on it. Kritzinger throws. And an easy, comfortable three to Beast. Who moves along to 31, batting very well off 49. Kawaja 41 off 37. That's out of his play. 
Again, too short. A little bit short. That's a great pull shot, but he'll be very disappointed with that one. But he'll come back. Are we on? Okay. Players back on the field now, and I'm joined by Terry Swenson, CEO of Queensland Cricket, who's come down to Redlands today. Terry, how are you? Okay, Evan, good. It's, uh, well, cricket season's here, and uh, what better game to be watching than uh, Valley's first Redlands here, and Usman seems to be making some... Uh, you know, so runs 46, but hopefully we'll see him pull up a, a 50 pretty quickly. Batting very well too, Wasman. He um, took his time to get into the game. And what about fantastic crowd down here today too, Terry? It's that you must be so happy. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, uh, you know, amongst uh, many things going on in the world at the moment, it's fantastic to have cricket back. And uh, and I know all the, all the team have been looking forward to playing today. And, of course, we've got our women's first grade kicking off tomorrow as well. So um, some fantastic sport being played in South East Queensland. Honan bowling to Kawaja. S big slash. He want to get his 50 to take a bit easy there. But he has batted very well. The wicket's starting to play very well. Honan's bowled well. And um, we had a, had a moving moment earlier on when you arrived here for Matty Conwell. And it was great to see the Redlands Club and his um, honour him again today and the Valleys Club. And it's great that his, that his uh, family are here as well. And it's great to be with Kayo. Fantastic. We, uh, we're certainly grateful for, you know, all the work that Kayo have done over the last couple of weeks to, you know, get the, get the game up and running or the coverage up and running for us, uh, you know, today. And, and uh, you know, we'll partner with Kayo throughout the season to, um, you know, bring some great cricket to, to fans that can't get to the ground. He's home into Kawaja and he's hit that beautifully and fantastic fielding by James Baisley who is diving around. I love seeing the big fast bowlers diving around Terry. It's great out there. Yeah James has been around for a, a couple of years now. He had a had a breakout season last year didn't he? He had um, you know some terrific games for the Brisbane Heat. I know there are a few games that he would have liked to have done a bit better but um, he's put a lot of work in in the off season and uh, we're looking forward to seeing James uh, back at the Brisbane Heat this summer. And it's pushed on the leg side by Kawaja. Run out chance here from Kritzinger. Hits the stuff direct, but home. Actually, that was Drennan, Lee Drennan, the keeper, who keeps when Jimmy Pearson's playing shield cricket. And mentioned early on, it's great to see keepers fielding. They love it, don't they? They just love it. They do, and... Uh, and, you know, speaking of Jimmy, he, he also had a breakout season last year as well, didn't he? Scoring that 100 in, uh, in, in Adelaide. Um, well, you know, I'm hoping the Australian selectors are going to look much closely at, uh, at Jimmy this year. And uh, I don't think he's too far away. He isn't. We did, we did discuss that earlier too. He is a uh, very, very good keeper. Beef just pushes it down and well fielded in the gully there by Marnus. What about Marnus bowling his meds earlier on? I was just saying, when you're a test player, you can bowl meds, leg spinners, whatever you want to do. Someone asked me uh, probably about 20 minutes ago, where was Marnus, where was he fielding? And I was looking around and I wasn't expecting him to be bowling and there he was bowling. Uh, captain's brought him on fairly early. He bowls a good med actually. He does bowl a good med. Honan again to bowl to Beef. Oh, that's out. Leg side. There's the wicket they needed. Redlands needed that. It was a very important wicket and it's an awful way to get out, leg glancing. Awful way to get out. And Beast batted very, very well for his he 31. He bowled and Redlands, so though, very happy with that wicket. Just push it down the leg side. You'll see the replay here, the KFC replay. Great to have them involved too. Here it is, just pushes it down here, and he's got a, a fair bit of bat on that. Very well taken. We are just talking about Jimmy Pearson, and the way he gloved that, just took his time. And for him, he made it look comfortable, even though it was quite a difficult catch. Looks like he's in some fairly uh, early season form. Uh, yep. Jimmy with the gloves, which is uh, fantastic. And 
You mentioned KFC. Um, look, they've been long-term supporters, uh, supporters of uh, us in, in Queensland here, and it's, uh, it's great to have them as the Premier Grade sponsor uh, for this year. No, it sure is, and it's... Um and to have them, and also Skyfleet too, you, you, and now the, it, they've done a great job in the last few years, aren't they? They're a great organisation, great great car. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Andy and his uh, a team at Skyfleet, are, uh, again, have been terrific supporters, not only of Queensland cricket, but also of the Bulls Masters. And um, Skyfleet, of course, this year are uh, first grade uh, naming rights sponsors. So um, uh, we're incredibly grateful for the work that, uh, that Andy and, and his team do at Skyfleet. So Jack Sinfield's on to bowl. It's the end of the over, and we've got Jack Wildermuth that's come out to join Usman Kawaja, and it's great to see Jack batting at four. Had a pretty good year last year too with the ball and the bat. Here's Jack Sinfield to bowl to Kawaja. Lays back, cuts straight to, to Manus, throws it back to, to Sinfield. I was just saying about Sinfield, before we talk a bit about Jack Wildermuth, he's a great young bowler, and I think the next couple of years that he's going to come on. I love seeing that air. I love seeing the air. And then that's just what he's got to do. He sometimes does because he gets those revs and he just tries to give it too much. And he's bowling to a guy that can play spin as well, just in case. Well, he's certainly testing his craft now, isn't he? Love that. Love that. We've got a deep mid on and we've got a deep mid off. He'll probably come back for two. No, he won't. It's brilliantly fielded down there on the boundary. And Jack Wildermuth again. Another cricketer now. And he's, he's 28, 29 years of age. This is a time. He's already played for Australia in T20 cricket. But just a good, good lad too, isn't he, Kerry? He's just one of those hard workers. Will do anything for you. Ah, uh, exactly. And uh, you know, he scored a pretty good hundred, didn't he, against um, you know the India A team uh, last year at the SCG. And I remember Jack saying he got in the car, drove all night, then down to Canberra uh, and played the the next uh, next night for us at the Brisbane Heat and, and had a pretty good uh, pretty good game. But um, yeah, he's a super talent. He just got to take his time. Sometimes he does go a bit hard, a bit early. Yep. Just. Pushes that round on the onside to Malenko. And the, a couple of times he's done that last year, but I think batting up the order, he scores a lot of runs in, in Premier Grade cricket, and he's got some very handy runs in Shield cricket too last year. Yep. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. So, so, so the young fella now, young Sinfield, still at school, is now giving it a bit of air. He's got a deep mid off, he's got a deep mid on. He's got a deep mid wicket. Throw it up. His new batsman in. That's great. Great bowling. Don't let him get off the mark. Fantastic. And that's the end of the over. Very well bowled. I think, um, you know, even with Osman out there, he's probably still the best player of spin in Australian cricket. Uh, and uh, and with young Sinfield certainly bowling to, to Usman, uh, let's hope he tests him a little bit. And what I love about Malenko is he's given young Jack a deep mid off, deep mid on. And he's, and he's giving him some support and saying, toss it up. You know, that's sometimes I think skippers can say, oh, we'll put a deep mid off. We won't bring him back. You've got to bowl properly. And I think what he's doing for them is giving him a little bit of a, a, little bit of a shield. And, uh, yeah, mate, so Queensland cricket, we're here today. There's games on all over, all over Brisbane, Terry. And um, we've had a bit of a, obviously, there's stuff that can happen. It makes it a bit hard sometimes with, with COVID. But we're starting on time. It's great. Yeah, it's fan fantastic. And um, I was down at the Gold Coast yesterday for the opening of the new Dolphins Clubhouse. And... Um, and they've done a terrific job down there. And that's another good ball by Honan to Kawaja. And he's just holding him up a bit. I was watching this a bit earlier on. His change of pace is fantastic. And that's why he now belongs at this level. And it's great to see. And Kawaja, who's set on 48 or 47 balls, still that time had to, had to check his shot. So if Honan just tries to bowl, don't try and bowl too many. Okay. We'll field it again by Manus. Just finish it off. Yeah, so we've, um, you know, all first grade uh, men's are playing, uh, you know, this weekend. Uh, I was just talking about the Gold Coast then. They're, they're playing uh, Wests uh, down at the Gold Coast. So the majority of uh, the Queensland contracted players are, are playing. There's a few of the guys out with injury uh, to, today. And we've got our selectors around at most grounds taking a look at the, and taking a look at the that. talent. Pushes that out to deep mid wicket, and there is plenty of talent. And it, it is so difficult at the moment to get into into that state side because we're strong. Well, we're the current shield holders as well. Exactly uh, competition right. holders both in uh, men's and uh, and and women's. Um, you know, we're holding the the Ruth Pretty Shield for the first time in our uh, in our women's program, and of course um, having Georgia Redmayne. Um, 
announced uh, last week uh, to uh, join the Australian women's squad that will um, play against the Indian women both in Mackay and also the Gold Coast over okay. the coming weeks. Fantastic. That was fantastic news. The female game is just incredible. Isn't it? It's gone to new heights. And that's a lovely way to get off the mark by Wildermuth. He's just hit that through mid-off. Lovely drive. It won't go all the way. Well fielded down there on the boundary. But he will come back for three. Nice throw down there from... I think that was Kritzinger down there. But, um, yeah, no, that's fantastic, isn't it? And last year, with winning those two great trophies was incredible for Queensland cricket. Yeah, it was. And... Um and also, both in our men's and women's Brisbane Heat teams, we uh, we finished third. So, um, you know, participation rates in Queensland continue to grow, particularly female participation. Uh, we've been fortunate from a COVID point of view that we're, uh, you know, back on the park, um, you know, this weekend. And uh, we're looking forward to a, a fantastic season ahead, both at, at club and junior uh, participation, um, but also here in uh, first grade as well. The... Um it made for a long Peter Burge medal when you win all those awards last year. <laughs> so many of them. And there we both Nice bouncer. That was fantastic. I like to see a bit of that from, from Hone. And he has got a quicker ball, but he bowls that quicker one. And there it is. Great to see. Great to see. And again, what we did mention, we've got politicians down here today. The mayor's here. How good's that? Yeah, we, we're, we've got... Um, we enjoy some really great support from all levels of government. Oh, he's given him another one. And when it's, um, you know, when cricket's Australia's favourite sport, it's um, it's pretty, pretty easy to attract a crowd from time to time, isn't it? So. It is. And, and I just, as again, we're probably going on a, a bit about it, but to have the, the quality of cricketers that we've got here, you know, eight, nine first-class cricketers, one of the greatest test players in the world at the moment, averaging 60, Manus Lubbershane, and to have them all down here at Redlands and have the crowd that's turned up here, I mean, that grandstand's nearly full. And you've got people all around the ground. And I'd say there'll be a lot more down here this afternoon. I've, many people have said they're going to get down here. I know a lot, of, a lot of your board members have said they'll be here later on. And um, it's just great to see Sinfield a bowl again. And uh, that's fantastic. Terry, great to see you, mate. It's great to have you down here today. And thanks for coming along. Thanks very much, uh, Evan. It's great to, great to be here. And uh, thanks to all the listeners. And we're looking forward to a great season ahead. Thank you, Sinfield. Bowls. Again, Lubbershane picks it up, and uh, he's done it well there, and he's, it's fantastic bit of fielding. Sinfield starting to bowl well here. Wildermouth working into the game, working into his innings, and just needs to slow down a bit sometimes as he plays a sweep shot. Lovely shot down to Honan. As Billy joins me again, great to have Terry Swenson to have a chat to us today about what's happening in Queensland cricket, Billy, and coming out to... Have a chat on KO Live. We'll have cricket royalty um, to sit here at a club level. It's great, and to get the insight on um, how the men's and ladies' games going right across cricket, not just at the elite level, but all the way down to, to junior level. I've just been looking at the numbers of kids that are down here grabbing their photos. It is great, isn't it? And there's a bit of clapping going on there. Now, that's not for you, Billy, is it? It um, must be for someone else that's come up into the grandstand. No. Here's Sinfield again. We've got Sam Hazlitt down here, I did see today, who's actually out at the moment. He did a... He's hurt his finger. Going for a catch last week. So that'll be... Redlands will miss him in this innings, in the chase later on. He was a huge part of their success last year. Well bowled again by Sinfield. Just check Jack Wildermuth with his shot. He was looking to push through mid-wicket. Ended up hitting it straight. He got one. Back to Kawaja, who's gone to 50. He's got himself up to 50. The score's up to the two for 101. Both lots coming up in this over. And he's just taking it down there for one. He'll look for two, Willemuth. And he's coming back. No, he's not. Good decision. May have been looking for another batsman. He would have probably been run out. So well batted by Kawaja. It's a great innings. He's 51 off 53. The score is 2 for 102 off 22 overs. And he's just working his way into it. He'll be looking to, to score a big 100 today. And that's the end of the over. And we're looking for 
Honan again. He's going to keep bowling. One for 21 off six overs. It's been a great spell, and he has slowed down this Valley's charge. They were starting to get on top. And at the moment, two for 100, two off 22. It's very even. Just drops that down for one. It's run out opportunity. Again, pretty easy pickings for uh, for Kawaja. If you go and run a ball, and they're more than happy just to drop it and keep the scoring rate going along. He, um, yeah, he's just working it now, isn't he? Yeah. He's just working his way through now. Just a bit of an extended net session for... As Brad Wigney walks past, one of the Redlands coaches, former South Australian cricketer, great cricketer too, and doing great things down here at Redlands. He's had a lot to do with their success last year. A ripping bloke, and um, good to see him involved with our club down here at Redlands. As Honan bowls to Willemouth. Just pushes it down to point. Again, he held that one up. You see that, Billy? He's yeah. actually... He's got the quicker one, but he's also got that, that slower one. And for a guy like Honan, he's not a super quick bowler, but you've got to be able to adjust your pace. And that's something that's make a big difference to his cricket. I think the last, the last few years ago when he was just coming through, sometimes was a bit same paced. The bowling for these guys, you need to be very well bowled. Very well bowled. Even though Willamette there may have thought he should have got, put that away. It was just drifting onto his legs. Yeah. But he's just come in. He's going to take his time. And I'm enjoying what Willamette's doing at the moment. He's always a better cricketer when he takes his time getting in. Quite often you see Willamette score runs when a side's in trouble. When they've gone in and they're doing well, Willamette sometimes plays for the team, gets out. That's a lovely shot too. Well, it's going to be an interesting thing when the uh, when the Bulls squad's announced and Shield Cricket starts in, in only a handful of weeks' time with uh, the Bulls at Ian Healy Oval for their first home game of the season. See where they bat Wildermuth in, in the list. He's, he's slowly working his way down the list and, and I think he truly is a true batting and bowling all-rounder and, and could well end up becoming like that Shane Watson-type player. Here he goes. He just digs it into the pitch. Bit short, and he's looking for two. He won't get two. Not on Smith's arm. Probably got away with that, but it was the slower bouncer. Yeah. The reason is you, it wasn't the quicker bouncer. If there's a quicker bouncer, if that's short, he may have gone all the way. But Wildermuth had to check his shot. And we've seen that the Honan's bouncer has been pretty slow most of today. There's not the pace coming off. He's, he's not as quick as what the uh, Baisley had been from that end, where Baisley was getting it to fly through. Here he is again. And that's a lovely shot for one. Out to Liam Smith. The clubbers seem to be having a bit of a spell at the moment. They're not going too hard on Smith, who was, has been very courageous out there. He's been swooped by clubbers all day. But he's been very courageous. That was one run. That's the end of the over from home. And one for 23 off seven. And they're good figures. They are very good figures for the, uh, the youngster. First, first game of the season. I know the boys have been having a few practice games, but uh, first game of the season always brings just a tad of extra nerves and and uh, and pressure to it. But yeah. we've seen them step up. We've seen the batting um, by all the Valley's players. While a few of them haven't quite kicked on, they've all been batting quite well. It's been a good week for them to start the tournament on. And I want Sinfield to get some air. This over, he has his deep mid off, he has his deep mid wicket, he has his deep mid on. Throw it up, put it on Kawaja, get a catch down to Smith. And he just pushed it outside, lovely cut shot. He'll come back for two on Baisley's arm. It gets home pretty comfortably. Knew Baisley was off balance when he was throwing, so he knew there was two to come back one to. One short, the umpire calling one, one short. One short. Other you don't see that very often, and Kawaja no. will be very annoyed with that. Well, he was the one that ran the short. He is. It was called by the uh, bowling end umpire. You don't see that very often, Billy. Nah, a bit of lazy running. Can only be angry with himself because uh, he took the run off himself. He did. You imagine running all that way, 41 yards. He's run, not 44 or 42, and he ran all that way up, all the way back, and um, they tell you one short. Sinfield around the wicket again. And that's lovely. That is great bowling by Sinfield. And he's working his way into this 
spell now. He's gone for a few, but he's 6.2 overs, none for 32. Just keep working hard. You can turn this around. Go for 40, 45 off your 10. Keep working very hard on your... Yeah, push that one through nice and hard. It'll only be one this time. It's direct to Baisley. Baisley's armour is very good. Through to Pearson. I may be in the minority today, but the, uh, one of the people I've come to see is Cameron Boyce. Um, we're speaking of spinners, and uh, Cameron Boyce has been one of my all-time favourite spinners. Um, uh, I read that story about him last night. He's had a real battle, Cameron Boyce, yeah. and it's fantastic that he's playing. He's just dropped that one to the, onto Wilderman's legs. He tried to go a bit hard, ended up just taking it a bit later, down for one sweep shot for a single. He played for Australia in T20 cricket, and... I probably think that he should still have got a few games, but again, some of the selections not quite going his way at that international level. Went away from Queensland, to come back. That's another well. Last That's season, very, very well bowled, and he had some issues last year. Um, we thought he was having heart issues, and ended up being there was some anxiety. No, it was, panic attacks. He thought it was anxiety. He was having a lot of that, and there was a problem though with his esophagus. So he had some issues that they found. Which has turned it around, but he was he was in a bad way. I read there was an article writ written about Cameron recently, and uh, it's great to see him back playing. He knows what's going on. That was what was going on with him yeah. now, and um, he was struggling for a little while there. And it's just fantastic to see him because, for more reports, he's just a ripping young bloke. Yeah, no, great, and been part of the lineup of, of great spin bowlers that Queensland's produced over the years, going through well currently with Mitch Swepson and Nathan Horitz. Cameron Boyce between being between um, Horrocks and Swepson for a number of years in the Bulls lineup. Haven't got some great leggies. And talking about leggies, I think we maybe no, it wasn't. I thought Manus was going to have another bowl. Who's yeah, they, they, they've got here? him up, but uh, he's he's come back up. I'm not quite sure who's coming in. This might be. Yeah, Lubbershane. They, they thought it was Lubbershane as well, but it's not. So the scorers thought it wasn't, but I think we've got... Um, this might even be Connor McInerney. The South Australian who's uh, it is. decided to uh, make home in Queensland for a little while. I, um, I, I do know most of these blokes here yeah. being a Redlands player myself in the veterans cricket, but I hadn't seen Connor McInerney, and he's coming on. Mainly Bats from South Australia... He's come in because uh, he'd been in Darwin playing the uh, T20 winter season competition that was up there, and a, and a few of those players have come back to base themselves in Brisbane to get some cricket in. South Australia's still in the grips of uh, AFL season, so they don't get the access to the cricket pitches as much as we do up here. Here he goes to bowl, little left arm orthodox, not a bad start. Has played shield cricket. I've seen him playing shield cricket, and... I hadn't seen him bowl in shield cricket, because that's what threw me. He just <laughs> traditionally played as the batter. Yeah, that was a very good start. He tossed it up. Kawaja went for the big drive, missed through to Pearson. Little left arm that a little bit spin. of air as well, too. What a great start. Two balls, no runs. Again, Polenko dives. And taking the pace off the ball. Moving in again. Oh, that was a bit shorter. Kawaja hits down to deep mid on. Drennan throws it back in. Testing out the arm. It just held back on him. He nearly hit that straight back yeah. to the bowler, Billy, didn't he? Well, we've seen that through the, the ball that's troubled all the batters most of this match has so far been the one without the pace on it. Basically, Malenko early yeah, certainly got some pace on the ball. And it flew through, but it didn't necessarily cause the problem that the slow ball has with the timing of the batter's shots. And that's exactly right, Billy, and um, it's a good start. So again, Connor, a bit like Sinfield, he's got a deep mid on, he has a deep mid off, he's got a deep mid wicket out here. Throw it up. Wildermuth, as much as we know he's a great bat and he hits him well, he still has that, occasionally has that bowler mentality that wants to go and hit it long and hard, which he can't do. Yeah. But give him a chance. That's why they're out. Long boundaries, hitting into the wind a bit too. And lovely cover drive straight to Kritzinger. 
Is that the crit singer? Um, yeah, I think it was. Here he goes again. Finish the over off. Pushes it to mid on. Malenko at the moment would be very happy with this over. None for one off five. Bringing his uh, South Australian charger on. And another dot ball. Look at that. Five, six balls. One, one he pushed down. The other five, Billy, gave it a bit of air. One run off the over. But it's tempting. They're like, will I go? Will I, will I go? Won't, won't I go? And he didn't go. Well, you come to the uh, halfway mark in the Valley's innings at two for 111. The 30th over is the, uh, the, the, the magic over where we double the score, and that's normally where they'll end up. So they're certainly on track to get a score of around 280. Oh, yeah, they and are. I figured it was about, when I walked in, it was about a 280, 290 pass mark, both in the, uh, the wicket and the outfield. So uh, it'll all still be done by... Redlands when they get a chance to bat. They did. They chased down 330 against North in that one-day final last year, and with the batting, which they didn't have then, they they didn't have Lubbershane, but they now... Actually, they did have Lubbershane. didn't get any runs, but they had Hazlitt. We haven't got Hazlitt today, no. but we've got a couple of other new ones. Talk about Lubbershane. He's coming on to bowl his leg spinners now. He came on earlier on with a few medi medium pace overs, and he's bowling his leggies to his Queensland teammate, Usman Kawaja, who's on 58. Off 63 deliveries, and Manus is just checking his field at the moment, pushing Drennan back around a mid wicket. And he's just getting ready to bowl. And oh, he's bowled him straight through it. Isn't he happy? <laughs> just runs down the over that one, Isman Kawaja. He did play over. Look at Marnus. He's jumping around. He's just like he's just got a wicket in test cricket. It doesn't matter what level he's playing. He'd be playing fifth grade down the park, and he'd be carrying on like that. You'll what see, a great bit of bowling, though. You'll see on the replay that it took the top of middle stump. And just Kawaja sort of rocked back, but no real footwork. And Ooh, just, it did come back a bit, though, didn't it? Just, a bit of turn. Just played all over it. and. Great knock by Kawaja, 58 off 63. He'll be disappointed for getting out after doing all the hard work and also probably getting out to his state teammate, yeah. Manus, because Manus will let him know about it. Well, he'll hear about it for the rest of the season um, in spite of whatever else happens. But it was just, just a lazy bit of footwork from Kawaja. He sort of neither went forward nor back, tried to play it from the crease. And a uh, bit of extra bounce probably didn't help him that much. Great to see Andrew Goads come into the crease. Um, had a... A fantastic great career. He got he's given away the two two day cricket this year just to concentrate on the one the one day cricket and the smaller format of the game, the T twenty game. But it's great to see him playing. You don't want to lose players like Andrew Godens and it's he's had a tough one. He came in a, as a cricketer into great cricket when there was such a strong Queensland team. And he's one of those guys that you always see that people are talking about on, on social media and that how unlucky he's been. Mm. But he's coming in to face Manus. Manus has one wicket off his first ball, and Godie and Manus, I think, are pretty good mates as well, so he won't want to get out. And he likes to hit the ball, so he's got to work his way into the innings. Fantastic start by Love Shane. So we see a uh, fairly traditional field, no slip, but a, a gully, well, actually, probably a more of a four slip, maybe a short third man, gully, cover. And a cover point on the rope. Then we've got a mid-on, mid-off, back on the rope as well. Square leg. Manus is changing around, just pushing Kritzinger around behind point. And also Macken, he's pushing him around a bit too. McInerney, but he's in deep mid-wicket. Baisley, he's just pushed about three yards. So he's just changing around. Some of that might have just been more for theatre. Slow goat up a little bit. Oh, and very well bowled. Well, Go Godie, Godie was in to take him for all, everything, the cleaners and that delivery, but nearly yorked himself. He sure did, Goad. A bit of nerves there. Yeah, lovely shot. Off the mark, just one down the deep mid off. But well bowled again, Manus. As we talked about with young Jack before young Sinfield, he just needs to give it a bit more air, and this is what Manus is doing now. He could go. If they get a good shot, he could still go. Deep mid on, deep mid wicket. Deep mid off, deep cover. Take one, guys, if you want one. Or if you want to go along, have a go. Wilderness to uh, face up. 
Manus just moves the field again, just, uh, I think, as you said, for theatrics. Yeah. Well played by Jack. Nice. Watched it onto the bat all the way. Hit it down to mid-off. Just takes one. Need to settle back a bit. Now, as you said earlier, Billy, three for 113 off 25.4 overs. But you don't want to lose that next one. Three doesn't sound too bad. Four, you're starting to look at all-rounders. Especially when you haven't got to the, the true turning mark of the 50 overs being over 30. Yeah, very well bowled again and brilliantly fielded by Lee Drennan in the covers. A lot of footwork coming from the Valley batsmen at the moment. They're not prepared to either go down or, or play right back. Just trying to play him from the stance more than anything. You're sure right. And that again was well bowling. A little bit of rip there from the last one from Manus. Just beat Drennan. Out to the deep cover boundary for a single. Fantastic over. A couple of runs, a few runs off it and a wicket. And the very important wicket of Usman Kawaja. The wicket they needed. He was certainly in for a big hundred, Billy. Yeah, he certainly was. And Kawaja, um, sorry, not Kawaja, I think Manus is one of those bowlers where you don't necessarily want to get out to him. He's not, he's not technically one of the best leg spinners, but I think the batters go, well, I can't afford to get out to him, but I really want to take him as well. It's funny, though, he did, he did first come into that test side mainly as a bowler. Yes, that's right. And batting down the order when he went on the on a tour to, I think, Pakistan or India was one of those. Yep. And um, he bowled very well over there in those first few test matches. But now in the side as a batsman, as a <laughs> averaging 60. And uh, what about the career that he's putting together at the moment? Well, he's become like Steve Smith. Steve Smith came into the Australian side as the spinner who could bat a little bit. Now he becomes the batter that barely bowls his spin. Sure, he sure does. 1,885 test runs, 500s, 1050s, a 215 high score. McEnany coming in to bowl. Just a nice little push down there. Averaging 60. 12 wickets. Thanks, Billy. Johnny, welcome back. Lovely little sweep shot by Goad. Didn't get a lot of it. Good wicket, mate. We needed that one. Redlands, not we. Ooh. Redlands needed that one. That was a bit am, of a... Am I talking to, uh, am I talking to uh, Evan Bancroft or Phil Gould? <laughs> that, What's sounded, going on? that sounded a bit like that, didn't it? You've got to be bit. very careful of that one. Most certainly. But, uh, yeah, they certainly did. It's, uh, especially after winning the toss and deciding to bowl first. And what I meant was we needed it for the game. <laughs> tell, tell to the judge, mate. Tell to the judge. <laughs> McEnany. Oh, very well bowled by McEnany. And pushed away too. Run out chance. Makes it home. Go just was sitting on his bat a little bit there. Yeah. And he knows that he's run through about another 30 yards because he's probably thinking that could have been in a bit of, I could have been in a little bit of strife there. Yeah, Andrew Goaty's always had trouble with his knees over the last couple of years. It's sort of forces of time a little bit early, obviously with family commitments as well. But obviously uh, being a batsman and a bowler, I can recall him playing the, the grand final at uh, Allen Borderfield for four days on Uni Mass, 600 odd overs. He, he bowled about 40 overs and you could crack an egg on the back of his neck. The redhead. <laughs> he's, he's just pushed that one away for yeah. one. So, he's, so you can see he's just labouring a little bit uh, because of that. that Injury now he's starting to, to work on. I don't know whether that's a hammy, maybe he has got a dodgy knee. He's, um, as you and I do, but we've uh, <laughs> we've, we've got 30 years on. We're a long Andrew. way past that. He bowls well. He's bowling well. It's the second over. His first over, as I know you were watching before, John, was a very good one, McEnany. And he's come into the side from South Australia. He's been up in Darwin playing cricket. And it's fantastic to have him here. He's come in for Sammy Hazlitt, who's out and injured with, a, I think, a broken finger. Or we might even have a quick chat to Sam later on. Yeah, broke his finger at training during the week. I wouldn't be... A bit of there. Brilliantly fielded again. There's some great feeling there by Manus. And yeah. well bowled. McEnany, none for five of two overs in the middle of the innings. I think that wicket of Kawaja, that does tend to slow him down. They're trying to rebuild again, Johnny. As always. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Sammy has to break his finger on purpose because the surf's up. We know he loves his surfing. Sammy's probably busting some uh, some goofy foot stuff. Uh, he's actually here, so that's uh, throwing that theory out. But uh, yeah, obviously you lose a wicket and obviously Kawaja, you're going to slow things down a little bit in uh, in their run chase, but yeah, they just keep bringing the, uh, the talent. I mean, Andrew Gody and Jack Wildermuth, I mean, you know, Andrew Gody probably just 
Sananis. Full toss. Unlucky not to have played higher honours. Yeah, we just mentioned that earlier mm. on. It's it's um when you have them in every every era of era of cricket, there are blokes that miss out. I mean, over the years and some of the guys that have scored so many runs in the play the shield game, it's sad. Oh here we go, straight up here, here's a chance. Deep mid off running in. Oh, and he's put it down. Well, that's the one you didn't want to drop. Well, it's gone a long way into the air, uh, Bangers, and the other thing is the breeze is starting to pick up here. So it was like a big Gary Owen bomb. There's no sun to come into. He's a bit disappointed down there in the deep there, but the breeze is starting to pick up and just swirling conditions. Yeah, Goad um, came back for two. Just took his eyes off at the last minute there and uh, just what didn't watch him in the hands, but everyone drops him. Yeah, you've got to move on. Oh, that's a beautiful cover drive by Goad. <laughs> That'll go for four. That's he smashed everybody. that. <laughs> that was a beautiful shot. And again, Manus is just thinking about, oh, I should have had him out. But he'll keep working. That's what you do. It's part of the game. And Goad will now... It's interesting, Goad just decided to put one along the ground that time. Just wondering why Manus has changed to his legs. Quick ones at that. Ooh, he's he's gone up. Big <laughs> shout. <laughs> it's funny. Martyrs has gone for the appeal. The umpire's on, on his way to uh, on his way to uh, Capalabar. <laughs> he um, no interest. And <laughs> it was a good shout. It was a great shout. KFC something. replay here. No, Here's that's the replay the, of the catch. That's the catch, and just when you see that, just unfortunately, yes. He just pushes it out, will him out the deep mid wicket. Baisley with a great arm throws it back in over the stumps. Disappointing. Drop catch in the over. Few runs off at a great four by Goad. The score is three for 126 off 28. Willemouth 10. Goad's 10 off 12. Good start. All right, we'll go around the grounds of the KFC first grade and. Uh, Toomble, after winning the toss, chose to bowl first, have Sandgate 5 for 90. University of Queensland won the toss and chose to bowl as well, have the Northern Suburbs 5 for 106. Winner Manly won the toss and chose to bowl as well. I'm looking at Billy because nobody's actually won the toss and decided bat yet, and they have South Brisbane 5 for 102. We'll what, happened come back. what happened to batting first? McEnany bowling again. He's had a great first two overs, bowling to Wildermouth. Yeah, well bowled again. He's just holding that up. Wilderness is not sure at the moment. I think he's thinking, this plate's a part-time. I wouldn't mind taking him on. Mm. Rain affected down at uh, Gold Coast. And Gold Coast won the toss and chose the bowl there as well. McInerney back. Cuts. Out to Baisley. One. And the Bulldogs are one for 22. And out at Sunshine Coast. Won the toss. Chose the bowl up against the uh, Hornets. Another one. Two for 133. Ipswich. So... Probably back Not five. one person. You don't know. You don't know. We'll see the end of the day. They can change. But obviously good wicket out there. McEnany bowling again. Now to Goad. Goad goes long. Gets it fully. And that's at six. Honan ran around. Just got it underneath. He scooped it. But a scoop from Goad can still go all the way. And that's six to him. And a great shot. Yeah. Andrew Goad hitting with the win there. Uh, maybe the shortest boundary on the ground here. But Andrew Goad is absolutely... Loving this KFC replay. He's, uh, he's put it on a bow. Merry Christmas, Andrew. Just made it into a fully, didn't he? Yeah. Just used his feet. And he just checks that one too. Yeah, he plays on uh, he plays his ball on, on its merits, doesn't he, Andrew Go? He's just a class act. He's a great play. Great to see him come back and, and play. You know, he did retire and he's going to play the one day cricket. It's fantastic. And there he goes again. Oh, great feeling. Just the one run. You probably have to work on those. You'll be careful those singles now with those injuries you described earlier, John. Um, he's just, his running is not as quick as it used to be. So sometimes the judge of a run, you just got to say, okay, I'm not as quick as I was. You've got to be a bit careful. McEnany to Wildermouth. Well bowl. Looking for one. <laughs> nope. No chance. Yeah, well, that's right. He's got a bowl as well later on. It's Andrew Goody. That's the end of the over. But uh, Jack Wildermouth has obviously, you know, got a couple of feet on uh, Andrew Goody. Yes. Gets down the other end a little bit quicker, so they might be having a bit of a chat about this. Mate, I'm, I'm dodgy. Look, 
It is a hard one when you've got guys that are, are very good runners between the wicket and have a bit of pace in their legs and someone that's not a great runner who mightn't be as fit as... Mm. And you've got to work on that. You've got to know your batsman at the other end that he may not be as quick. When you get two quick ones, fantastic. Beautiful. You see, uh, Marnus is already there. He's, he's on red cordial with that water, Marnus. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's chicken. As man. I said, did you see how he, how he celebrated that, that wicket? As I said, he would have... wouldn't matter whether he was playing park cricket out at Charleville. He'd still celebrate the same way or test cricket. Here he is again bowling to Goad. Pushes that one through a little bit more. I think the Meds earlier, he did bowl pretty well in some, with, with the Meds last year in a few club games, John. And I think just with a, just one short bowler here today, he thought he'd have a couple of overs early. But his leg spinners um, are coming into, into four now. We'll be interested to see whether he throws this one up. Which he did. Goad's got that. I'm not sure whether he has all of it. Big. He just he just cleared the boundary though. I just saw it got held up in the wind a bit. He would have been a little bit concerned if Goat gets all of that. It's it's at, at Cleveland. It's, not, it's, it's, it's on. It's going to catch the 11:33 uh, to Cleveland. Yeah, wow. There was a little moment there where Andrew Goatie was probably thinking, "I hope I've got as much of this as I can." But he out at six. It's a long way down there. It is a longer boundary. Back cuts. Out to Smith, one, and good sensible cricket. <laughs> now Liam Smith's got a little um, fan club down there, which is probably pretty happy they're there because they're taking the attention of the plovers away from him. Mm. Man, it's a bit short that time. Back, cuts, that will go all the way unless Smith gets to it. No great effort by Smith, but it's boundary four to Goad or to Wildermouth that time. Great shot by Jackie. Just laid back and hit that through point. Cover. Yeah, Marcus, too wide for that one. Too short. Jack Wilmoth all the time in the world to put that one to the fence. He had to dissect three fieldsmen. Becomes an expensive over now as he tosses this one up. Another great drive. Straight. And that's four. You got a deep mid off, a deep mid on. They didn't have to run too far. They were no chance of getting to it. Jack Wilmoth and Andrew Godey are going to take on the Redlands attack and they're murdering Marnus Labashang at the moment. Yes, Marnus is pretty happy getting rid of Usman Kawaja, but since then he's been made to pay by these two batsmen. And well, Andrew Gaddy won't have to worry about running between wickets if this keeps up. It's expensive over at the moment. Marnus finishes it off. He'll toss it up again, though, as he did. Jack just pushes forward, thinks we've done enough damage in that over. Dot ball, give me another over, Simon. <laughs> and I think that may, for, for the moment, I'd say that Marnus may have a little spell. But you I'd never know. That, so they have to. But they you never know. Three for 150 off 30. And as we said, as Billy said earlier on, you double that score. That's the old the old way of sort of judging it. It's changed that a bit, but that says 300. I think they're looking at a lot more than that. And they'll yeah. need a lot more than that out here today. I believe the shot here from Andrew Goaty just gets over the, yeah, over the just, fence. Just over the fence. I think the rope's supposed to be similar all the way around, 10 metres in. It sure is. So we're 30 overs into the game. Valley's District Cricket Club are three for 150. Wildermouth is 20 off 27. Godie is 24 off 18. McEnany from South Australia. New <laughs> signing for Redlands. Will be bowling. Has already bowled very well. And that's a better ball too. Just tossed it up a little bit. Andrew yeah, Godie said, get back there. Jack, I'm not going anywhere. And the crowd is just building up, John. There, there's quite a lot of people. I noticed that the... Um, here he is again to bowl. Charges, gets it, and got all of it. That's going to go straight into the side screen for six. Straight. What a great shot by Goad. And he's working his way into it. And he was dropped a couple of overs ago. He's moved along to 30 off 20, and I think he wants a bit of McEnany. He darted that one in a bit, as I would have, after getting hit for a straight six. And yes. he, he just he plays every ball on merit. Not often he premeditates, although that previous delivery took him on. Back cuts, another lovely shot by Goat. He's looking for two. He won't go for two with that. He would have got two many years ago, but his, as you said, his legs are, seem to be struggling a bit. He might have a little bit of an injury. 
If you've got a bit of an injury, that's when you just go long, isn't it? Totally. Just take well, I'll give you, uh, at the end of the hour, I'll give you a perfect example of uh, one. He just pushes that one out. Oh. Well, Phil by Drennan. Um, young uh, Jack Prestowich uh, playing against University of Queensland. Cramps both legs. Couldn't run. So he just tees off. He gets 96 off about 30 balls. Didn't run once. Is that right? Just teed off. Just pushes that back down. No run. It's actually interesting that one of the um, board members of Queensland Cricket has just turned up. I've seen him here, John Salter. Oh, yeah. Played a bit of rugby league for Queensland. Mm. He cramped up one day in a game at university and he fell over about eight times running to get the ball up the final leg round. It was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was very funny. Well, I, I was talking about, uh, I just saw Jeff Tees, the former CEO or, or president of the University of Queensland Cricket. I think they're going to have drinks. A little bit of a drink they're running out, out there. Yeah. It, yeah. Jeff Tees was out here. That was good to see Jeff out here. Jeff Tees. Played for East Cricket Club many years ago. Did he? Uh, he played like, two years ago. He was asked to come on and play fifth grade and he made a 50. And he could not work for three, walk for three weeks. His calves blew up. But I, mean, I, believe any, I didn't think Jeff Tees had any calves. You seen the size of him? They're like chicken legs. He looks like he'd walk around in the shower. Yeah, he's, um, he's, uh, he, he, yeah I'd rather feed him than me, that's for sure. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, he, 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 uh, I think he's got a job with Cricket Australia now as Jeff Tees, which is fantastic. Mate, he, yeah. he's a fantastic, fantastic human and a great administrator. And you need people like that. It's great to see actually Greg Rowell now too on the Australian Cricket Board, who is a... Yeah, I think uh, to get on to work for Cricket Australia, you've got to be over uh, six foot six. <laughs> I think so. Malenko's brought himself back on. He's yeah, decided that Marnus needs a spell. Yeah. And he, he got that wicket. And um, Malenko needs to bowl. This is three for 158 of 31. And that last few overs, Malenko, uh, Goad and Wildermuth have gone harder. In comes Malenko. Bit of an inside edge there. A very important over this, I would say, John. Yeah, Malenko needs a, a breakthrough, break this partnership. I wonder if a funny story about Greg Rowe. Yeah, tell us. He, uh, he ran for mayor, as you remember. He did. He got how many votes in the year? Well, it was funny because, as we see uh, Malenko. Oh, that's straight Out. down his throat. Oh, oh, no. Is it six? No, four. It's gone for four through Baisley's hands. He... He ran in, thinking it was going. He'd got all of it. He hadn't got all of it. He got it on the bottom of the bat. And it, he basically got to him a bit quicker than oh. he thought. A bit slower than he thought it was. Here he is. And the KFC replay just ran under. He got underneath it. Reds will be very disappointed with their fielding today. Yeah, straight through. Chance here. Manus throws. Oh, well fielded. That's well. Come yeah, back for had, two. I think he had to have a crack. Mm. I think if he hits, he's a chance. But he do come back for two, though, and it's getting a little bit loose, the Redlands. They've dropped two catches in the last four overs. Well, and the closest one, they the, the high catch they took was when they caught it over the boundary. Actually got more hands on that than the, uh, the that, previous two they've dropped. That was a great effort, that one. Here's Malenko. That's, that's gone. And there's nobody there. Is he running around? He didn't get that either. Here's Baisley. Whoa. Nearly ran him out. Goad was going back for two. And then Wildermuth said no. Goad's in a bit, of, in a bit of strife here. There's something not right there. And he's in a bit of pain as Wildermuth walks down to this. Says, are you okay, mate? And he says, not sure. Yeah. In the quiet. words of the former president, I'm not a doctor, but he is in a bit of trouble. Well, okay. He is a slow ball there by... <laughs> and now he's put him on... He's put a single on him again. Mate, there's going to be words of drinks. <laughs> and Manus picks it up left-handed. There's going to be words of drinks. <laughs> he's not right there. I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't think it's... Jimmy Pearson's asked him if he's OK. Says retire hurt if you'd like. But he won't. Not go. Tell us about Greg Rowell. Oh, Greg Rowell, yeah. Um, Andrew Cordes usually does the MC. You did a great job this <laughs> year. Uh, MC for the Peter Burge Mill. Andrew Cordes is probably, I don't know, not allowed out of his house. No. Nah, nah. um, and he had a bit of a sledge of Greg Rowell as we wait for Simon Malenko. Oh, lovely shot by Goad. And just, he's got, there is some sort of an injury going on there. 
And Andrew Quarters mentioned what a great crowd we had in tonight here. And he said, I think there's more people in here than voted for Greg Rowe. <laughs> It was, I did hear that one. It was very, he's a very funny man, Andrew, Andrew Cordes. Cordes, yep. And he's doing a great job on, on radio at the moment. So uh, they're having a bit of a spell here. I think Goad is going to just check himself. I'm going to have a bit of a break, let Billy come back in. Yep. And, um, yep, great stuff. Good on your bangers. Yes, uh, Andrew Goady. Well, every time he goes down, it seems that Jack Wilhelm calls him through for another quick single just to make him, uh, keep, him in, keep him honest. But Andrew Goady is uh, he's a tough unit, but the knee did worry him the last couple of seasons. I was a little bit surprised he could continue playing. His really good friend Luke Feldman uh, retired from first class career two years ago and then played for Valleys for a little while and now Luke's given it away altogether. I thought Andrew may have followed him but he's out here playing white ball anyway. McNeely comes in. That's a foolish ball. Cotton bowl, is it? No. Well, he's asking the question. Is McInerney uh, bump ball played straight into the ground, that one. That's so you'd, be up, you'd be upset if you are given out on that one. That's a good question. Gee, he's ahead of it. As you see McInerney around the wing, that's a sweet shot there. That's four runs. Good shot there, Andrew Goady. You don't have to run for that one. We mentioned this on the call in, 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 during the Sheffield Shield, uh, Billy Dean, that uh, when you appeal, would you like to be given out? for something like that yourself, you know what I mean? So when you appeal, you think it's got to be out. Yeah, what's the replay on that one, Goody? I'm not sure why I appeal, but anyway. Yeah. Goody again, sweeps. And that one's gone through. Sometimes there, there's the thought where you do want to make the umpire earn his money. Fair enough. You don't know if you don't ask. No, it's true. Some will think, oh, hang on, he might have a case here. Goody, 43, off 30. Takes one foot. Banks that down to... Midweek, a bit of a slap shot. Yeah, that's Sorry, uh, that's more off. an appeal you see in under 10s where you think <laughs> you might convince the dad of the other side. Yeah, whose eyes aren't real yeah. crash shot. McInerney again around the wicket. Sweep shot. This one's going to go for four, is it, as well? No, it'll we'll find the fieldsman in the deep. I think about two, but Andrew Goaty struggling a bit, says one will do. And he moves to 44. Three for 173. McInerney's... Moving very, very economical considering the school. Glass ball, his fifth over. Foolish ball. Just drives that as Wilderness down to Lee Drennan in the deep. And I'll just mosey on through for one at the end of the over. So Jack Wilderness will hold the strike. Three for 175. Yeah, for those interstate viewers wondering why Connor McInerney, a uh, South Australian Redbacks, playing here in Brisbane, a few of the boys from Darwin. Uh, he'd been playing that uh, T20 sub winter competition up in Darwin, although it's not really winter in Darwin <laughs> no. compared to everywhere else. But anyway, they played a, uh, a T20 competition up there and, and Connor's decided to uh, get a bit of experience and get a bit of cricket under his belt uh, by playing some great cricket. And there's a few of those players from the interstate teams that have come into here, particularly some New South Wales boys and and Victorians who aren't going to get any cricket yeah. in their state for a little while yeah. due to the uh, pandemic that's running around. Yeah, you know it's winter in the only time you know it's winter in the territories. There's no croc attacks. Crocodile's a little bit quiet. Is Belenko right arm over? No, sends him back. And rightly so. Manus lurking in the covers. No, this is more than likely to run it to the stumps rather than throw it if he has the opportunity. So much energy in the man. Linker turns. Jack Wilmers on 24. Straightens him up. Finds it on for no run. Yeah, it's good to see Wilmers uh, come in early into this Valley's batting lineup as well to uh, get a bit of batting under. I said earlier that I reckon in time he may well bat three for the Bulls. Yeah. And be yeah. that batting all rounder. Square drive to backward point just for one. Yeah, it's. Uh, we've seen a few times where he's actually had to bat and bowl at, at length for the Queensland Bulls in the middle order. His batting has certainly improved. Yeah. Came into the side originally as yeah, that bowler. bowler yeah. <laughs> but his batting has picked up a lot. And we've seen in the BBL as well. Um, has scored some runs at that level and, and in the Marsh Cup one day is. 
He certainly came to the fore at the back end of the See, BBL last year. Didn't he? He got his, did he get a century against West Australia? Yeah, he was out of control. Back in, and just when you thought the heat weren't a chance, Andrew Jack Wildermuth. He's on strike now, waiting for Simon Malenko. It's going to be whipped behind square leg. The man was just inside the circle. Oh, reel it in, not before they add two to the total. Wildermuth goes to 26. And again, his bowling stepped up as well last season for the for the Bulls and became their their spearhead bowler with Steckerty. We see Steckerty out here. A little later bowling. No slips. All. Or should there be at this time of day? Simon Malenko will be a little bit disappointed. I think he came on earlier than maybe he wanted to, Bill. I don't know. But he certainly will want to break through at the end of the over. Try and bust up this partnership. Run rate just over five. It's certainly This wicket certainly showing that it's made for batting, which in a 50-over game is is what you want most of the spectators. Um, half the Redland Shires out here today, <laughs> but they, they've come not to see a bowling contest, but a batting contest. Mm, you know how I feel about that, Bill. Oh, we, we all want to see an even contest yes. in the end. Yeah. But. So the partnership now is starting to scoot along. The, what's the third wicket? Who's McQuarrie at 111? Some in the crowd. Nice breeze coming off Morton Bay as we see McInerney continue. His six over. Sweep that's high in the air, going back as the fieldsman, and that will be six lands on the covers. Yeah, for a moment, I think um, Smith thought that he was a chance of catching it, but the breeze picked up halfway through the trajectory, and the 50 comes up for Goody off 33 deliveries. But I think for a moment there, Smith thought he had a chance of it. Yeah, and but, then that breeze, as yeah. I said, picked up halfway through the flight and it just took it over his head. Yeah, I don't know those of you seen the movie Tin Cup. <laughs> breeze came into play. And that was a, another six to Andrew Goaty. So he's... And when those things happen while they're batting, you know it's your day. You know that no matter what you're going to do, it's going to be in your favour. And that certainly was the case. Yeah, three fours and four sixes for Andrew Goaty. Does, he... Does Jack Wilmoth have a go now? That's gone high in the air. It's coming towards us. Lee Drennan comes around, and that's going to be just over the Six fence again. for four more. A breeze just over the top of the trees, pushing a lot of balls to this boundary. I don't. I haven't been out in the middle, Billy. I'm, I'm assuming the wicket's in the middle of the square. Uh, it's pretty well the centre yeah. centre track. And uh, Wildham at that time again playing with the breeze yeah. and it, uh, it just carries it over the rope. And McInerney, uh, a bit of an expensive over for the youngster in this time. It's interesting, Bill, we talked, uh, Evan Bancroft mentioned it as well. I'll get double the 150, that's 300, they'll need more than that. I, I do agree with that. I think you need to have 350, considering the road that's out here at the moment, as McInerney again comes in. Well, it's a pretty strong Redlands batting lineup when you look at that lineup and you've got Ladnishain in there. You've also got um, Jimmy Pearson that'll, that'll score some runs, Lee Drennan. Uh, so there's a bit of batting talent in this Redlands side as well. McInerney. That's up ish. Drennan comes in, one bounce. There's a reason why they won the One Day Cup last year. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, and also the inclusion of, uh, of Nathan Radnock. Prolific puller of the ball as well, so that strength that batting lineup. James Basie can hit a big ball as well. That's slapped over the head that of Marnus. Yep. There's no respect here, and Andrew Goaty really has to motor to get make his ground. He follows through a long, long way. It was more a uh, forearm tennis shot, just smack him over the head. We'll have a drink after this over, but uh, unless they're bringing it out now, well, this is this will annoy. Change, change the gloves. This will annoy our uh, our uh, commentating friend in Ray Phillips. They'll have a drink after this over, but they're going to change the gloves with one over. <laughs> Why can't you wait for one more? But anyway, as long as they don't slow down the play, Malenko will continue from the southern end. This partnership. 
Now up to 91, uh, sorry, 81. And Malenko and his uh, Redlands teammates are going to have to uh, conjure up where they're going to get this next wicket from. It's not going to come out of the, uh, the pitch itself. There's nothing there no. really for the bowlers. It's going to take a bit of a miss hit or just some crafty bit of fielding. Well, they've had two opportunities and very, very catchable, catchable opportunities of that as we see Jack Wildermuth again. That one's been whipped to the man just inside the circle at uh, Leg Gully. No run. Yeah, one of the few times where you can set a field for the French Cup. <laughs> yeah. And it worked with the uh, fine leg inside the rope because uh, the rest of the field is out in in a different postcode to the rest of the team. Totally. There's all four corners of Peter Burjo or Malenko. Just stabs that to a deep man and third slip, or, or a short third man, whatever you want to call it. Just inside the circle, as you can see with the, the marker. The gentleman behind us is a track with a couple of plumbers. Malenko again. Full toss, smacks that one. You're going to have to do some work to come around to get this one. It's been motoring, it's going to be fielded no, uh, in vain. Not. And that's four runs. Well, slid over the top of that one because, as I said, the, the outfield is just so green and lush. Well, that's little little legs of Lee Drennan were pumping big time there and Drennan couldn't get around there. Four more to the total, but it was hit with ferocity, wasn't it, from Jack Wildermuth? He moves to 37. These two Valley batsmen certainly mean business. That one's just dab, trying to beat the field. There's two of them there. There's a bit of a run. Half a mix-up, but they'll got, go through. He'd probably leave around and be wishing he was keeping now. He's had to try and motor in a couple of uh, a couple of boundaries. At the end of this over will be drinks. We'll go around the grounds and give you an update on what's happening in the rest of the uh, the Premier Grade competition. Malenko and Andrew Godey. Goes back into the crease, there. smack right between the two of them. That's a flat bat, and it's a gone for six, four runs. Well, that came out of the cannon. Certainly did, just that one step down and uh, opened the shoulders. He's just playing Happy Gilmore with the cricket ball. Is Andrew Godey just smacking him right down the middle. Malenko, what can he do? Last ball. Slays that one. There's a chance in the deep here. Smith's underneath. Takes a catch. On his way is Andrew Goody. Last ball before drinks. And they make the breakthrough. The 100 partnership is being denied. And they make the breakthrough. Fourth wicket falls, Billy. Goody out for 57 with the score just on 201. The fourth wicket falls. And as we said that at the start of the over, the only way Redlands were going to get a wicket would be out of a, a false shot or something like that. That said, the Redlands fielding in the aerial hasn't been that brilliant. Today they've dropped a couple of sitters and, and there was a, a moment there where I think Smith, I think, took the catch out there. He felt just a little nervous under it. But just the flat track bully of Godey couldn't quite get enough on it to get it over the, um, the field of Redlands. And that fourth wicket falls at 201 and didn't Redlands need that? Totally. That was a big top edge of uh, Andrew Godey's bat. Sailed through the air and found the, the player in the deep. He will go around the grounds here. KFC competition. As you see Andrew Gody make his way to the sidelines. As you get that up, we'll get, quickly run through the scoreboard there. Lucky Pfeffer out, seems ages ago, for 10. So Jack Beath uh, starts slowly but came good towards the end with 31. Usman Kawaja played very well and then just a bit of... Wasn't that lack of concentration or something? Uh, got cleaned up by Marnus Labnashane for 58. And Andrew Goad's innings coming to the end on that last delivery for 57. Jack Wildermuth looking as though he's got all the time of the day. He's 38 of 44 deliveries. And the Valley's captain, Josh Neal, uh, makes his way out. Does he want to take us around the grounds? We'll go around the grounds there. It's four for 201. Toomble, uh, after winning the toss, sent the Sandgate Redcliffe in. At the moment, Sandgate Redcliffe is 6 for 115. Out at uh, Webb Harris Oval at University of Queensland. The blockbuster between UQ and North. The Northern Suburbs were sent into uh, bat by uh, Yana Kutsi. And they are 5 for 114, uh, the Northern Suburbs. Ooh. Winner Manley also won the toss. 
and chose to bowl first. And South Brisbane are 6 of 123 over there at Bill Aubrey Oval, not far from where we are today. Gold Coast won the toss and chose to bowl in a rain-affected match down there at Bill Pippin Oval. Western Suburbs 1 for 22. And Sunshine Coast won the toss and chose to bowl. And uh, Ipswich are 2 for 158. We might just go and have a look at the score out there at Ipswich. And uh, Harry Wood, 66 not out. Wilson, Anthony Wilson, the run machine, is 34 not out. So that's a pretty big partnership over there. So they need to break that one. At 123, it was the last fall of the wicket there. So the Hornets, who have been the improvers over the last few years in the uh, Premier Grade competition, especially in the Red Bull department, they were supposed to play the grand final a couple of years ago against uh, UQ, but COVID knocked that out. They made the semi finals last year as well. Um, and unfortunately, the uh, uh, COVID denied them the Red Bull, but they Going great guns and wobble. Evan Bancroft joins us back in there. <laughs> Here he is, Sammy. How are you, mate? Is he jumping on with you guys? So I'm going to jump out. So, Sammy Hazlitt is. Uh, are you getting paid for this, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you. <laughs> I was just getting in. I was just getting in before it fell when they got had to go. So Evan Bancroft and Sammy Hazlitt will take over from now. And uh, here are the boys. G'day, Sam. How are you, mate? Thank you for joining us in commentary. How's the finger? No worries. It's been stitched up already. I'm not even... Didn't even have the microphone, but... <laughs> mate, um, yeah, a little injury last week, mate. What happened? Yeah, trial game for Redlands. Uh, I went to catch the ball in the slips, and I've got a pretty poor catching technique, a bit of crocodile hands, and uh, caught the index finger on the way through, so... Uh, yeah, dislocation, bit of blood, but um, not too bad. So. Still caught it, though. Still caught it, so, uh, yeah, can't complain, but uh, disappointing not to be playing today. It's... It's, uh, it's always a good chance to test yourself against the best great players going around when, when you're playing Valleys. Arnis back on again? Yeah, yeah, it was a big wicket he got. Was he when his last came on, so hopefully he can do the same. I think Jack will be pretty nervous facing him. He won't want to get out to Marnus, so I'm backing him to, to take a wicket. So what's Jack's um, game? Well, he goes very hard. He picks up length really well against spin. He'll, he'll rock back when it's just short of the length and, and hit it over mid-wicket. And There's no one out here at Cow, so... They'll be eyeing off that cow region. I've also been joined by Jack Beef. Actually, not. No, it's Neil. Uh, Josh Neil. Josh and uh, Neil. yeah, interesting one. I guess coming towards. Coming the... back for two. Whoa! Great arm, base. It's a beautiful arm, isn't it? Yeah, we're lucky. We've got a few really good fielders on the boundary out here today. Put down a couple of catches, which are uh, disappointing, and let Andrew Gody score a few extra runs and what we would have liked. But, but yeah, Josh Neal, probably more trying to use the pace. He likes his sweeps and lap sweeps and reverses. So it um, be interesting to see how he goes towards the back end of this innings, especially against, against the spin. And Jack Willemuth worked his way into this innings 38 of 44. Yeah, yeah, he's been patient. Yeah, he's got, oh, that's that. pretty yeah, big. He's got all that to that six. That's a big six, and it's just nearly cleaned up the groundsman. Took the gap between the grandstand and the uh, netball courts. Yeah, there's that cow boundary I was talking about, and uh, he's, he's picked his time now. I guess he was playing a little bit second fiddle to uh, Andrew Gody for a while there, but but now Lee's playing funny buggers on the on the boundary rope here. But um, yeah, now it's now it's him as the number one striker. He's having a crack. So what does Marnus do here? He's just gone for six off the second ball of the over. He's, he knows Jack's now targeting him. Slower and wider, I reckon. Which was, he did. Yeah, it was pretty slow there, but good fielding in the ring. The um, Marnus, it's great to have him playing. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And funny to see him bowl a bit of seam up early on. He always loves the opportunity to stand the seam up and try and swing the ball. He would have been disappointed he didn't open the bowling, actually. He hasn't got that one, but it's going to land in between the two of them. Oh, just the one run. Kritzinger running back. Drennan running in. And unfortunately dropped right in the middle. Middle nine iron there, Sammy. Yeah, yeah, he got lucky. Picked the gap really nicely. But uh, yeah, they can afford to keep going. Only just over 13 overs left. They've still got a little bit of firepower left in the sheds. And they'll know with our batting lineup. Uh, that they'll need to score plenty to uh, to be able to defend it. So Josh Neal just drops some ones, get Jack back on strike? Not known for his power hitting, but you never know. He might have developed his game a little bit over the off-season. He's, I think he's spent a bit of time up in the top end, playing in the in the comp in, in Darwin up there. So uh, he's, had, he's had some good practice over the last couple of months. 
disappointing, Sam, that to do the have the finger injury, but the, the good news is it's only a couple of weeks. Yeah, hoping to be back next week. There'll still be a few stitches in there and be wearing a splint on the finger, but we'll see the specialist on Wednesday and see see if I can bat in the nets and, and prove myself fit for the next next weekend. That's a better ball, Manus. Yeah, a bit flatter. Um, new batter on strike, so we want to try and build up a few dots against Josh here. He's got the square leg in place. Yeah, just a one, no runs there. And he's Manus will be happy with that one. The last over that he bowled on it from the other end went for a lot. And um, yeah, mate, so get that get that right. And um, and being the bottom hand, it's probably not as as crucial. Uh, usually, but I think I'm a pretty do- <laughs> bottom hand dominant player. I like to hook the ball over the leg side as often as I can. So might have to practice those straight bat shots a little bit more. Uh, but yeah. Well, uh, we'll see how we go next weekend. Um, but no, it's, it's good to see minus four more overs left in this in this death period. He'll he'll thrive, I reckon, with the batters going hard. He'll like his chances to pick up a few more wickets. He'll probably be a bit disappointed at how many runs he's gone for so far. But that's just the way it goes sometimes in white ball cricket. And Sammy, you're um, had a great year last year with the heat. But the, the four-day cricket, is that something obviously you want to get back into that side as well? Yeah, for sure. We had a really strong batting lineup for Queensland last year. We'll again this year. Um, not sure how many games Marnus will be available for uh, with Aussie selection. But, yeah, look, I, I was I was happy with how I played in club cricket last year for Redlands. And um, I had a good pre-season until, until this happened to my finger. So... I'm um, looking forward to getting back out there and trying to force my way back into that Shield team whenever whenever we do play. It's uh, a bit of a week-by-week week prospect at the moment with, with everything going on, so we'll wait and see. And your great mate James Baisley back on? Yeah, yeah, and he's a much-improved bowler. The last, like, every year he keeps on improving, improving, but now he's back in the Queensland squad and having that experience at Big Bash last year has really helped him. He's, he's gotten a little bit taller with his action and a little bit of a higher release point, uh, allowing him to get a bit more pace and bounce and swing either way with the new ball, but I guess this part of the innings he'll be looking to use those change-ups to slower balls and, and the bounces a bit more. Yeah, good start too. So he bowled very well in that first spell. He just occasionally just tries to bowl that one a bit quick, which which is he, he gets offline a bit. But when he gets his rhythm right, yeah, he's a wonderful bowler. Yeah, no, he's he's a top line bowler nowadays, and um, got got the batting the batting to back it up too. In the trial game last year, last week, I think he scored seventy about seventy out of our hundred runs. So yeah, <laughs> on a tough wicket, he batted really well. But um, yeah, I'd be looking to finish off the innings. He always gets the tough overs with us. He gets the the uh, the back end to bowl at, but. He usually does a pretty good job. Here we go. Run on, run out on. Just knocked it down there. It was just going slow enough to Kritzinger. But it was, um, he got home pretty easily there, Josh Neal. Yeah, again, the, the field are probably coming a bit tighter now. Try and build up a few dots on Josh. I'm sure Josh will be just looking to get off strike and get the strike to Jack. 37.2 overs, Sam. Four for 211. If you're, what are you thinking the Valleys would be looking at at the moment with that four wickets down? Yeah, they'll certainly be wanting to get over 300. Um, I think this wicket's pretty flat out there. Nice, quick outfield. They've got good bowlers to defend it with. Jack Wildermuth and, and Mark Steckity, Cam Boyce. So they're not short of bowlers. But, uh, but yeah, they'll be looking to get over 300 for sure. Here comes Baisley again into bowl to Neil. Oh, it well, is out. Outside edge. Nick. Very happy with that. Played forward. Just pushed off the deck a little bit. Comfortable yeah. catch through to Pearson. Lovely ball. Josh just sort of pushed at it a little bit, looking for that single through the cover region, but um, wasn't able to get enough bat on it. And uh, Pearson, another level again last year. Yeah, yeah. He's another one that's really stepped up. He's uh, had a few captaincy roles with the Brisbane Heat and, and Queensland Bulls, which he's thrived off. Um, to have him back here with the Redlands team is, is always a great experience for our younger batters uh, and, and, and bowlers to have him, you know, talk about plans and field positions and, and how to go about different different parts of the innings. And he, as a skipper, Sam, he tactically? Oh, very, very strong. Yeah, he knows the game inside out. He, he loves watching cricket and, and talking about cricket. He's, he's the first one to come up to you on a day off and, and ask you what your plans are against a certain opposition bowler. Yeah, during the big bash bubble when we were all locked in together, he was he was always talking plans. And next next match was always on his mind how, how we were going to go about structuring the innings and who was targeting what bowlers. Uh, yeah, we've got Dylan McLaughlin written down to come in next. So just looking at that, he's wearing Yilsman Kawaja's shirt. If he is, um, 
two number 12s out there. Two number 12s, two hookers. <laughs> We've got two keepers in the, on the field. It is Dylan McLaughlin. So, yeah, obviously Lee Drennan out there too. So we've got two very accomplished keepers. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, Lee uh, Lee does rate himself in the field. He's always talking up his fielding ability. So he doesn't mind the opportunity when Jimmy comes back to take the gloves off and hand them over. He, uh, he nearly pulled off that great catch on the boundary at Long On before, but but not quite. Now, a good start by Baisley to McLaughlin. So he's a um, very good cricketer as well. Yeah. yeah look, Lee's... Um, Lee's always pushing pushing for selection at the next level. He's probably been unlucky not to get any more opportunities past second 11 cricket. He's, uh, he's a very handy batter and um, will do a lot of uh, nicking and nudging through the middle order for us today, I reckon, and then pick up a few quick singles and twos through the middle overs. He does. He actually has fielded very well today. He feels very well. Here's Baisley again, moving into McLaughlin and pushing into the wicket nice and hard. Uh, we don't need to feed Lee's ego anymore. No. I think, I think he no. does himself enough. He does. And um, Sid Baisley there now, he's just realised new batsman to push it in, push him on his back foot. Yeah, yeah. He's just top of the stumps, maybe just above the top of the stump line. You know, they'd love another wicket, but I think they know that dot balls at this stage will bring wicket, you know, the wicket still to build that pressure up and it'll put more pressure on Jack at the other end to try and hit a, a six as soon as he gets on strike. Trying to keep Jack off strike a little bit wouldn't hurt either. Yeah, yeah. So a single here would be all right. They haven't really pushed anyone back, but... And that's oh. out two straight through Nick. Ooh. Oh, it sounded good from here, didn't it? It did sound good from here, but well, I suppose we're not out there. No, no, you never know. It could hit the ground, but Bays and, uh, very and Jimmy looking, are pretty disappointed. Looking very disappointed. And um, going back to the Bays, is just going to get his hat off the umpire. He might have said to him, Yeah, I thought it might have been a bit close. Yeah. But he wouldn't base it on the sort of bloke that. He'll move on. <laughs> yeah, he'll be fine. And uh, Jimmy threw the ball up pretty high there, so I think he was pretty confident, but not to be. Not to be, and he's uh, and Wildermuth will be back on strike. Marnus will be bowling now. So we just lost the wicket last over. Jack needs to be there at the end. I know he hit the big six over here last over, but he also has to be careful now. He wants to be there for the last couple of overs. Yeah, it makes it challenging. Um, you know, he could go either two ways. He could look to just rotate and rebuild, wait till there's five overs left, or he could keep going and I wouldn't blame him if he did keep going he's got Mark Steckity to come in and whack a few and, and Cameron Boyce can bat really well as well so uh so yeah. the breeze too isn't he yeah a lovely drive I'm sure Marnus would be in his ear as well letting him know that they're under pressure they've lost a couple of wickets tempting him to go hard now had he threw that wide and yeah. Jack just um just hit it throat through to mid off chased it a little bit but no no risk in the shot no, Marnus will definitely be wider to Jack than, than Dylan. He'll probably go straight at the stumps with Dylan. He's got a slip in place there, so hoping to get a little bit of turn. Might even surprise him with a wrong and early on. You're behind that one. We'll talk about it in a minute, the one he got Usman and Kawaja out with, but from the side on here, it looked like it just turned a little bit. Yeah, I don't think uh, Marnus will let Usman let, uh, live that one down for a couple of weeks. We'll be hearing about it at training, that's for sure. Yeah, Usman wouldn't wouldn't have been happy with that. <laughs> it's funny, we face each other quite a lot at Queensland training. We've had a few trial games the last few weeks and uh, Marnus has been bowling to Usman and Bays has been bowling to Jack a lot, so we've faced a fair bit of each other. <laughs> Here's Marnus to McLaughlin. Oh. Ooh, reverse sweep. And Marnus says, um, yep, yeah, good, good try. Good try, would have said. Yeah, a bit of an awkward length, that one sort of yorked him a bit, but Jimmy got his pads behind it and knocked it down. There is an opportunity down there for the reverse sweep. A bit short, back. Oh, a little bit of a... Dived over the top of that one, Lockie, I think, and it'll run down for four. Yeah, he didn't need to get much bad on that one. Marnus pushed it through quite fast, and there wasn't a big gap between the two point fielders, but he, he managed to find it. Lachlan Heinen got a bit of a hand on it, but wasn't enough. So Marnus will be disappointed with that. I'd say this one here might give a bit more air, I think. Just let the young bloke have a get into two minds, whether yeah. he's going to go or not. Oh. oh, and he didn't. He did another another quicker ball. I think he's enjoying the meds. That's gone straight through. He nearly took Baisley's head off. I think it might be Simon Malenko that slipped there. Oh, that's Malenko. Yeah. I mean, Marnus isn't happy about the missed opportunity, but... Yeah, that was, will, he, will he claim that? <laughs> I was about 110 k's an hour, that ball, <laughs> I reckon, so I don't give Marnus... I uh, don't give uh, Millie any opportunity of catching that one. No. So the slips out. 
Millie said, I've had enough of that. I'm going to go to backward square. And he's thrown that one through. He lets it go. And that's uh, minus one for 56 off his 6.5. Been a little bit expensive, but he's got that important wicket of Kawaja early on. Yeah, that's a better line. He needs to be on the stumps to do on here. He's just been a bit too wide, giving him too much width. So uh, good finish to the over. But now Jack's back on strike, so I don't think he'll waste any time. So the death bowl is it for Redlands, Sam. But he'll, he'll be there at the end. Well, Simon Milenko will definitely, uh, I say, finish from one end. Uh, Bays, I'm not sure exactly how many he's got left, but uh, so he's got, he's got four overs left. So Bays will probably bowl the last two from one end. Yeah, uh, so you'll have two more at this end now. Yeah, they'll, they'll use Lock and Honan for a few more overs, I'm yeah. sure. He's bowled very well, Lock and Honan. Yeah, yeah, hits the deck hard, good fast bowler, you know, dangerous bumper, but also surprises you with a quick Yorker. So hopefully he can hit that Yorker a bit more consistently towards the end of the innings. As Lockman worked on his game a bit, Sam, he just seems to have that change up a bit more now. He was a bit more the last few years of sort of one pace. Has he done that? Yeah, for sure, for sure. He's, he's been a little bit unlucky with injuries in the past, so kept him off the field a little bit, but uh, he's certainly had a big pre-season working on his game and um, I don't think he'll bowl too many change-ups. He, he likes to bowl on pace a fair bit, but that York will, be, York will be the key for him. Oh. I think uh, Jack is trying to guide that down through third man for yeah. four, but he just it kept a little bit a little bit low, actually, that one. Yeah, I like this field. The third man up, Jack's game probably isn't as much the delicate game. He, he likes to cut when there's width, but he's, uh, he's more of a power hitter at the end, so if we're tempting him to use the pace, then that's probably a win for us. So if it's pitched up, he will, he'll he take him on? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. He'll crunch that pull shot as well when he gets an opportunity. Basley running in. Yep. Really Very good ball well That's perfect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just above top of the stumps. Nice and straight again. We've got Minus there at point. He's never going to let you get a quick single. Minus feels just puts everything into it, doesn't he? It doesn't yeah. matter where he is. I mean, it's what it's what it's just incredible how he now he averages 60 at Test cricket. Yeah. Oh, he lives and breathes cricket, and and whether he was playing yeah for Australia or if he was playing a winter cricket game, I'm yeah. sure he'd be putting everything into it. And when we play, um, it probably puts more effort into garage cricket when we play at home with him than than any other form of cricket. Charges. Very well bowled again by Baisley. And Jack's now just getting a little bit frustrated. He's thinking it's we're into the 39th over. Only got 10 to go. We need to get 330 against this batting side. And Jack's probably just got to get himself, get his head right at the moment. Yeah, hasn't changed his pace yet, this over Bays. Uh, might be worried he might miss his length if he does. Or maybe he thinks the wicket's so flat that the change of pace is just going to come onto the bat nicely. What do you think you'll do here, this ball? Uh, well, he's just brought fine leg up. So I think slower ball's probably coming. And you're exactly right, it was a slower ball. And right. Jack just pushed it out to mid-off, which they'll take. Yeah, Just yeah, the one run, well bowled. Bowled to his field, just the outside off. And, yeah, long off fielder Nathan Rabnot was, was there to collect it. Nathan Rabnot's gone from bay to bay. Yeah, yeah. He's still the groundsman over at Wynnum, but uh, decided to move clubs to, for his playing career. And, uh, yeah, surprising one. I think he was considering retirement from grey cricket, but he, he, he would miss cricket too much, I reckon. He loves it. So great to have him here. Strengthens our batting line up even further. Sometimes it's good. A change, they say. Basley yeah. in again. Oh, that That's... might be called a wide from square leg umpire. It was very high. Yeah, you can't but, complain with that one. But worthwhile. Give it a go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We've got a couple of guys back down the hook, and um, I don't think Dylan has faced as much fast pace bowling as, as Jack has, so they'll be testing him out with that fast short ball a fair bit in the so, next couple of overs. So give him that short one, Willie. He, um, he'll finish it off. He's got two balls to go in the over. He now probably put one up there. What, what, yeah. Looking, looking for a little nick. He'll hit the wicket hard, yeah. Very well bowled by Baisley. Very well bowled by Baisley. Last ball of the over again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he just puts one on Dylan's hip here and lets him get a single out to that deep square boundary, I think. Give him one? Yeah, give him one, get him back on strike. As long as they don't get two, that deep square's leaning on the fence at the moment, I think, so he could take a few steps up. Here he is, basically to finish the over. It's been a very good over. 
And very well bowled. McLaughlin just pushes it down the middle. Doesn't take the one. No, it's a nice Probably shot. It wasn't on. Nice shot, but no reward for it. Jack was sitting on his bat. I think he <laughs> wants to. He wanted strike. Yeah, he had a word before great. that ball to uh, to say either either hit a boundary or run hard for two. I reckon. And the crowd, Sam, I mean, they're fantastic. All the people. The grandstand's nearly full. We've got a few of the old boys. We've got Brian Bricks and Paul Stenhouse and a lot of the guys that have turned up here. It's great to have so many people here. There's a few, at least four or five hundred here. Yeah, car parks are overflowing. A lot of junior cricketers down here. Good to see them enjoying their cricket. And yeah. Live on KO. Sam, it's fantastic. Club cricket on KO Live. It doesn't, doesn't get better than that. And uh, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate down here with the lovely grounds we've got and facilities, um, new change rooms. So so yeah, we're, we're very lucky here at Redlands Cricket Club. We've got young Dylan Kritzinger out here on the on the boundary. He's yeah. a good cricketer. He came, just came into his game at the end of last season then he started to play a bit straighter. Yeah, well, we won the first grade uh, one-day comp last year and, and you know, it was good for the top order batsman to score some runs, but whenever we did struggle, Dylan was always coming in at the end and doing the hard work and, and getting us home in sort of tough, uh, nervous situations. Just gives it some air. <laughs> Jack just played straight over the top of it. Dylan also a very good fielder. He um, he's always in the game. He's always in those hot spots. So that's why he was out at this deep mid wicket boundary. So that was um, he threw that way up to Jack. Didn't he? he's tempting him? They want him to go. They got the two deep ones here, or three deep mid wickets, a deep square, deep mid wicket, and a deep mid on. So they're saying, Jack, take me on. <laughs> it's not the shortest boundary, but you know nothing's nothing's too big for Jack when he hits it out of the middle of the bat. He can hit a very long ball. McLaughlin had. Facing the lumber shame, pushes it through nice and quick. So you're just trying to keep him on strike now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Again, no width. Um, be interesting to see when Dylan does start to go himself mid offs up, so that'll be tempting for him. Bit of air. Looking for a quick single, but someone Malenko's in the game, he knows he can't afford to let him get one. That wicket of Gobe was huge, wasn't it? Yeah. Absolutely huge. Well, the drop catch has cost us a few, but I thought it cost, could have cost us a lot more. OK, there he is down the wicket. Lovely drive to mid-off. No run out on, but he does dive anyhow. But it's one run. Wildermuth back on strike. 7.4 overs from Lubbershane. I don't know if it's been talked about much today, but I, I, we're very lucky to have Connor McInerney, who just fielded that ball, uh, fill in today for us. Here he is. Tosses it in the air. He's got that. That's a Dorothy. That's a big six. Nearly kill, kills the plover. <laughs> Onto um, the netball courts. On the netball courts. But he didn't, he didn't overplay that, did he? No. No, he didn't go too hard at it, but got it over this boundary here at Deep Square. But yeah, Connor, Connor will be a, a very handy batter for us as well. I think he's coming down lower down the order than he normally would, but with our strong batting lineup, we can afford to do that. And his uh, left arm off spinners were very handy through the middle too. No, it's fantastic to have him have him here. So Jack, um, lovely six, moves yeah. to 57 now. Just got his 50 last over. Tosses this one in the air. It's a wide. Didn't want he pushed that one wide, Sammy? Didn't he? Yeah, I think he'll be looking for a single. Last ball of the over. He'll want the strike. Minus yeah, is going to go slow and wide again. Oh, a bit faster and straighter. Three just takes his one. He's looking for two. And they're coming back. Dylan, great running, well fielded. Interesting and choice to take the two. Yeah, yeah. well, Redlands would be, wouldn't be that upset with that, Sam? No, nah, no, nah, that's all right. Um, not a bad over from Minus there, even though he gave away the six. It's getting towards the end. So a couple of wickets will really slow it down. Uh, Sam. Thank you for coming on, having a chat to us, mate. It's great to see you. Hope the finger gets better really quickly and have a great season with Queensland this year. Thanks, Bangs. Appreciate that, mate. Pass it over to the boys, Billy and John. Sammy has it's on his way down to uh, Burley now. Check out the waves at Point Lookout. Oh, it's actually straight break. Thank Evan Bancroft and Sammy Hazlitt. Billy Dean joins us for these final nine overs. It's the business end of the innings. Yeah, well, the total, uh, Evan uh, Bancroft suggested that uh, 150 after 30, you double that to 300. It's going to be a lot more than that. Or is it? They've lost uh, Andrew Gody. Obviously, you're flying along, but Jack Wilmoth is still out there. There you go, Sammy Heslett. Straight to the burgers. So, Baisley from the southern end. Square drive. Coming around the field, and they'll just get the one. Tested the arm. I'll be curious to see whether they uh, bring Mark Steckity up the order. Bit of a big hitter he has mm. been for the 
<coughs> the balls in the heat over the years. So there's still still a, a few big smashes of the ball. Yeah. If that's a proper term, <laughs> smasher of the ball. It's very descriptive and very very appropriate. No, it wasn't in the Greek Chapel book of cricket coaching, but smasher is one that we see nowadays. Well, we never used to have a thing called cow corner either. No, no. that's a new position that's come in recent seasons. Yeah. So Wildmouth on 59 feels we moved a little bit. It's Baisley again. A gully. That's going to be pushed to point for one. Easy as you like. And that will bring Bocknell on strike. It's a reflection of how easy this batting pitch is that there's no one really in a catching position. There, each fielder is a defensive position to try and slow down some of the scoring. But we've seen a few of the Valley batsmen not be afraid to go over the top of the rope. No, definitely not. And just that, it's almost like they, it's their home ground. It's four in the deep per the restrictions. Baisley again, a bit of venom, finds a man at Gully and Drennan, no run. Yeah, just giving them. We talked about this when we were both on there last time, Billy. They're just giving a little too much of an opportunity for quick singles, the uh, the Revlins fielding. I know that one last one was. It went straight to the man at, uh, at Gully, just inside the circle, but everybody else, you pretty much can get a single. You see the man right on the right there. That's at the point. Short ball, pulls that one up, don't he? Didn't get all that, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, basically, he's so actually didn't get even. to the bowlers, so the batsman is sort of being caught on the hop a little bit with his extra pace and bounce that they haven't seen from the other bowlers. The that's, Redlands today. That's called league by, so there wasn't any bat on it at all, so it must have come <laughs> off his, off his Adam's apple, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but he's it's called a leg by. Wilmoth on strike for 60, and well. Jack Wilderman's asking whether that was a no ball if it's hit him in the neck. He's probably got a point. Wilderman slashes at that one. That's been French cut down to fine leg. Page 43 of the textbook. You'll find the French cut. A very effective shot. Very effective. You can't set a field for that. No, and I've scored many a run myself <laughs> off the French cut, so I'm not game to ever criticise it as a tactical yeah. shot. Apart from their outrageous accent, how come the French got stuck with that little... Uh, description of a shot, a French cut. Came out of the English coaching book and the English and French have never seen eye to eye over centuries. No, they have Baisley finished the last ball of his eighth over, two for 27. Short ball, high over, backward point. That might go for one bounce, four runs. I backed it in for a moment there. Yeah. The breeze picking up, as you can hear in the effects microphone. But certainly, uh... <laughs> Was it the Doughboy? Doughboy Doctor. The Doughboy Doctor. coming in a bit early. He gets here at three, but it's here at midday. And uh, with a fair bit of gusto at lunchtime already. So uh, I thought that might have carried the whole way through, but... Yeah, it was... So the KFC clash here between Redlands... And the Valley, Redlands winning the toss and deciding to bowl versus every game. This in the Premier grade, every side that's won the toss has sent the opposition into bat. As Simon Malenko is going to change to the northern end. Well, maybe the captains, when they were together at the season launch yesterday, conspired amongst themselves. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> over, over lunch, that let's, let, let's have a bit of a practical joke or something and, and we all send the opposition in. Yeah, let's see who... Uh, it was, let's see who made the biggest mistake. Let's see who did the uh, NASA Hussein mistake. As we uh, wait for Malenko, one for 37 off his six overs. Interesting. Is Mark Stegley getting the pads on your right, Billy? Yeah. Interesting just watching Marnus has come out to uh, backward square leg on the rope. Traditionally, probably the strongest fielder in the squad. Mm. Tend to see them stuck in the, in the covers for that reason, but. As Marlis. Oh, I thought he was talking to us. <laughs> he was, the boys wasn't was. Oh, well, I took the credit. Yeah, totally. So, 
He'll need to jump high if he gets all of this. Wildmuth, 61. Whips it off the pads and just get the one. He moves to 62. So Simon Malenko switched into the northern end. The breeze has picked up here this afternoon. Run rate coming closer to six. Just bring him in, yeah. Bring the field in a touch because it was a pretty big, you just drop and run too with that big gap in mid wicket. Well, there was a lot of real estate there, wasn't it, Billy? You just see the right of screen as well. Manus is going to have to go around, he's going to field that one, just a single. Around the grounds in the KFC. Sango Redcliffe after being sent an 8 for 137 against Toomble. Toomble making the T20 finals last year on the back of three very big innings from Chris Lynn. But Chris Lynn hit 150, I think, on three occasions. Actually, he's murdered the white ball. Malenko again. Foolish ball. He's going to find Manus in the deep. They'll just get the one. University of Queensland sent Norse in. Norse 6 for 137. And that is after 41 overs. So good bowling over there from the students. Winner Manley also won a toss, sent South Brisbane in, the 8 for 166. Short ball down leg side. Not called a wide. Not called anything. Called two balls to go in the over, sir. Gold Coast, well, still rain delayed down there unless it's uh, another issue, but one for 22 after the Finns sent the puppies in. And the Hornets are four for 234 against Sunshine Coast after Sunshine Coast sent Ipswich in up there at... Uh, Ivan Marzen, straightish over Lee Drennan's head, and it'll roll towards the boundary. They'll turn for two. Stuck in the uh, slow outfield, is there? It was yeah. a fair bit of pace till it landed and then just all but went backwards. It's like your approach shots to the green, Billy. You've got the backspin on the, on the golf ball. I never ball. get any backspin. I'm <laughs> along the ground the whole way. I get a backspin off the anything, fence. Anything that goes in the air in my golf game is purely accidental. <laughs> Malenko, will this go in the air? No, along the ground. Drennan again comes into it. He's going to be wishing he's got the gloves. They'll turn for two. I figure you don't get a discount if you uh, hit it in the air, so <laughs> get my money's worth out of going along the fairways. That's it. End of the over. Malenko. One for 44 off his seven. McLaughlin's starting to build his in innings nicely. A little bit of a hiccup with Neil being dismissed for naught. Marlis, I think, might be coming back. Soonish, Malenko's had a chat to him. He's taking the cap off, whether he goes back to his spin or goes back to his medium pace. He's I thought he's more effective with his medium paces. He's got a, wicket, got a wicket with that uh, bowling Usman Kawaja first ball of his leg spin. Yeah. But, oh, he's going back. It's hard to tell, Manus. Yeah, he's going back. Jimmy Pearce is not putting the helmet on, so no. uh, he's going back to... Touch of Gary Cozy is about him. Cozy was one of those jump between spin and medium pace. Tell the man Gary Cozy. He's over at, uh, he was over at Maruka Bowls Club looking after uh, their competitions okay. and that, Gary Cozy. Uh, his wife's a travel agent, so that's sort of finished now. Um, Sent people around the suburbs of Brisbane now rather than all corners of the planet. Unfortunately, the travel agents. Days are done for a little while. But yeah, Gary Cozy, what a great player. Oh, Very love, disappointed. Love watching him bat. Yeah. Fearless too, no helmet. As we see Marnus pushing off the side screen. Wideish ball. I think he's another one of those Australian players with a century on debut. Was he? Could have been. I need to go back through my wisdoms to uh, clarify that unless someone wants to uh, tweet us through mm. if, to, a bit of confirmation on that fact. Jimmy Maxwell might be listening to us. Of course he would be. be. Click on the Twitter. Pushes that one off his pads. We're going to turn for two. It's missed field in the deep. That's what happens when you put pressure on. They go for the ball and through the legs. Four runs. And even their ground fielding is letting them down a little bit here, the Tigers. They haven't fielded that well at all today. They've dropped quite a few catches. Uh, a few that they probably should have got and slid over the top of yeah. in the outfield. Just a tad rusty. 
It is the first day of the KFC Queensland Premier Cricket competition. Marnus swats that there. There's uh, Wildermuth. They're going to take two. He's got some wheels on there. Well run there by McLaughlin. He was running to the danger end, but it was always going to be two. And the 250 coming up halfway through the 43rd over as well. They're on track the way they're going to get to that 300 mark. They will need every run of that 300. Yeah. It's a very strong Redlands. As much as Sammy Heslett's not in the team today, still a lot of batting there in Pearson and Labnashane. Grab not as well. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether they, uh, they open the bowling to them. Maybe bowl spin first. Just to really mess with the Tigers' heads. Andrew Gady, season campaigner. As Mars comes in, that's been squeezed out behind point. Well, oh. I did say that I was one of the strange people and paid my admission price today just to see Cameron Boyce play. So, yeah, I'd like to see... Uh, Boise open the bowling. It's a talent, isn't the it? The just, just to be something different. Mm. Take, take the game to them. Yeah. So. Mind you, that said, they've still got Wildermuth and Steckity, so they've <laughs> they got a very, very strong bowling line-up. 140 k's an hour? Why wouldn't you? So. Huge amount of BBL and one-day experience. So Marnus waiting for him is McLaughlin. Swish. That's gone over the top of middle stump. It was going to go over the top of the lighthouse at Cleveland if he got hold of that. And again, pace off the ball just makes the difference and the batters swing through pretty early. One ball left in the 44th over at 5 for 255. Let's see what comes off this delivery. This one's pushed back. Marnus comes in, does his own fielding, thinks about the run out of Wildermuth. Doesn't pick up cleanly into the over. So Marnus is nine overs, one for 74. And the run rate creeping towards six. Wildermuth's on 70. And five for 255 with six overs remaining. And the breeze is certainly starting to pick up here at Peter Burge Oval. Peter Burge, the uh, Player of the Year medal is named after the great Queenslander, Peter Burge. This is this field. And 25 years since the Tigers settled here down at uh, Redland City after formerly being at Bottomley Park in East Brisbane, now known as David Wilson Oval. Big thank you to my friend David Viles who just comes through and let me know, Daniel Viles, that let me know that Gary Cozier 109 against the West Indies on his test debut. <laughs> against a oh, pretty ordinary attack. Anyone can get 100 against the West Indies in the middle of the 70s. Thank you very much, Daniel. I knew you'd know. Olenko goes back. Bancroft was suggesting you got Gary Cozier out. Gary was 73 at the time, not runs. Malenko pulls out. Well, I could say that as a 17-year-old, I got Dougie Walters out. Did you? Yeah, but Doug was nearly 50. <laughs> <laughs> of age, not, not of runs, just of age. What a great man. Two greats of uh, the 70s, Dougie Walters and Gary Cozier. Yeah, a little bit disappointed, Gary Cozier not getting a... A World Series contract, one of the rare few, played in the centenary test. With the greats David Hooks and company, so here we are here too. At Redlands, Malenko, Whippy, and that's a full pitch delivery. It's one of the few that I've seen pitched right up. I was just going to say the same thing, that the bowlers have been afraid mm. to bowl the Yorker, and we saw it last year all through the, yep. uh, the Marsh cup that the bowler's just not keen to bowl that full toss. I don't know, because as we wait for uh, Wilderman, high in the air, here's a man down the back, it's going to go over his head and lead in and one bounce and they'll come back for two. Again, they put the ball in the right places, are the diehards. Yeah, they're finding the gaps in the air. 
and just out of reach of the Redlands fielders. But fortune favours the brave, and Wildermuth... Well, Jack will say he placed that there. <laughs> he waits for Simon Malenko. Straight drive, that's going to go to Lee Drennan. I'll think about two, Drennan's arm. Just keep it to the one. Mm. We'll bring McLaughlin on to strike. He's on 19. Not quite run a ball, but not far off it. Well, they did have Mark Stegerty with the pads on. I don't know what he'll come in. We wait for Malenko again. McLaughlin, let's that one goes through and has a bit of a look at the umpire looking for a wide. Doesn't get it. One ball left in the over. Enough for 24. Let's get on with it now. Reverse sweet and appeal. Maleko, no, denied. I'll come for two. Let's see if he calls leg buys. No, came off the bat. Got a bit of bat. The first reverse sweep, I was going to say, I'm, I'm pretty glad of that. <laughs> those those that have followed for quite a few years will know that I'm not a big fan of the unorthodox no, shots. I don't like that more ramp shots. But how do, you, how do you do a reverse sweep shot against Son Maleko's pace? Bizarre. Anyway, he's still there. Gets away with it with the two. Yep. Still maintain maybe a proper cover drive or something might have got the boundary in bed, but... <laughs> exactly. No, I'm not a big fan of the ramp shot, and I'm not a big fan of the reverse sweep either. So I'm with you, Billy, but I am the lover of the square drive and the, and the cover drive, whereas most like a big six. I just like the grace of the Gowers and the Mark Wars and Greg Chappells. Just well, young all beat timing. this morning. I'm still glowing in the that uh, was cover drive. Run, yes. It was very David Gowerish mm. in the way he played it. and. If you get a chance to uh, go back through the YouTube clips or something on KO to, yeah. to find it. It's glorious. That's been swatted over. Extra cover. That's six. A big one. Oh, well, he's hit it with the breeze there. That's over extra cover for six. Do you mind Jack Wildermuth? Well, that's the sort of shot that we're probably watching, be watching Dylan Alcott do in the uh, Paralympic tennis gold medal, <laughs> where he just stood and struck cross bat, smacked it. Smacked it. That's the shot. Smacked. Not, a, not an off drive. It's a smack. Smack. And just belted him over the fence. Not over the rope, but over the fence. Oh. Bit more venom than that one. That's what it as well. It's going to bring the player in. They're going to come for two. Good running. Diehards mean business now, Billy. That they do. They certainly, as I said, they've got to get it up to 300, 268. If they, don't, if they don't lose another wicket, McLaughlin, I'm not sure, he doesn't know what to do now. He doesn't need to do no. a lot. Just let, let the strike go to Wildermuth. Yeah. Well and truly eye in at 81 off 72. Marlis, one for 82. Short ball, smacks it over cow corner. That might split the fieldsman. No, they'll come back for two. Well run. Well, it just tells you there's absolutely nothing in this wicket. I know it's late in the innings, but she's uh, oh, all the time in the world is smack, spank, slaughter. Anything you want to do with that white ball. Coming back. And this Jack ground Wilder. very much is a dome ground, which is excellent for drainage, but it means the ball does roll away off the wicket square too. Man, a shortest ball slapped over. He's a chance this time, no. That's gone over mid-off for six. Only the crowd were a chance of catching that one. <laughs> Jack Wilderman. Well, I don't know where Jack's going. He's going to get some new gloves. Well, oh, Marnus has figured it's one for 90 off 9.4 deliveries. You think he might get a bit of stick about that? No, uh, he's not going to be happy. <laughs> not going to be happy. One for 90. He's still got two balls to go, so he could bring up his 100 bonus. No stranger to that, except when he's got the bat in his hand. Jack Wilmoth, he's searching for a ton. A lot of, apart from Neil, all the diehards have got away to a start. 250s, one to... They're just uh, having to search for the ball at the moment, down in that creek area at the back of uh, Peter Burge Oval. Day one of the KFC Queensland Premier Cricket in the Kookaburra One Day Cup competition. 
seeing uh, Redlands having won the toss, putting Valleys in. Valleys 5 for 276, with two balls left in the 46th over. We'll go around the grounds here for the KFC competition. We'll just go through the batting card too, Billy. Uh, yep. yep. Lucky Pfeffer, it seems like ages ago, out for 10. Jack Beath, as we talked before, 31. Just took a while to get started and then went pretty quickly. Then 58 to Usman Kawaja, bowled by Manus Labnishane, which you'll hear about for the rest of the season. <laughs> Andrew Go just belted the cover off the ball for 57. And poor Josh Neal, a captain for Valleys today, misses out. Um, and a quick look at the uh, bowling figures for the Redlands bowlers sees that uh, a lot of them have gone for a lot of runs. Yeah. Wickets Basie. semi shared around, but. Basie, two for 31, the only bowl to bowl a maiden, and uh, for his eight overs. Well, uh, Malenko, one for 49 off his eight. Manus, well, he's yet to finish the over when they find the pill, which they have. As uh, one for 90, Lockie Honan, one for 24 off seven. Very economical there from Lockie. Sinfield, 35 off his seven overs, and McInerney, 43 off his six. And uh, we'll just quickly go around the grounds. Sangat Rexler for all out for 144. North, so eight for 154 against the Pencil Pushers. South Brisbane, nine for 199 against the uh, Sea Eagles, as we see Marnus come in. Wilderness is on 89. Swats of that one is an appeal. Begging, begging, no, says the umpire. And they get a single. I think he's happy they didn't go for six. <laughs> yeah, he, that might have been it. Late guys. Late guys, yeah. So he didn't hit it. Um, and down the Gold Coast, still no play down there. One for 22 after the uh, Finns won the toss against the Bulldogs. And the Hornets, four for 271 against the Scorchers of Sunshine Coast out there at Ivor Marsden. Look at that appeal. How can you say no to that? Stella. Down the leg side, and that will go for four runs. Nice bit of work by McLaughlin. Came down the wicket to uh, change the length of delivery, played off his pads. Fine leg was up inside the circle. Zula is going to roll away for four. The score moves up to 285. Labner Shane, thankfully, and he gets one for 98. <laughs> one, for, one for 94 end of the uh, end doesn't, of his spell. bring up his century. He hopes to bring it up off the, uh, off the, bat. Off the bat later on. Uh, we're talking before Conor McInerney, as we're saying, from uh, the South Australian Redbacks playing in this game, playing for the Redlands and a few interstate players. Um, quite a few of them playing great cricket around before as he went round the grounds. Ryan Hackney from New South Wales is also playing with Ipswich. Hayden Kerr is playing with the Gold Coast. And uh, so quite a few of those New South Wales players. Dan Cummins is also up at the Sunshine Coast. And Arjun Nair is playing for oh, us as well. Yeah. So, so quite a few of those that have been involved in the uh, T20 series that was in Darwin uh, taking the opportunity where they're probably not going to get any no. cricket in Sydney for a little while because of the, uh, the COVID scenario. Mm, exactly. At least getting some cricket under their belt with the Sheffield Shield season only two to three weeks away. Another partnership starting to build here between these two batsmen. It's an appeal this time, and you know, not a lot of gusto there from Simon Malenko. It was almost a... It's just something to do. Yeah. Uh, he knew he'd be dirty if he got out for that appeal. He's had the bat in his hand, Simon Malenko, but stands his, stands his ground. It's all before these uh, Redlands players, <clears throat> 282. Yeah. In the start of the 49th over. Two overs left for Valley to try and get to 300. Smash straight down, Lee Drennan. I'll just get the single. Yeah, I don't, don't know whether you guys mentioned the umpires today. Joshua Addy and Damien McAndrew doing a pretty good job. They've done very well. Again, <coughs> first game for them game as well. For the right? season for them this year, and they've officiated quite well. We haven't mentioned them because we haven't needed to see no, them. No, that's right. That's they've been good with all their calls. Malenko again. Banks that one, they're going to have to be quick to get to that one and not quick enough, four more. Straight down the ground. A lovely I, shot there. I don't think I'm it meant to go there. It was meant to come down here where Marnus Labashang is a cow corner. He just got the, a thick outside edge on it and it went straighter than he wanted. Yeah, probably just as well. Wildermuth gets himself up to 94 off 77. It's just going to get one. They're going to push the arm of Lee Drennan. They're coming back. Good big throw, but hits his close, but no. Uh, very fast running. These two Valleys batsmen have been greyhounds between the wickets. That was good. 
just as well Andrew Goaty isn't out there. <laughs> he would have been run out a few times by now. Struggling with a bit of a, a glute, gluticus maximus injury. I saw him at the canteen. Okay. So he will be right to bowl. But when it cools down, it might be a different story. They're going to push this one out to mid-wicket for a single. Not going to take on Marnus. I mean, there was always only going to be one there, but Marnus has flown in there. He certainly has. Put the pressure on the batters, but they're probably never going to run two on his fielding and throwing. So the partnership of, well, came in at 211, so it's 79 at the moment. And that's the end of the over. Three to go. Coming run rate six for 117. They're well on track. Paul Simon Malenko wondering who he's going to throw the ball to. And, and most of the other bowlers not looking at the captain either because they don't want to take hold of the ball. Well, uh, Sinfield's got seven overs, none for 35. And uh, Honan, seven overs, one for 24. It's not a crazy idea to bring these guys back on. I mean, they deserve to have a shot at the time. The quick man is getting absolutely plastered. Bit of pressure, though, on the 17-year-old Sinfield to be bowling. Well, the bat's been set. If you get picked to play first grade, you should be able to play against whatever's thrown at you. And these are quality players, yes, but they need to do something here. Simon Malenko, the powers of the Brains Trust have come together. And Baisley is going to take up the attack, replacing Marnus after conceding 94 off his 10 overs. So they're going to stick with pace. So they've got four men out. One is a deep backward square leg, deep mid-wicket, wide mid-on, wide mid-off. And then a deep cover right on the rope, as you'd expect. Baisley. Wildermuth, 97. Swing and miss down leg side, wide. Well, I th think if Wildermuth gets his 100, it won't be in singles, Billy. No, no. No. 79 delivery so far for his 97. Five fours, four, yeah, four four and five sixes, yeah, exact, even number. Baisley, Wildermuth, spanks that one out to Cow Corner. Will it go all the way? It's going to be fielded in the deep there. They'll come back for two. He moves to 99. Well done. I think that might have been Lee Drennan in the back there. Been very impressed with the running of the, between the wickets by both McLaughlin and Wildermuth. They've been able to uh, turn what would have been simple singles into twos and done it quite comfortably. So Baisley turns, southern end, Peter Burge Oval, round one, limited overs competition. Baisley, Wildermuth in the air, up is, she's going to go for one, that will bring up his hundred, they'll turn, and that'll be two, well batted Jack Wildermuth, he brings up his hundred off, 81 deliveries, well batted young man. And ge very generous for a pause here, because it's just not, not at his home ground. He's at Redlands, and the Redlands supporters as well. Very generous in what they've witnessed as a fantastic innings. Great start to the season for Wildermuth. I'd be suggesting probably the first century for the season. It won't be his last. Judging around the grounds with where all the other club games are at at the moment. So uh, bringing in some good form ahead of the Marsh Cup and Sheffield Shield games coming up later this month. Well, now he's got to do his 100, he might tee off. <laughs> 101. Oh, 81, five fours and five sixes. Baisley, Wildmouth. Down the leg side, wide. Baisley oh, wow. throws his head back, spewing. There'll be a lot of Redlands fiddlers out there with bruised palms from some of the feeling that they've had to do because there's yeah. been a lot of heat on these deliveries mm. that have been hit. Or, as we said, spanked. Spanked, yep. Slaughtered. Yeah, you make your own luck, but reminding, they sent uh, Valleys in. Oh no, this this crease, uh, sorry, this pitch will be hard as, a good batting deck. There's no dew in the outfield, so the ball will run nice and quickly when they're batting. Baisley now smacks that one. Chance here, taken in the deep, and what a catch down there. Dropped by Marnus. Uh, yeah. Well, he's had 94, spanked off him, Marnus, and now he's dropped a catch. Wilmoth dropped on 101. Well, 5 for 2.97. Yeah, it dipped on him at the end there. It was a little yeah. bit KFC replay, Billy. Hitting into the breeze, which has probably also helped it dip, but probably yeah, should have caught, caught that one. one. Should have yeah. caught that one. Again, as we've said, Redlands have dropped quite a few sitters today. Back live here is Baisley again. 
Oh, he's going to push that down there to Mars for a single. Two overs to go to after this one. 298. Evan Bancroft suggested over 300, and he's going to be spot on. Unless they nail some wickets at the back end. Wilmoth could well take it to 300 just off this delivery alone. <laughs> yes. 304. Baisley. See what James can do on this delivery yeah. in Wilderman. Just needs to pitch it up on the sand. She's that better. It's a full toss. Spanks it down there to Marnus. I'll take one. I'll take on his arm. No. Nice throw from one end of the field to the other over the stumps. Well, he had to make up for it, didn't he? <laughs> he'll be, he'll be, yeah, he won't be a happy man after having dropped the catch earlier. You can see that that'll fuel him up. That's a pretty fair throw. That is a... That it would be... That would be all of 80 metres, wouldn't it? I would easily, 100. 100? 100. He's got to go uphill as well. Well, I'll run it. My PB over 100 is two and a half minutes. OK. So if I run it over two and a half minutes, I have. Strict dive. Reverse sweep over the head for four. Well, that's rude. And it's four also. We're finding the gaps between the fielder's hands today. Just over the head there. Fieldsman, so four more to the total. 303 for the loss of five. Run that, rate 6.3. That's the 300 up in the uh, end of the 48th over. 12 to everybody's out. Five down. I'm just trying to see whether Mark segetti has got the pads on. Coming as a pinch hitter. <clears throat> Still going to be a fair bit of pressure, though. The Valley's batsmen do need it. We've said it quite a few times. A lot, very strong Redlands lineup. Of Shane, McInerney, Pearson, Rabnott, even J Drennan, and James Basley scored some runs at the Big Bash level. Won a game, didn't he? Won a Big Bash game last year. Yeah. So you see Basley. Sorry, Marnus has come all the way down here. So he's caught. He's caught an Uber from one end of Peter Birch to the other end to field that one after he's threw the ball 100 metres. Lee Drennan's got some metres up as well. Been doing some travelling, haven't you, mate? Little legs are pumping. And they're trying to st st yeah, stem the run rate. I'm, I'm totally perplexed that Lee Drennan hasn't had a bowl. <laughs> Malenko. Malenko again. Ramp shot attempted. No. Well... I don't know why. Waste of the delivery. Yeah, well, I mean, you've, 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 you're sitting you're on 105. 105. Without having to have done a wrap shot yep. to get to 105. Anyway, Malenko into his final over, one for 60. He got the wicket of uh, Andrew Goady. That one swatted in the air. That's high, oh, that's high. Going to be six again. Very high. Six more. Yep, you can't catch them when they're over the rope. Move to, uh, he moves to Nelson as Wildermuth, 111. This has been well worth the price of the admission today. Well, he's just picking up where he left off last year, isn't he, Jack Wildermuth? Perfect way to kick off the uh, KFC Queensland Premier Cricket Competition in Brisbane. Malenko again. Foolish ball, slower delivery. Drennan has to come in. Do they test his arm? They're going to come back for two. And they'll make it comfortably. Good throw, good fielding, but excellent fit running. Mm. That's the, the challenge that uh, Malenko's got as captain. He's got to play his out on the rope, but this, there's about 40 acres of space at mid-wicket. Depends on, we were talking about this before, who would open the bowling here for uh, for um, Valleys, and Williams might be a little bit gassed to actually take the pill <laughs> first up. They might throw it to Boyce. Anyway, Malenko. Oh. Bowls him, gets the breakthrough at the back end of the season. He's gone for one. Well batted, Jack Wilmoth, 113 off 87 deliveries. Maybe that was the omen, Billy. Well, I think that was a knuckle delivery that got him. I think whether Malenko just didn't have any pace left in his arm <laughs> to go up to full space, but Wilmoth had swung through that well before the ball had got to him and just hit him at the base of the stumps. Yeah, the that... bales go all yeah. over the place, and 113, he's got sore arms from swinging all day. Yeah, that was a slow ball there. Well, it might have been the replay that made it look slower, but anyway, they've got the breakthrough. 113 off 87 deliveries, six sixes and five fours. Jack Wilmot, the Queensland Bulls batsman, has come to Peter Burge and grabbed it by the scruff of the neck and belted 113. Has he set up a, a match-winning total? 
Well, Redlands will say no. No, they've still got a bat, and of course, runs on the board are one thing, but there are still batters to come for Redlands when it's their turn to bat, and they've already seen how this wicket plays. So, Cameron Boyce has come out. Ah, I thought Stegley. Yeah, I thought Stegley might have come out as well, but Stegley might be actually warming up to open the bowling, perhaps. Anyway. Boyce, though, with a lot of uh, limited overs experience. So, Malenko. Boyce just drops that to Gully. No run. End of the over. The end of the 49th over. One over to go. And Valleys, after being sent into bat, are six for 313. Malenko finishes his 10 overs. Two for 68. Relatively expensive. But that's what you expect with an opening bowler. All the, all the field the, restrictions. The... Uh, and the team scores six runs and over. It's about average for what's gone on in this innings. You can see Baisley to bowl the final over of the innings. Baisley. As we look at the bowling, best bowler so far for Redlands. Baisley, two for 44 to bowl his final over. Malenko, two for 68. And they're saying one for a very lot. Well, they're the wicked takers, but I've got, got to give mention to Lockie Honan, seven overs, one for 24. As Baisley comes in from the southern end, swatted straight down. It's going to hit his teammate in the foot. In I'll just come through the one. Boys gets clocked on the foot for you. you got a bit of a hot measure. Going. Yeah, McLaughlin. Yeah, uh, Lockie Honan, one for 24 off his seven, then Sinfield, one for 35 off seven. So you'd have to think that uh, their contribution added. To the wicked tallies for some of these bowlers as they took on the ones that are a little bit more expensive as Baisley turns again. 314 the total. Foolish ball bowled! That's what happens when you pitch it up and Baisley makes the breakthrough. He gets his third. I think that's about the second Yorker we've seen all innings and it picks up the wicket and Baisley picks up his third for the innings. And Cameron Boyce who was on a hiding to nothing and coming out late in the innings. Yeah. And we spoke about it before, you know, the Yorker just hasn't appeared at Peter Burge over three times. It has the first over, first ball of Simon Malenko's innings was a Yorker. And that one was pretty close to being unplayable. It's a good option for the death ball, death yeah. over. Totally. As Mark Steggerty makes his way out to the middle, wearing the number 16, the number he wears playing shield cricket as well. And he will be taking guard to James Baisley. He'll, he'll well be his bowling partner in the Bulls outfit as we go through the, the team card as we close in on the this innings. Be All interesting to see start. whether the second he will just play for the single to get McLaughlin on or whether he'll try for the sixes himself. Watch this. There it is. <laughs> There's no way in the world he's going to block or give the strike to anybody else. We felt else. the breeze of that one from here. <laughs> Mark Stegley suggesting we're going to miss strike one. Going to land that one at Ormondson College. He goes down and pats the crease. <laughs> sure a true, prof true professional. He must have moved off that divot. That's why he didn't send it to the fence. Mark Stegley, a Warwick product, and played for South. At a point there as Baisley comes in, Stegley smacks that one there to. Mid wicket, Lee Drennan pumps the little legs. Mario Kart round the outside, and I'll come back for two. 316 for seven. Yep, two legal deliveries left in this innings. 316, a fair chase for the Redlands batsman. And a good target for the uh, Valley's bowlers to bowl to. So we're in for a contest in the second innings of this Kookaburra one day. Basically again, slower ball, wide ball down the leg side, and they'll run through for one as well. Nothing going right here for the Tigers. Pick the extra single up for the run as well as the wide. Yeah. Well, you take every. They'll probably, they may need them. Uh, once at the end of the innings, our life member of the. Uh, 
the Redlands Tigers, Evan Bancroft, and our co-commentator. We'll be having a chat to uh, two presidents from Valleys and Redlands, Sean Lloyd and Grant Mitchell. They'll both be on in the innings break as we wait for Basie to come in. Two balls remaining. Smacks that one into his foot almost. They're going to try and push for two. Why would you? Here he comes, the little fella, Drennan, charging in. They'll get too easy. One ball remaining. McLaughlin, 34. 320 the score. He just came running. He looked like the two guards on the uh, two guards of the Holy Grail as they charged the castle there to Lee Drennan. He's running straight for us. Basically the last ball of the over. And the innings. Spanked along the ground. Marnus will they'll just get the single and that will be the end of the innings. Seven for 321 is the total. McLaughlin will finish on 35. Steggerty on two. And Baisley will finish 3 for 52 off his 10 overs. And that will be drinks after 50 overs. 7 for 321. We'll just quickly go through the uh, the team card. The Lachlan Pfeffer all out, was out for... Uh, oh, lost that then. I might bring it up shortly. Lachlan Pfeffer out for 10. Caught Pearson, bowled Baisley. Usman Kouaj was bowled Marnus Labashang. 58, Bill. 258. Um, Jack Beath out for 31 off the bowling of Honan. So Jack Wildermuth uh, late in the innings out for 113. Andrew Goad smashed him around the ground for 57. Poor Josh Deal, one of the two ducks in the innings. Dylan McLaughlin finishing 35 not out. Cameron Boyce late in the innings out for no score. And Mark Steckerty finishing with two in the final over as the uh, crowd clap off the valleys. And the Redlands boys go in for a bit of a drink before they regroup themselves for their uh, second innings onslaught. It's been a fantastic effort. We're in for a bit of a treat through this uh, half-time break. Change of innings between the uh, Valleys and Redlands on day one of the KFC Queensland Premier Cricket Competition. We've got some special guests for us, Bangers. I have that. Thanks, Billy. Um, seven for, for 321 Valleys. Probably par score, I'd say. And um, I've just got with me the uh, the chairman. They call him the chairman over at Valleys. He is a president at some of the other clubs, but he's joining me here, Grant Mitchell. Hey, Grant, how are you, mate? Yeah, bang on well, mate. That's good, me. mate. Hey, how about this crowd down here today at, at Redlands? Isn't it fantastic? Mate, it's great. It's great for uh, club cricket. Obviously, some great cricketers on show today, and it's great for us to uh, you know, be welcomed down here to Redlands, which I think is the 25-year anniversary today. So, no, very exciting and, uh, you know, our boys have done the right thing and set up a great run chase for this afternoon, so you look forward to it. Mate, it's really good, mate. And it is 25 years since we left Bottomley Park that you, you played down, you know, played down there. What a great, uh, what a great ground that was. It had such a, such a great atmosphere. But the move down here at the time, it was pretty tough for a lot of us old East cricketers. But um, what's happened? You look at the ground we've got here. It's just such a magnificent uh, showpiece. Mate, I agree. I was actually only thinking driving down what a brave decision it's been and I could only imagine the turmoil at the time it would have been for a lot of the old Easties. Uh, but, you know, we, we look back now 25 years later and, you know, you'd have to say it was completely justified. You know, you look at, you know, the, the facilities down here are second to none. Uh, you know, the players that have come through Redlands of, you know, since that period have been fantastic, you know, leading right up to the present day guys. But, no, you'd have to suggest it's been, a, you know, an absolutely fantastic move and, you know, all credit to the guys back in the day and girls I'm sure back yeah. in the day that made the decision to come down and it's good you know the atmosphere here now today I mean the, the old East cricketers we've got the East Redlands we've got the Redlands guys and we've still got a great great tradition here which is fantastic and they have guys today Manus Lubbershane's over there getting interviewed by another TV station that's turned up here at some stage or local a local um, era so it's fantastic if people are here there'd be at least a thousand people down here to watch the game and a lot of Valleys guys have made the, the big trek from Yoku Road down, Look at it down is. Peter Burge. It is banger. It is a it is a big trip down for us. But you know, again, you come for the facilities and really you come for the cricket. The opportunity to see you know someone like uh, Marnus, uh, Jack Wildermuth, who's played an, an what incredible a great innings, knock that was. Incredible innings, time to put perfection. Uh, Usman opening up for us at the start with a with a fifty to get himself into the season. You know, quality uh, international players on show at club cricket, which is as we all know, banger where everyone starts. You know, all of our greats have all started at club cricket. 
it. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to come down to Peter Burge Oval and, you know, probably a, a gentleman who was probably renowned for his passion for club cricket back in the day. And, you know, a pleasure to be watching the guys out on the field. He was. He was a great, a great Eastie. Peter Burge, and um, and he just to see what his what his ground became. You know, obviously Bottomley Park was the Peter Burge Oval as well, and his grounds become that. Club cricket in Brisbane, Premier cricket. You got KFC, you got Sky Fleet. It's in a great position, Grant. Oh. Bang, it's fantastic. Um, you know, some great sponsorships, some great things happening. Obviously, you know, this game going out on KO today is a great thing. You know, our ladies' competitions continue to grow, um, you know, more than ever. And we have, you know, our first grade ladies starting off tomorrow afternoon again, which will be a full strength round. Um, so, you know, really exciting time. And you've only got to look at all the amount of children that are out here signing up, getting ready to play. And we, as we see the little, the little blasters going out to get started this morning, you know, so many opportunities for people to get involved in this great game that we know and love yeah. um, and you know, I think it's fantastic the opportunities that the kids and, and us older gents get these days banger with cricket. It is mate and, the, uh, and Valley's looking good, obviously the great innings there by Jack Wildermuth, he's come to another level in the last few years and he's just, he's a great, great fella, mm. great lad but he came out today and I thought he took his time getting into the innings even though he ended up hitting it off about 90 balls but he didn't go that hard that quick no, and I think that's probably a feature of Jack's batting over the years. When he does get the time to get in and set himself, he can do the damage at the end. And I think one of the early heat games last year, he got that opportunity. But look, I think we certainly haven't seen the best of Jack with his batting as yet. Um, and I think there's plenty more to come. He just turned 28 during the week, so he's really coming into his prime. I mean, he's a great wicket taker. His bowling has been, you know in really good form in the last couple of years. The 100 he scored against the Touring Indians last year, I think, was you know, a real pointer to perhaps what we might see from him as he continues through the year. But, you know, some great knocks already this uh, in the early part of the morning. But, you know, this afternoon, mate, anything could happen here. It could. Hey, um, so, young Jack, he went to school with my daughter, Hannah. Yep. So I coached them at... when he, I coached young Jack at grade, in grade seven. You know how you go into the nets against a young bloke and you think, like, I could still play a bit? And his run hit me straight in the shin. <laughs> and he was quick then for a grade seven kid. Mate, he's always been one of those guys. Um, and they're quite easy, I think, to spot at the time. You know, coming through, he was, uh, you know, a superstar youngster. He's obviously a great young fella and is playing some really good cricket. Uh, is in a really good space at the moment. So, you know, look forward to what he's got to offer this year. Not only club cricket and, you know, because of the COVID situation, looks like we're going to have um, our big end players for the first couple of weeks at the least um, and then hopefully the boys and, and girls will get to move into their you know first class and uh, you know state games before obviously the test series but you know fantastic to have him here at local cricket um, you know providing this level of entertainment um, which we don't get every week. Being and what about Usman Kawaja I mean I looked last night he averages 40 at test cricket first class cricket and shield cricket mm. I mean that's an incredible average he's still playing club cricket happy to come out here Mark Skedegi I mean Stekety having Mark here as well I mean, they're, they're bold, I mean, it's fantastic. It's going to be a great afternoon. And, you know, Usman is, uh, you know, mate, he's a great ambassador for the game since he's come up from New South Wales. We're obviously great to have him come on board with the club. He's played some magnificent innings for us out at Peter Easton, a double hundred a few years ago, which was second to none. Um, you know, we've really been grateful for the opportunities or for how he's played out at the club and certainly as Usman matures you know he's becoming a great leader in a Queensland cricket and you know again there's more runs for him this year his batting is improving you know all the time and he just keeps getting better and you're right you know this afternoon we'll have obviously Jack and Steck um, you know the, the wily Andrew Goad will no doubt get some some uh, overs he's right. out he's of not him. injured. He looked like no, he had no. a little bit of an injury. No, that's just how, just that's how, how he walks now. That's how, yeah, that's how he runs now. I think the quick singles may <laughs> be a thing of the past, but when he started to struggle with the quick singles, he started hitting Dorothy's, didn't that's, he? Uh, he loves and, it down um, here, mate. Loves hit hitting few, bombs down few, here. Few big six. Hey, Grant, thanks for coming and having a chat Pleasure. on KO Live. And, um, it is really good to have you here. Uh, Sean Lloyd, I think, is around somewhere. Where's Lloydy? Uh, maybe he'll join me in a, in a bit. He's, he's had to leave. We'll catch up with him later. Thank you, mate. Good on you. Cheers, banger. Thanks, good on mate. You, mate. Midwicket, that will go all the way for four runs. He got that one out for me. Cullum chased the field every ball. Around the wicket again. That one's been pulled over. Midwicket. And that's six. That's the first six of the morning. Just gets over. Cullum chased the field every ball. Around the wicket again. That one's been pulled over. Midwicket. And that's six. That's the first six of the morning. Just gets over come up to just inside the uh, in circle, circle. Yeah. 
That's gone straight past him, four runs. Picked the gap beautifully, Kawaja, between that. Anyways. It's come up to just inside the uh, in circle. circle huh? That's gone straight past him, four runs. Picked the gap beautifully, Kawaja, between that. Anyway, Sinfield, last ball of the over. Comes out of his crease, belts that one straight down the ground, half a chance, splits it. Oh, he's safe. What's oh. happening down in the corner there? It's crazy stuff. In the end, I think it's six. Yep, you're so right. And he pushed that one down. It was full up, but it's down the leg side. And Beast has helped himself for two. Kawaj is looking for three. Coming back on it. Kritzinger throws. And an easy, comfortable three to Beef. Who moves along to 31. Batting very well off 49. Kawaja 41 off 37. It's out of his play. Again, too short. A little bit short. That's a great pull shot, but he'll be very disappointed with that one. He bowls a good med, actually. He does bowl a good med. Honan again to bowl to Beef. Oh, that's out. Leg side. There's the wicket they needed. Redlands needed that. It was a very... He's sit here at a club level. It's great. And to get the insight on um, how the men's and ladies games going right across cricket, not just at the elite level, but all the way down to, to junior level. I've just been looking at the numbers of kids that are down here grabbing their photos. It is great, isn't it? And there's a bit of clapping going on there. Now, that's not for you, Billy, is it? It um, must be for someone else. Just... And... Oh, he's bowled him! Straight through it, isn't he happy? <laughs> Just runs down the line. Over that one. Just... And... Oh, he's bowled him! Straight through it, isn't he happy? <laughs> Just runs down the line. Over that one. Just... Oh, and very. Oh, there we go. Straight up it here. Here's a chance. Deep mid off running in. Oh, and he's put it down. Well. Oh, that's a beautiful cover drive by Goad. <laughs> That'll go for four. That he splits everybody. That. <laughs> that was a beautiful shot. And again, Mark. First. You don't know. You don't know. We'll see at the end of the day. They can change. But obviously, good wicket out there. McInerney bowling again. Now to Goad. Goad goes long. Gets it fully. And... That's at six. Honan ran away. this one up. Which he did. Goat's got that. I'm it's not big. sure whether he has all of it. Big. He just... He just... Oh. Keep... Man, it's a bit short that time. Back cuts. That will go all the way. Unless Smith gets to it. No great effort by Smith. But it's boundary four to go. With this one. Becomes an expensive over now as he tosses this one up. Another great drive. Straight. And that's four. You've got a deep mid off, a deep mid on. They don't have to run too fast at the... Um... Here he is again to bowl. Charges, gets it, and got all of it. That's going to go straight into the side screen for six. Straight. What a great shot by go. And he's... Three. Oh, that's straight Out. down his throat. Oh, oh, no. Is it six? No, four. It's gone for four. GB's out of As you see McInerney around the wing, that's a sweep shot there. That's four runs. Good shot there, Andrew Goady. You don't have to oh, run. No. He's six over. Sweep, that's high in the air. Going back as the fieldsman, and that will be six. Lands on the covers. Yeah, for a moment, I think um, Smith thought that he was a chance of catching it, but the breeze picked up halfway through the trajectory, and the 50 comes up for Godey of 33 deliveries. Yeah, three fours and four sixes for Andrew Godey. Does, he... Does Jack Wilmoth have a go now? That's gone high in the air. It's coming towards us. Lee Drennan comes around, and that's going to be just over the Six fence again. for four more. The breeze just over the top of the... That's a... Malenko again. Full toss, Max that one. You're going to have to do some work to come around to get this one. It's been motoring, it's going to be fielded no, uh, in vain. And that's four runs. Smacking him right down the middle. Malenko, what can he do? Last ball. Slays that one. There's a chance in the deep here. Smith's underneath. Takes a catch. On his way is Andrew Goody. Last ball before drinks. And they make the breakthrough of the 100 partnership. Before. Yeah, yeah, he's been patient. 
You know, he's got, that's pretty he's big. got all of that to that six. That's a big six. And it's just nearly cleaned up the groundsman. Yeah, Baisley again into bowl to Neil. Oh, it's out. that is out. Outside big edge. Nick. Very happy with that. Played four. Baisley again into bowl to Neil. Oh, it's out. that is out. Outside big edge. Nick. Very happy with that. Played the gate They haven't really pushed anyone back, but... And that's oh. out two straight through Nick. Ooh. Oh, it sounded good from here, didn't it? It did sound good from here, but it's low ball. And right. Jack just pushed it out to mid off, which they'll take. Yeah, just yeah. the one run. Well, ball, ball to his field, just the outside off, and yeah, long off fielder Nathan. Uh, we're very lucky to have Connor McInerney, who just fielded that ball, uh, fill in today for us. Here he is, tosses it in the air. He's got that. That's a Dorothy. That's a big six. Nearly clear, kills the plumber. <laughs> Um, Under the netball courts. On the netball courts. Eighth over, two for 27. Short ball, high over, backward point. That might go for one bounce, four runs. I backed it in for a moment there. Yeah. The breeze picking up the Twitter. Pushes that one off. It's pads. We're going to turn for two. It's misfield in the deep. That's what happens when you put pressure on. They go Was something on KO to, yeah. to find it. It's glorious. That's been swatted over, extra cover, that's six, a big one, oh, well, he's hit it with the breeze there, that's over. Got out of the way, off the wicket square too. No, the shortest ball slapped over, he's a chance this time, no, that's gone over mid-off for six. Only the, the uh, Seagulls, as we see Marnus come in, Wilderness is on 89, swats of that one, is an appeal, begging, begging, no, says the umpire. Baisley. Wilmoth in the air, up is she's going to go for one, that will bring up his 100, they'll turn, and that'll be two, well batted Jack Wilmoth, he brings up his 100, Baisley, Wilmoth in the air, up is she's going to go for one, that will bring up his 100, they'll turn, and that'll be two, well batted Jack Wilmoth, he brings up his 100, field, so the ball run nice and quickly when they're batting, Baisley now, smacks that one, chance here, taken in the deep, and what a catch down there, drop by nine. He got the wicket of uh, Andrew Godey. That one swatted in the air. That's high, it's high. Going to be six again. Very high. Against the Williams might be a little bit gassed to actually <laughs> take the pill first up. They might throw it to Boyce. Anyway, Malenko. Oh. Bowls him. Gets the breakthrough at the back end. Fishing of the Williams might be a little bit gassed to actually <laughs> take the pill first up. They might throw it to Boyce. Anyway, Malenko. Oh. Bowls him. Gets the breakthrough at the back end. Fishing. Three hundred and fourteen. The total. Foolish ball, bold. That's what happens when you pitch it up and Baisley makes the breakthrough. He gets his third. I think that's about the second.
Welcome back to Peter Burge Oval at Redlands Cricket Ground. And what a great day we've had. It's a beautiful afternoon. Valley scored seven for 321. Magnificent century from Jack Wildermuth with 113 runs off 88 balls. The Redlands openers are coming out now with James Pearson and Liam Smith. The umpires are out there. The crowds are is clapping. We're looking forward to a great chase, and I'm joined in commentary by Ryan Harris, former Australian Test bowler. G'day, Ryan. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Nice, nice to be on you, mate. Nice to see cricket. It's uh, back. It nice is beautiful day. It is great, mate. And your role in this year, mate. You've come out here to a bit of a look. I know Select is one of them. Yeah, new role for me. I started a month ago at Queensland Cricket, which is it's nice to be um, back in the maroon clothing. I must admit. Um, but yeah, new, new, new role. So Select are being part of it. Um, pathway manager and pathway youth coach. So um, or head coach of the, of the under 1970s. So a big role for me, new, some of it's new, some of it's not, um, but this, this certainly is. I haven't sort of locked, watched a lot of live cricket, I guess, over the last few years. I've, I've seen lots of scores, but um, it's nice to, as I said, nice to be back out here and seeing some, some good cricket against two pretty good sides, so as, we, as, we, as, they, as you said, just walked out to take the field. And, mate, it was fantastic. A couple of your charges, obviously, Usman Kawaja got a great 50, and also uh, great to see Jack Wildermuth get some runs. Yeah, I got here just in time to see Jack. Well, he just walked in, so it was nice to see that innings. Um, saw some pretty average bowling from Marnus as well, bowling medium pace, which was uh, which was a bit different. But um, no, look, he, he batted well, Jack, and um, yeah, what a, what a obviously a, a great thing to come out. A big blockbuster game, a big big day for the club, uh, Redlands club as well. So um, to have this game on here is, is just a, it's outstanding. It is, fa it was fantastic. And uh, who we got there warming up out there to bowl the first over? Mr. Kitty, I think it is. And uh, ready to ready to go, and we've got a um, we've got a few of them out there. We've got James Pearson taking a strike, and is that there? It is. Yep. And he comes to bowl. First ball, Jimmy Pearson just plays it back down the wicket. And uh, how's his off season been? Yeah, they've been really good. As I said, I've only been there for a month, but um, I can tell you, my shoulders had a workout. I've thrown a lot of balls to these guys. Um, but the, everyone, we've, had, we've played you know, a lot of trial games. I think we've played, since I've been here, probably, what, four or five trial games, maybe four trial games. So um, everyone's, you know, ready to go for this day. Um, batter's been getting some runs. Bowl's been bowling really well. So, um, you know, a great lead-up into the first Shield game in a couple of weeks. He goes to Kitty again. Whoa, that was a bit, a bit quicker. The, um, yeah, mate, and, and Jimmy Pearson, your big year last year. And he's, t he's turned it around and he gets talked about a little bit, but not a lot, does he, when it comes to when they're talking the next test keeper? No, not, not probably not just yet. I mean, he's, he's definitely um, mentioned. Uh, there's no doubt about that. He's had, I think, each year, probably the last couple of years, two or three years, he's just gotten better and better. And my, my big thing, I mean, he had a great year, probably Red Bull last year, a uh, really good year. But, but for me, it was more um, the big bash. Stecking in again. And Jimmy Pearson just pushes it out to mid-off. No run. Just, just getting to know his game, and, and I think what we saw last year, or both in all forms, but probably again more big bash for me was that the responsibility he took. You know, to, to when, when the when the side was in trouble, he'd come in and, and made sure he'd finish the game and and take on that sort of senior role. Um, you know, which he which he look he has played a few years of cricket now, so he, he is the senior. He's a captain, and obviously when Aussie's away, he has been. So, um, but yeah, looking forward to seeing him, and hopefully, you know, a big season to put his name up next to those keepers. Let's take it in again. And just pushes it on the leg side, takes one off the mark. No, it is good to see there are some pretty good keepers running around too, um, Ryan. And so you've, the role with the selecting role, you're just you sort of head around the grounds. I mean, you're doing that with, what, Chris Hartley? Yeah, Chris Hartley sort of chairs. He's the chairman. Um, Wade Seckham's the other one other than myself. So, yeah, we just get out and just, you know, want to see what the boys are doing. And, and not just our boys. I mean, the whole lot, the whole comp. You know, there's not just going to be... Well, we, we, we obviously got a, a squad of players there that we that the, that was picked um, as the Bulls squad. But um, there's obviously a lot more talent, a lot of talent out here um, all around the ground. So we're making sure that we want to get out and see all that and, and, uh, and see how everyone's progressing. And, again... You know, day one of the, the season, how everyone sort of starts off. Liam Smith on strike, facing Stickety. And a nice, quick bouncer. Liam lets it go through. And he had a good year last year. And it's fantastic to see uh, yeah. the younger cricketers coming through, like a Liam Smith who scored, you know, big 100 last year. And it's not just those same guys. You, you're looking for blokes outside of the squad occasionally to come into the squad? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, as I said, you pick a squad that, are, are probably deserve it of, of contracts and, and they come in and out of the squad that you know that they perform well in Premier Cricket each year and he's he's one well, he's a new one I don't really know a lot about but um, you know again you want these guys making um, runs 
There he is, plays nice forward defensive shot. And um, and Steckity, he seems to have got a couple of yards in the last few yeah, years. Yeah, he's, he's, he's gotten better and better. I think over the time he's, he's gotten stronger and stronger. I've, one thing I look at um, with, with bowlers or young bowlers, I mean, he's, he's not, say, he's a young bowler now. He's probably, you know, middle, middle of his career. I just sort of look at the tone on their legs and their backsides, and that sounds a bit funny, I know, but and I, when I rocked up and started this job and saw, you know, his legs look big, he, he looks really good through the middle section of his body, which is nice and strong, and that's what we want from our bowlers, to be nice and strong. Obviously, the first thing that normally goes in our bowlers are the backs, and the sooner we can, you know, protect them and get them nice and strong um, to stop that from happening, the better. So... Now, just going back to what we were talking about before with these players, yeah, we want to see all these guys perform. We, just want, we, want, we want a strong competition, so the more runs, the more wickets, and um, the guys, not just as necessarily in the squad, we want to see it all from everyone to, to make the competition better. And if, if you know, guys, guys will be rewarded if, they, if, they're dom- if they're consistently dominating. Jack Wildermuth coming off 100, opening the bowling. <laughs> And Jimmy Pearson has pushed up the mid off. Have you ever been in that position, Ryan, in your career, that you'd just got 100 and had out for the bowling? <laughs> no, I haven't. No. It's pretty bit tough, really, isn't it? He's been well, I was just going to say, batting, batting, I mean, I, I didn't bat for that long very often, but even batting at the end, and especially in a one day game when you, you're trying to hit runs and you're running hard between the wickets, and if you do bat for, you know, 10, 15 overs, it, it takes a lot out of you. And then, you, yeah, you cool down, just looking at Jack Wilderman there, he bowled that, bowled that, bowled that ball. Um, screwed his face up because it must have hurt and he's just doing some stretches going back so it, it's, it's a warm day today as well so he's doing more stretches at the top of his mark there so. and different different muscles too in the yeah, batting the bowling yeah it always hurt that, that first one I mean you can do as much warm up many warm up as many warm ups as, as, you, as you like but that first one always hurts hitting that wicket here he is again Jimmy just pushes it out to, to point and um, I, I love the fact that you have got this role and for your career you came in fairly late into into shield cricket and then I suppose fairly late into into test cricket you're the, you know getting 100 the oldest cricket ever to get the 100 wickets that quickly you can see cricketers that that aren't pathways cricketers because you you actually achieve that yourself yeah that's that's the other thing as well I think we we, we have done in the past you know if you're not in the pathway it means you're not going to make it and that's not that's not right at all it, you know some guys don't yeah, as you said don't develop until later um, you know in their careers and um, there's always you know as you said you come to come and play first grade cricket and you perform you're going to if you you know you can, you can get picked here he is again back cuts or through forward point for one got a hand on it. Luckily, well, otherwise it would have gone for four. Pearson looking very good early. Yeah, so there's always, there's always opportunities. There. He's, you know, you're, you're a, if you said, a solid first-grade performer, then, you, you know, you're putting your name up in front of the, the selectors and, 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 you know, again, pushing for, for positions in the squad. I mean, the, being, getting a contract and is not an easy thing, um, you know, so, you yeah, you don't have to be in the pathway, but it obviously helps as well. And Jack is stretching there now. Yeah, he looks he's like he's a bit tired. He, he, obviously, he batted for a long time. Um, and, and the first couple of balls, probably have just, he's just rolled him out. There's not, hasn't been great pace behind him. So, we'll just see how this one goes. Well, that was up there. He sort of pushed it through. <laughs> he puts his arm up like, I'm a little bit tired <laughs> at the moment. But, um, no, that, that is great. And we've got a lot of cricketers in Brisbane at the moment that have come up from mm. down south because yeah, of the situation true. with COVID. Yep. So the strength of Brisbane Great Comp is very strong. Yeah, and a few of them, um, I won't rattle them off because I'll miss them, miss someone. <laughs> but, you know, look, a few guys, from, a lot of guys come from Darwin. Um, I've only just saved the last little bit and found out how, how good that competition was in Darwin. And, and, and as you said, a few of them have come down from there. They can't go back to Sydney, for instance, and there's some very good plays here. But, again, that just makes the competition even stronger. Here's Jack again. And just pushes out Smith. You're up in, um, I did see your dial recently, you're up in, you nearly got the Darwin, you in Mount Isa. Went up Mount Isa, yeah, <laughs> first time Mount Isa for the rodeo, or rodeo as we call it in South Australia, and they've had you pronounce it, depends yeah. where you are. But, yeah, um, that was good, mate, you did a lot of work with some of the young kids up there. Was yeah, great. we did, we went good. to a few schools with, the, <clears throat> with um, you know, Bulls Masters guys, and, and they do a great job in getting out there and, and doing that, and we went to a few schools, and the kids loved it, which was great, um, you know, spent some time with them, and... Did a couple of appearances at the at the radio. Played a cricket, played a game of cricket on the uh, on the um, on the ring. Oh, not out! <laughs> very good shout. Kept a little bit low. Umpire Jack looks very disappointed. He's on his haunches, probably partly because of the batting and partly because he thought he was out. And um, end of the over, none for two. 
Does that look good from the right back here's a, the point? The KFC replay. Oh, oh that's looks a bit looked a bit close. Yeah, it looked pretty good from here. And I think the batsman even <laughs> sort of gave up. He was out his crease. He went back late. I think he even thought he might have been that's, out there. But... That's the one sort of you look away. And you, you just, <laughs> it's um, yeah. No, that would have been great up there. Actually, oh, I was excellent. Yeah, yeah. I've got a daughter up there teaching. It's a great town. I'll well, yeah, yeah, it is. I, I, know, I, know I hadn't been there before, and you know we obviously we're lucky. We got to yeah, obviously drink a few beers, which was nice. But um, but very responsibly. Very responsibly. Very responsibly. The, um, um, went to the races. Um, yeah, yeah, I just saw a bit of man eyes. That, yeah, I hadn't seen before, so it was fantastic. Here's Steckity again into Pearson. And shot. Pearson lays back and puts it straight through point for four. Great shot by Pearson. He's on his way. Only a fraction short. Just a little bit of width there, wasn't it? He loves that shot. And uh, he just waited and just hit it straight through point for four. There's a bit of a crowd over there too, a few of the kids. Yeah, there is. And, Great uh, to see. Great to see a lot of kids out here. I saw Manus um, signing some, some autographs before as they were coming back out. Yeah, it was fantastic. There's been so much, so many kids here getting autographs, and Manus always makes himself available. Steckity again. A little bit of an outside edge by Jimmy Pearson down to third man for one. Good throw back in. Liam Smith back on strike. And, mate, yeah, so that, what about some of the kids coming through? You, you just you mentioned the pathway side of things. There's some yeah. good, good kids, too. I knew you'd ask me that. I'm still learning everyone's names. Oh, yeah, you say, yeah. say him and her. And <laughs> yeah, and no, look, we've, we, we have, we had sort of, um, oh, look, bottom line, we'll get to the end of it, I guess. It's, 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 it's still undecided what's going on with our pathways championships because of COVID, unfortunately. We're meant to start in December with our under-19s. That looks like it's in doubt. So there's still a bit of, uh, a few decisions. Um, He's taking it again. Uh, needing to be made there on what does happen and when. Um, you know, ideally we can still get both competitions up and going, 17s and 19s, but it, it's just so up in the air. But there's, there's a couple of squads that were that were picked previously before I started the role, and um, you know we've got some really good young. I know we've got some really good young kids. Some of them I know through watching them in, in previous championships in my previous role, um, but other guys I really don't know. So the other, the other thing is getting out and trying to see as many as I can and, and follow as many as I can as well. So um, it's all it's only a month in, so it's still a lot of work to do and yeah. a lot of research to do as, as yet. Here he is again, Steckity, and plays. <laughs> Look there, just a little bit down down the wrong line and through to the keeper. Fraction short there. Yeah, it? it was too. And mate, even today, though, the Redland side of... Um, of uh, yep, young Braden uh, Laffin, yeah, who's a great young, young cricketer, yep. as 12th man, just to come in and experience. Yeah, which the, is great. And yeah. I love seeing that. Yeah, it is. It's excellent. And um, just talking, I had a, a, a lap before with Brad Wigner, who does a little bit of coaching down here, and who's a good mate of mine from back in South Australia. But he, he pointed um, Braden out and just sort of said it, exactly that. It's a great experience for him to be around these experienced players. Here he is again, lets it go. And obviously in the uh, in the Redland side with young Dylan Kritzinger. Kritzi, I've done a little bit of work with over the last four weeks, actually. Um, you know, he's an exciting player. He's been around the, the pathway set up now for, for a few years. Um, you know, so it, it's great to have these guys playing these games. As I said, they learn the game. Uh, they, they get the knowledge of the game. Um, I, I would think that, Mar I mean, Marnus and Dylan are pretty close anyway, but, yeah. um, you know, hearing the conversations that they have and, and, and taking as much as, you know, out of those as possible. Here's Deckity again. Bowling to Smith. Smith lays back. Just sort of doesn't time it straight back to to the bowler. Um, you've got young Sinfield too. Bowled the offies yep. for Redlands here today and bowled really well actually. And he, I, I was very happy with Millie with Simon Malenko. He had a deep mid off, a deep mid on, and gave him some protection. Yeah, he did good. give it a bit of air, which is nice. Yeah, but sometimes if they get a, they can start to dart him a bit too much. Yeah, and that's the thing with white ball cricket as well. He's playing a lot of it. You get into that. I mean, Sinny has got that beautiful shape. He does. You know, he can put it up there and can get some nice spin. So you don't want him getting to that habit of white ball darting all the time and, and, and you know and, and doing exactly what you said, not having the protection. So he does give it a good rip. I mean he was on close to a heat game last year, I believe. He was on the you know, he got pulled yeah. into the squad. Um, you know, great talent. Yep. So uh, let's be, he's another one we'll be following closely over the next few few months. Here's Jack Wildermuth again. Bowling to Jimmy Pearson who just pushes it through cover for one. So uh, yeah Ryan it's been Fantastic to have you here out here today, mate, and having a bit of a chat. Nice. And, you, and giving back too. I mean, you had a great Test career, and is that is that hard? Did you to go straight back into it? A bit of a break, or you just love cricket? You love enjoying? Oh no, I enjoy it? cricket. I must admit, I haven't watched a lot of live cricket since I've finished. I mean, I've, I've obviously been out to a few games here and there, but oh, you know, every Saturday or Sunday morning, um, or Monday morning, depends when they play. Here's Jack again. Let's just down the leg side, and it's called a wide. 
I'm always following scores and players and, and what they're doing from all around the country, not just not just here. So oh, I do love cricket. I still watch it. My wife would tell you that I watch it whenever it's on. So she gets um, she's not happy with it all the time, but that's that's the way it is. I've, but, you know, to, to play it and be a part of it all my life, and then you know, start, it probably took me a little while to get back to watching it. I, you know, I was probably a little bit frustrated and angry with the way I finished. I didn't want it to finish that way, and that was the way it was. But um, it took me a little while. But no, again, look, you I'm, understand too. I mean, you can see kids; people have injuries. That's and it's right. Not a, exactly. not a lot of fun. Here's Jack Willamette again to Pearson. I've oh, Smith actually. And uh, yeah, mate. Thanks, Ryan, for popping no in. Good luck with the select and roll this year, and have a bit of fun. And um, yes, we'll yeah, see you around, mate. Be. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Good on you. Johnny Devine pops back in. Well, How good's that, mate, to get access to people like Ryan Harris who come and have a chat live on KO? Well, he's talking about guys with big bums and big calf muscles and everything like that. Um, I've got one of those things, but anyway, I'm not going <laughs> yeah, to... Like, that's how we look at racehorses, the same thing. You look at the big bums and, and how they can go <laughs> we, nearly, we nearly lost the tent then as Jack Wildermuth runs into bowl again, bowling to Liam Smith. And Smith plays it down to mid on. But he's the epitome of Queensland bowlers we've had in the past. Is he the Bickles, the Kastelviches, the guys who just keep rolling in, rolling in, rolling in, bowling? They're just uh, war horses, basically, and they just keep turning out the overs after overs and they um, trying to get the ball out of their hands. It's crazy. Mate, and it is great. And that stat I mentioned earlier with, um, with Ryan to be. The, the oldest cricket to get to 100 wickets that quickly, it, it's, it was quicker than anyone. What a, what a bowler he was, just so big hearted. Here's Jack Willemuth again, moving into Smith. Just down the leg side again, not a wide that time, but pretty close. Yeah, Bally's need to start uh, making some inroads here, but they're taking their time, Pearson and Smith. They'll work into their into three or four overs, but with the bowling restrictions, they'll have to start taking advantage of that. They've got a big total all run down of 300 plus, so. Jack Wilmers bowling. I think he's starting to get a little bit of swing out there this afternoon. As I mentioned, the Doe boy, boy doctors coming through. I spoke to the umpires before the game. There wasn't a lot of swing, nothing off the deck. It's as hard as a rock, as you mentioned. And um, here he is again. And Smith just turns it on. The, it's actually interesting watching him. Ryan Harris was saying he picked up on it pretty quickly that Jack's a little bit stiff. You go out and you get a hundred, and then you've got to come and open the bowling. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a burden, I know, but you've got to do it for the team, mate. You've got to take it. And it 110 percent. And he actually did mention that you know, obviously Ryan said he didn't score a lot of hundreds enough to open the bowling, but he did occasionally come in and get a fifty at the end of the innings. And he said that you do it does affect you because it's different muscles. Well the back end of the season he actually came back and played for two and opened the batting. That's right. Hello. Yeah, that's right. So uh, here he is again, Wildermuth moving into bowl to Liam Smith. Just not getting his timing right at the moment. Yeah, there is a bit of movement here for Jack Wildermuth, and he's pitching it up, which we didn't see a lot of in the first innings from the from the Tigers boys, and uh, they would have learned from that. But the feeling was pretty ordinary from Redlands. They won't mind me saying that. A lot of drop catches. Uh, uh, a couple went between the legs of the boundary, and also bad luck. And, and it produces bad luck as well, bangers, where the ball just lands between three fields, when, and it wasn't a good day for him either. So no, it wasn't. It was interesting. Interesting. Three twenty. As we said, par. I was talking to Simon Malenko in the innings break, and he said par. So, Three twenty. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's it was. Um, but you still got to get away to a to a good start. He said it was a bit sticky early, which is funny for a hard deck. But that was probably a little bit of moisture still in the air and a bit of rain last night. But now the wicket has turned to a lovely batting wicket now, and we've got um, Steckity bowling again. And that's a lovely <laughs> cover drive by Jimmy Pearson. That's a beautiful shot. For four. Well, at the same time this morning, Jack Beef produced an absolute spanker of a cover drive here, and it was a it was a shot of the match. I think that one's just eclipsed it. Uh, we talk about sixes and fours, Evan Bancroft, but for mine, I'm a purist. I love a lovely shot across the carpet. And that that's Greg Chapel, Greg Chapel esque. Mm. I love I love the cover drive as well. He, he had to wait a little bit, Steckity. Just over pitched a tiny bit, but he had to make it into that half volley, and that's the class of Jimmy Pearson. As Steckity moves in again. It's short, back, and there's a short boundary out there. It could run all the way for four. It doesn't. It pulls up. They come back for two. Yeah, poor Andy Goody had to go out there and chase that one <laughs> after injuring himself batting. I, I spoke to Andy Goody. It's, it's a gluticus maximus, a bit of a... Is he a bit sore? A bit sore on the bot bot. So, he, uh, um, he's, he's right. Yeah, he's doing it a bit tough, old, uh, old Goody's out there. But, geez, he batted well. He batted very well. As he always does. Well, he, he, he said almost a 100-run partnership there with Jack Wildermuth. So, uh, that, that got him back into yeah. the game. Steckity's action looks so... He just seems to have gone to another level. And I know he played for Australia last year or the year before. Here he goes again. And um, 
he's bowling, seems to be bowling with a bit more wheels. Which is a bit different. Uh, we've seen the Mark Stegley hasn't always been, he's always been the first change bowler in the Shield um, with Gannon and Nessa. Well, Nisa, and he takes a while to get in his workload as uh, Mark Stegley, but we've often seen where he hasn't got a wicket in his first two spells. His third spell comes on, he gets four wickets. It's just, uh, it's just uncanny what he can, uh, what he can produce when he gets into his work. But at the moment, because it's 50 overs, he's got to do it straight away. He sure has. And again, and Jimmy Pearce, and I won't, we won't put the mocker on him, but he is looking very good at the moment, very comfortable. But the score at none for 15 of 4.4 overs. They're just working their way into the into the game. Well, I was a bit surprised that Lachlan Honan didn't bowl his 10 overs. He was, I thought that he he'd bowled very well. I know they stuck with, with uh, Manus, mm. but in the end uh, Manus ended up going for a few more than he would have liked. Yeah, Sinfield was the same. Um, yeah. Billy did mention he's probably a bit of a youth about that, but I thought if you're playing first grade, you should actually be able to step up. And they were between the two and 14 overs and only for uh, 55 it's runs. Steckity again. And Pearson just late cut, little glide down the third man. Yeah, that tells me there's nothing out there for the bowlers. Stegley puts his hands on his head saying, jeez, <laughs> give us something. <laughs> give me something. Where's yeah. the hose? I think it has, and I know Malenko loves to, to win the toss and and bowl as we talk, or send them in. Mm. Johnny, we, we, we get it, and this is getting fixed up now, which is all really cool. And Liam Smith on strike, he's just working his way back into the game, and he uh, started off a bit scratchy. But he, um, he's going all right as Steckity moves in. Smith just pushes on the leg side. There's one. Yeah, I think Andrew Goethe will come into his own here this afternoon with his swing. Just slow it down and use use the breeze that's available. I'd like to see Steckity actually bowl from the southern end. Yep. Um, with that breeze over his shoulder, whereas Jack Wilderman is actually getting some swing. It's, it's hard to tell from where we are and on the screen here, but you just see by the play, way the players are sort of playing and missing to a degree uh, that there is more... Air movement from the southern end, and Mark Stegerty's just bowling into a, an absolute road, and Jimmy Pearson all the time in the world. But they're building nicely, these two, the long, uh, long, the short of it, and, and Smith and, and Pearson, um, George and Lenny, if you will. <laughs> and and John, you've been doing a lot of this great cricket um, commentary in the last few years, and and Andrew Goad and some of these cricketers, they just seem to, con they're very consistent. They. Andrew Goody reminds me of Richard Hadley. The later he goes into life, the slower he gets with his ball, but he bowls better. You know yeah, what I mean? He just yeah. swings it. He he uh, he uh, analyses the batsman. He puts it in the right spot and makes him play the shots. As Wildermuth bowls another good line, Liam Smith just plays it forward defensively back to Wildermuth, who's now starting to loosen up a bit now. I can tell he's done a few stretches. He's, he's scored 100, as we've talked about, a magnificent knock earlier on today. Yeah. And um, he's now loosened up a bit, so he's probably getting another yard on him there. And, he's, uh, and Dennis Lilly was another one after the back injury. He became a better bowler. He wasn't as fast, but he was smart. Yeah. And you get that with age as well. You know, you're back into your season. And Rhino Harris would have been the same thing. He's bowled in the right lines in the corridor. Even, even Tomo. Couldn't, couldn't get any faster. Yeah, well, he's... Um, as, as, he, as he comes in. The, um, yeah, Tomo in the last couple of years, I mean, here we talk about the fastest bowler of all time. And he, um, with a couple of injuries, and Alan Turner ran into him, and Tomo bowled a little bit. Probably still pretty quick, though, I think, Johnny. Yeah. Still pretty quick, oh, yeah, Tomo, pretty but, quick. He was, but he was a bit, he did slowed it down a bit and just did a bit of work in the last couple of years. Got him probably two more years. Yeah, some, of them, some people don't realise that uh, Tomo and Dennis Lilly captained against each other, WA and, and for uh, Queensland in the Shield game in the 80s. Is that right? Both of them were captain, yeah. Um, there wouldn't have been many words, ordinary. There wouldn't have been <laughs> words said in that game. And as, as Wildermuth moves into bowl to Liam Smith, Smith goes back and hits it straight to point. They're just going about their work, aren't they? The, the Tigers trying to build an innings to unleash in the back end of the game. But it's, they're into the sixth over, and they still have the restrictions for another four. And whether they sacrifice one of these weeks. Smith really needs to start doing something now. One from 17. He's been solid. And his confidence should be good because he has been troubled. No, and what, what worries me, though, sometimes when you've been... Yeah. When you're one from 17 good quality bowlers, you go and play a shot that's a bit loose. But he didn't play at that time. He's hit it straight through mid off the four. A great drive and that's what he needed. Fantastic shot by Smith. He didn't want to get any more of it though, John. No, Liam Smith did exactly what Jack Beath did in the first innings. Beath struggled for the first 13 or 14 deliveries before he got off the mark and that was with a wonderful cover drive. And we see Liam Smith do exactly the same thing 
here on the KFC replay. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful. Look it's at that. So beautifully stayed there. Look at that. He just held the pose. Very difficult. Did bounce through. Could have been stopped, but a very difficult one to get to get behind as Wildermuth moves into bowl to him again. Just the confidence of one boundary sometimes, John. I mean, I know you, you just stated that one from 17, and now he's, you know, he's five, and Jimmy Pearson will walk down and say, mate, don't do anything stupid. Just hang in there. You've, got, you've done your job. Yep. You've got your four. We're now at 21. Australian player Grace Harris. We talk about cover drives. Grace Harris, big hitter of the ball, big hitter. And I spoke to her after an innings when Jody Fields was still playing. And uh, Grace Harris came off, and after the end of the game, I said, hey, that was a good inning. She goes, yeah, but... Don't you hate it when I hit all those sixes then Jody Fields comes out and does a cover drive like that? <laughs> Here he is again, Willemuth. Smith plays it back down the wicket. I've just looked around. I see Michael Jay, the father of, of Zandon Jay, has come out to, to have a bit of a look. Yep. Ripping Blake too, Michael. And he um, he was play, he was a very, very good grade cricketer. Played in England too. Played a bit of county cricket over there. And his young bloke Zandon has got, a, got big raps on him. I did watch him bowl last year and I'll be interested to see how he goes today. So a little bit of it might be a change here now. Is Deckard still going to keep bowling? I think he is. I suppose when you've got him tied up like that, why wouldn't you? They'll keep Yeah, him. well, you've got to see what you have in the back end as well. But they have got Andrew Goady, like, man, he, he will bowl his 10. You've got also you've got that man, Cameron Boyce, who uh, Billy Dean is really looking forward to seeing what he can ply his trade here at Peter Burge. Sand and Sister Sierra also playing in the Catherine Raymond Shield as Steckity moves into bowl again to Pearson. Pearson has hit that and he's got enough of it and that's a Dorothy. <laughs> nearly killed the kid. And it, the young bloke nearly caught it. The ball is running away. 4-6. And running away for it looks like, looked like another four. It's gone a long way. Great shot. I don't even think he got all of that either, did he? He didn't either. The breeze certainly picked it up and took it a little bit further. Almost landed... They're playing bocce over the back there of the Redlands uh, Sports Complex. Bit of bocce, something you play at Christmas time. Those bats, Very dangerous. These bats today are fantastic. But um, Jimmy would be happy with that, but he just want to make sure he gets the, the full lot later on. As you can see, the camera's going around. The young kids as the ball went over on the KFC replay. I don't think I don't know whether the umpire had a look at that ball. because he moves damage. in the bowl again to Pearson. That's pitched up, and he's got an inside edge. French cut for four. You've just got to... Mark Stigley's got his hands on his head, and rightfully so. He just can't believe there's a... And this is, a, yeah, this could be the catalyst for the Redland Tigers because Valley's had a, a bit of luck to, uh, earlier this morning. The ball's landed in the right places and whatnot, uh, but the Redland Tigers made them, you know, made that luck for him because of the drop catches. But this just might be something that... Uh, you need a luck. I mean, chasing 320, you always will need a little bit of luck, don't you, John? Totally. Totally. Beautiful afternoon here at Redlands, and there's still a big crowd. There's still people coming in to the ground for this first round KFC clash. It's great to have so many people watching club cricket. As second he moves in. Yeah, well, Here's junior cricket's finished for the day, uh, for, for, or any sport for the for the youngsters. So, how often do you get to be five metres away from uh, quality players such as Marnus Labuschagne? Uh, Jack Willemuth, even Bancroft, you know, some of the greats. <laughs> yeah, actually, it was great to see Uzi. Us Usman Khawaja was also signing. And I'll, you always, it's a class of anybody, and Usman got 50, but there was a couple of guys there that didn't get as many runs, and they're still signing autographs. So um, I love seeing that. Yeah, kids seem to turn away when I pulled out the crayon for some reason. Must have been <laughs> right. And that's another beautiful shot from Jimmy Pearson, only for one. Just pushed it out there, got the single, took a run. Kept the strike. Yeah, but came out the middle of the bat, bangers. Yeah, so he's seeing it like a watermelon. Man. He is seeing it like a watermelon. And yeah, no, as we just said there, the grandstand is is very, is nearly full. Yep. And the clubhouse, there's a heap of people in the clubhouse as well, which are looking through where the scorers are over there. Paddy Culpin, I caught up with earlier on today. Great to see him. He's scoring his seven millions match today, is Paddy? He is. And, he is. And, and Dougie, Dougie And Dougie, what a ripper Dougie is. Great photographer As too. He is a great photographer. Some of the great shots that he does take as Steckity moves into Boulder Pearson. He lays back and cuts it for four. Well, that might Actually, be the shot today. that was Liam Smith. That might be the shot today. Off the, the back single, foot. Liam Smith. Great Beautiful throw. shot. That'll make him, he's unleashed the shackles. Yeah, it came on that, off that cover drive in the previous over, didn't it, from Lee Smith. He's showing his class now. Lovely. Off the back foot, ladies and gentlemen. Have a look at this. It doesn't come any better. Beautiful. Straight through the ball. Straight to the point fence. That's a fantastic shot. And now he's doesn't need to do anything silly. Just, just play it on its merits now. 
as Steckity moves into bowl to him. Well, it was... <laughs> you could see that coming, couldn't you? It was there was nothing dangerous about that whatsoever. One of these kids behind us would have done exactly the same thing. You could see that coming. He's, uh, and it'll be interesting to see who bowls the next over. I think they may go to a slow bowl. There's a bit of chat going on at the moment, what they'll do there. Or will they leave Jack Wildermathon, who is coming back to bowl another over? Yeah, just looking at Andrew Goaty, who's hovering around point. So it won't be him, but Jack is he, um Andrew likes to when he comes on about this sort of stage in the innings? Yeah, I, I just think with the breeze, I think it'd be, it'd be ideal for him. I don't know how bad that injury is. He seems to be moving a lot freer now. He might have got some, well, maybe put ice on a glute injury or not, but uh, he's sort of like Lazarus. He's, he's <laughs> almost, almost like terminated. No matter what you do to Andrew Goat, he just gets up until that red eye goes out. He's going kind to of keep coming at you. Here he is. Wildermuth bowls to Pearson. He just pushes it on the, on the onside and takes one. Puts Liam Smith back on strike. And uh, you're right, Cameron Boyce, um, we mentioned him, we touched on it earlier on. He's, he had a bit of a battle last year. It's great to see him back playing yeah. cricket again. Yes, 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 definitely. Got off the canvas. And, um, and he's just on the verge, wasn't he? I mean, and he still can be. I mean, he's such a good bowler. We've got so many good leggies in, in Queensland. It's it's great to see. Yeah, Mitch sweeps in another one. As Wildermuth moves into Smith. And Smith takes him straight over point. One bounce, two bounces into the fence. When the field's up, you do that, uh, Evan Bancroft. You're going to throw the bat in anything wide because if you're going to get enough on it, it's going to beat most of the field. There's only two of them out. And that's what, exactly what happened. That's going to the fence for four. And that's a shot. He, I mean, he was probably looking to go a bit further through cover and it got away from him a bit, but it didn't matter. There was nobody there. He, took the, he takes the boundary. And I think he's made a bit of a decision here, Liam Smith, to go, well, hey, Kay, I'm going all right now. I might just play a few shots. He's but be big, careful. It's a big boy. As Wildermuth moves into him again. And he just plays it on its merits. Good ball and just plays it back to, to Wildermuth. Yeah, Jack will be going, oh, maybe I should have had another one. <laughs> <laughs> but in saying that, he might get a wicket. It was just almost yeah, at the same so, point. Billy might be able to help me out when the first so, wicket fell, that, um, which is around about this time. And still good figures. They're none for 12 off 3.2 overs. After we were talking about, you know, Sending them in and they didn't get a wicket on the very next ball they did. Redlands done for 41 off 7.3. Wildermuth moving in again to bowl to Liam Smith. Very well bowled up there. Liam Smith lets it go. Umpire signals to his umpire partner. Two balls to go in the over. As he walks back to his mark. Beautiful afternoon. Still a bit of breeze in the trees over the back of the, of the uh, Wellington Point State School. A few birds running around. The plovers are having a bit of a spell. A little bit of cloud, but nothing, I don't think, that will affect the game this afternoon. As Wildermuth moves in again. For the fifth ball of the over to Liam Smith. Who plays that straight through mid-wicket. Probably wanted to go through mid-on, but he'll take it. A little bit of inside edge on that for two runs. Takes the score to 43. Yeah, you just keep getting the ones and twos and not lose any wickets. Uh, you'll run them down. It's, it's robotic. It's percentage cricket. But at the end of the day, you end up with the, uh, with the, with the points at, the, at uh, around about 5 o'clock this afternoon. There was a very smart cricketer many years ago, John, used to say, take the ones and twos and the boundaries will look after themselves. And that's a... I um, can't remember who said that, but it was something that I didn't take on board. <laughs> but uh, it's Jack Wildermuth again to bowl to Smith. Who just gets a little outside edge on that and just plays it down to Steckity for one. Keeps the strike. Jimmy says, mate, you have another bat. If you want to, I'll stay up here. I've done a bit of keeping today. Have a little bit of a break. That's the end of the over. The score is done for 44 after eight overs. And Jimmy Pearson not out 27. Liam Smith not out on 16. Eighteen seventy six. So Mark Steggity wearing the number sixteen that he's 
had in the Shield game. Only wore it for South. Come from the northern end, bangers. And waiting for him is Jimmy Pearson. So no, bangers is. Uh, You've played here at the. Uh, has it changed much the pitch? Has it always been a road like this? Mate, Peter Birch Oval, um, it's been, always been a good wicket. Right. Yeah, it, it's, it, it took a while to get there. I mean, the ground's been there 25 years now, but it took a little while to get there. But now you talk to opposition clubs and they say, oh, they love batting here at Redlands. And it does, it's, it's a great wicket. But I mean, today's fair enough. If the bowlers are giving, are bending their back today, mm. they're getting a bit out of it. Steggity, see if he can bend his back and get rid of. The tall timber of Liam Smith, but he finds it behind point for a single. Frustrating. So this this is a frustrating thing for the uh, the Valley side. They can't build pressure. They're getting a single, changing the strike over. Second, he can't get in his workload. And the beautiful thing about Mark Stigley when he plays shield cricket, he always puts it in the same line. He ties them up, he ties them up, and finally makes the breakthrough. Or, the, or Michael Nisi does it at the other end, you know what I mean? But you've got to build pressure. And if you've got the field back, it's just going to be much tougher for uh, for the bowler to try and maintain that pressure. As Stegney comes in from the grandstand, Ed, in. And there you go. Made a lawyer out of me. I didn't get a signal out of that one, but you know what I mean? I do. So, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. And pre that pressure is the big word in cricket. Going back to the wicket, I mean, they're now, a lot of the wickets now are, they're very similar. I mean, the groundsmen, they're a great groundsmen. The wickets are great. Yeah. But I still believe that even when they're roads, you can still bend your back and get a bit out of it. But you've got to work a bit harder sometimes. Well, this is what we talked about earlier. Uh, uh, Billy and Bangers was uh, pitch it up. The Yorker. If it's not going to swing. Pitch it up. Stegany comes in. That one pushes Pearson back a little bit. And no run. And when they're getting dot balls, then the run rate required gets up a little bit. The pressure is exactly, exactly what you're talking about, Bangers. I'd like to see probably a little bit more talk from, from Valleys. It's a bit quiet out there at the moment. They've just sometimes... You can't hear it for the plovers, mate. Yeah, the plovers. But sometimes when a side yeah. now, it's a situation where a side needs to really get behind the bowlers. A bit of talk. Come on, guys, we're in the game. And, and you can get a bit relaxed. It shouldn't take a wicket. Steggity. Charging. Look, that's a full pitch ball. Beautiful shot through mid wicket. Well, he pitched it up looking for that Yorker. The magpie or the plover nearly fielded that one, but it's going to be wrapped in there by uh, White. Donald White, well fielded, ran around, grabbed that big tall timber too. Donald, isn't he? He's a, he's a big lad. Looks about six foot four. He took 34 wickets at 30 last year, and he was in the top 10 wicket takers. So we're looking forward to seeing him bowl. He's a young lad who. Um, who's got big wraps on him. So he'll be looking probably to come on soon. Steckett is looking a little bit sore. Not from batting. Well, he did swing the timber. He did swing the timber a little bit. Round the grounds the there, and uh, Tango Reckler of 144. Toomble are one for nine. University of Queensland chasing 190 of Northern Southerns are two for 24. South Brisbane, nine for 199 off their 50, and Winnem are now two for 10. <laughs> Uh, still rained out down there at uh, Bill Pippin as Steggity comes in. Pearson. Oh, that's... Ooh, he's where's the line? Up. Well, he's gone for the wide. <laughs> call the wide. He still got caught off a wide, but wow. Yeah, I think that was the old appeal on the wide. To hopefully they don't call the wide. That happens. Good week there by Lachlan Pfeffer. Got the little legs pumping. Go down there and pick that one up. Uh, you may have been delayed down there at Bill Pippin. And the other game, well, the Hornets of puncturing the necks of the Sunshine Coast. Gorgeous. Five for 18 after posting six for 305. Five for 18. Five for 18. You probably can't blame the wicket. No. And Harry Wood getting 115 in that game. So plenty of action happening around the grounds here. As Stegany comes in again. Jimmy Pearson off the back foot tries to beat Andrew Goaty. Doesn't do so. Harry Wood's a good lad. I, I did meet him at the season launch and uh, had a bit, had a bit of a chat to him. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're a good family. Harry and Jack. And that is the end of the over. Billy's going to jump in, bangers. Jump in, mate. We'll talk to you soon. We'll, you'll be back. And, uh, G'day, Billy. We'll go and Welcome back. We'll see if, uh, for the sake of the uh, of the Valley side, that he can create some sort of, uh, of uh, a wicket to be taken. At the moment, it's easy as you like for the Red Sox. They had Liam Smith tied up a little bit. And Smith unleashed a beautiful cover drive. In successive overs, and he's on his way. He's moved to 17 off 30. Jimmy Pearson, 29 off 24. None for no, uh, sorry, none for 48 off uh, 
off nine overs. Billy, where do they find a wicket? It, uh, they haven't given any chances, have they, uh, the Tigers? Well, they haven't given anything. Um, Valleys haven't necessarily made anything either. So mm. the challenge is that there's it, games meandering a little bit at the moment. Then that there's not a lot of pressure coming from Redlands. They're just going about their business. I think maybe a tad slowly. As we see White come in for his first ball. Ooh, that's got a bit of bounce there on Liam Smith. And so, two so, tall guys going at it. So, yeah, so they've got to go at six and over um, as an average, and, and yeah, they're plodding along at barely five. That said, Valley's, it seems as if Valley's been bowling brilliantly through it. It's just it, the game is just sitting at this... I mentioned, to you, I mentioned to you about Brendan McCullum in the Shield calls about yeah. how he used to change the field every ball as you see White lumbering in from the southern end, a shortish ball finds the middle of Liam Smith's bat and it just changes the whole, every ball is a field change, it doesn't yeah. have to be much but it just throws the bats from there a little bit. Maybe I'm biased because I grew up in that era but the thing that I liked to be Ian Chappell's captaincy was that he would just make things happen. The, that, the game never meandered while Cipelli was in charge of the team. Yes, he had some good players around him, but at different times they played some pretty strong international teams as well. And he, right down into his shield cricket at South Australia, he would just make it happen. Right, that's going to be a, a single to Andrew Goaty. I'd like to see two players, mid-wicket and cover, just come in five paces, just get that little bit closer to the batsman. They're in the peripheral vision as White comes in. That also creates a little bit of a tunnel uh, um, a situation for the bowl, almost like the Nets. Make something happen. Obviously, you're not going to put a man underneath the lid in this form of the game, especially the way the wicket is. But change things around a little bit. You're right, Billy. You just make something happen because Valleys are waiting for something to happen and Redlands are just going about their business, look over, and all of a sudden they're going to be 50. Well, sometimes what you need to do as a captain is just to make a field change for no reason. That's it. Because then the batsman's trying to work out why did he move him. And you just moved him to get the batsman thinking about totally. why you moved him. Totally. And, and that then starts the batsman not thinking about his game. He's trying to second-guess the, the captain. Mm. And then all of a sudden, the batsman stopped what he's doing and you get the wicket. So yeah. some, sometimes it's just contriving those little competitions within the competition itself. White Pearson, and that finds the middle bat. He chuck a leg gully in, chuck uh, for no reason. First, yes, no reason. Just put him there. One just ball, then moving back. Yeah, well, he just put him there for an over and let the, the, the batsman try and work out why has he got a leg gully? Was the ball going to do something I'm not expecting now? Is the other option also, Billy, to uh, um, shorter bowling spells, change the bowlers around? I you think. can do those things, yeah, and, every, and, every couple of and the bowlers themselves haven't been bowling long spells, we're only in the the tenth over. Whoa, slash over extra cover, Jimmy. That might have gone all the way. Let's have a look at the umpire. It's six over extra cover. He just sort of rocked that off the back foot of back foot cover drive. Just smacked it again over the top of it, where an extra cover would have been over the bun bench over the fence. Jimmy Pearson, the prince of Peter Burge. Belts that one over extra cover. It brings the 50 up at the end of the tenth over as well. So yeah, they're just going along at five and over. Well, hang on a second. The umpire's looking for uh, a replay here from our coverage to see if it went for six. And it's a bit hard to say, but I think it did go. Oh, it, it, it went for six. Because nobody was there. No. <laughs> it was, everybody was up. Um, I, I, I could, well, actually, no, I, I apologise. He's actually called another ball. ball. Yes. Because. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll be spending a while getting it, but there is a creek down there as well. When so you do, if it I'll, comes back, it'll be back wet. Obviously, the viewers can't see what I'm doing, but I'm drawing a box. This is exactly what the uh, umpire did, which I assume well, when we do cricket, that's what they do for a third umpire's ruling. So I was a little bit confused, and I, I don't think they can use the, well, the footage, no. which is excellent. The, but the square the was for the square box. The square balls. box. <laughs> Exactly right. So that's the end of the power play. Ten overs gone. None for 55. Pearson 35. Smith on 18. And what bowling changes? Well, we've young Zay. There's young Xander's J. Yeah, beautiful. Can't wait to see this guy bowl. Does he go in tandem with Boyce? Well, that will be determined after six balls. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think Donald White will still get another over or two, having just uh, come on. There's the. Uh, Nothing like using a little bit of child labour to go and find a cricket ball. There's about eight of them down there and they found it. You and I can't find our car keys on one table. As long as you uh, count the eight down and the eight come back, <laughs> yeah. they didn't leave anyone behind. <laughs> yeah, 
Oh, when suddenly a nice one comes back. But you go, hang on, see? I think that's where there is no pay to get in, but that's obviously a great place to come into the ground if you had to pay admission. Most certainly. Mitch Swepson, two for 13 as they take on Toomble. Matthew Renshaw and Cotter. <laughs> Toomble going along nicely. With Mitch love to see Mitch. Great to see him back after injury, Mitchy Swepson. Wouldn't I mean, I'd love was... to see him in that Australian side. Like, Nathan, he was so close. Nathan Lyon's done well. It must be some point where Lyon doesn't get picked. I know that's a hard call to make because people like Nathan's earned his right to be picked first up every time. But Xander Jay is absolutely started with an absolute... Well, second ball, Jaffa. Here he comes again, pushing him back. Half an appeal here for Liam Smith. I think Smith's got to get himself going forward rather than going backwards. Well, he's got a long left leg, hasn't he? Well, it's just as long as his right, yeah. actually. But but at the moment, Jay's got him pinned backwards, backwards, and, and reaching for it. Do you wonder if he saw him coming as he, Jay comes in again, pushes that one forward, and Billy Deemy, listen to you, long lunge forward, pushes it down to long on for one. Yeah, nothing better than a, enough spin of liking to see the batter going back, going back, going back. It's just not touching on Mitch Swepson. So close for international honours and just that injury. But the man's got back up off the canvas. He's he got back. injured because he bowled 450 million balls in practice through that whole summer season <laughs> as the 13th player 30th in man. that squad. Jay, foolish ball, slashed it upish a bit. From Jimmy Pearson, but again another single, unable to build pressure. He wore himself out as a net bowler. See, I don't want to be too critical, but well, I'm going to be. <laughs> a new bowler comes in, just bring them all in, just see what happens. Just tighten the neck around the, 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 the rope around Liam Smith's neck. If it gets past him, fine. They've got quite a number of runs to work with as Jay comes in again, and that's going to be pushed to mid off for no run. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just no. build that pressure that's for. It might cost you three or four runs. It might get you a wicket. Well, you've just got to bring a fielder into the uh, vision of the yep. batter at the moment. When they're all back, they're not really the, the batter's not seeing the fielder, so he's thinking he's got plenty of space to play in. So that looks like Cameron Boyce with the ball in hand. Andrew Gady's walking that way as well, and so is White. So White will continue. He's taking the cap off. Yep. Look how tall that. I know he's about six foot five hundred. Donald White. D O N A L. Oh, yeah, yes. O D, obviously. I don't know if that's the English Welsh spelling. Yes, well, White is W H Y T E. Yeah, he's probably. 34 wickets at 30 last year. And he's in the top 10 wicket takers for 2021. And he's filled in the role of the Fox, Luke Feldman. Who I saw the other day, he's still looking a treat. He must just bench press, you know, you bench press me, 150. White, Pearson, foolish ball. I think White's starting to realise he can use this breeze and his length and height to get that ball right up into Jimmy Pearson's sh you know, short length. Anything to pop on him is going to be around the chin. Took a great catch this morning to get rid of Lachlan Fessett. J Jimmy Pearson had to move a long way in front of first slip. It's white again. Pushes Jimmy Pearson back, but there's a single to Andrew Goady. Pearson's keeping was, was pretty good, mind you. It was an easy wicket to keep on because stock standard bounce in the wicket. Great outfield for the uh, fielders to get the ball into him, if not on the full-on first bounce. So... Not from our era, John, where the ball would hit a stone or something <laughs> as it was thrown in and go off at a 45-degree angle all of a sudden. <laughs> we keepers took their life in their hands with the custard arms like myself throwing it in. Whitey bends it back a little bit but finds the thick outside of it. We saw Marnus throw one, I reckon, a good 100 metres from one end of the ground to the opposite end of the wicket over the stumps on the full. That was freakish. I could do that on four attempts. It would be like a relay throw. Yeah. Well, playing country country cricket and some rec cricket, uh, one field in particular reminds me, as we see White coming in the bowl again, to Smith. Slashes that one. It's going to be a chance. Half volley. Good bit wow. of fielding to take it on the half volley. Terrific stuff there from uh, Osman. 
I don't think that's just McLaughlin. No, that's McLaughlin. McLaughlin. He's wearing a swap shirt. It's two twelves. Two twelves. Um, we played at uh, Condamine, which used to be the old sh- shooting range. Okay. Yeah. Clay pigeon. So all the clay pigeon targets are still on the field. All the little fragments. So every time the ball ran along the ground, you had to actually turn because it's likely to hit a bump and take you take your eye out as white comes in again. But that, there's no such, and that's why why he was able to dive for that one, knowing there's going to be a, a true bounce. KFC replays. For those playing at home, Kawhi just moved himself onto uh, shirt number seven. Started at number 12, decided to be number seven today. Yeah, as we look again as the Hornets try and put out the Scorchers fire. Six for 26 as White comes in again. Who's taking the wickets in that game? So Olsen for two. Alex Day has got two. Brennan Mars got one. Ashford Newf have got one. Okay. Sharing the round. And how good, that's not a good story, Alex Day. Oh, God. How could you come back from bizarre? Terrific guy. His sister plays for uh, uh, Queensland hockey team. Uh, Jacqueline, I think her name is. So a sporting family there. But Alex Day, terrific guy. I don't know whether he loves his dogs more than Matthew Renshaw. Might be a certain competition there. Six for 26, the Scorchers chasing Ipswich is six for 305. After a Harry Wood ton. Good start for the season. Of course, we, we, we all thought he, Jack Wildermuth, was the first of the um, first grade players to get a century this season, but Harry Wood beat him by, by a few minutes. And the other blockbuster, if, not saying they're not all blockbusters, University of Queensland, the pencil pushes are up against Norths. Norths posting 190. And at the moment, the students 4 for 32. A lot of retirements Ooh. for the... Uh, for uh, University, Scott Walter, Scott Henry, Michael Phillipson, you know, Mitchell Fry, just a, an abundance of players. End, been... end of an era for Uni, after, yeah, and, but, after yeah. a number of years up the top of the table. Well, they're the club champions, as I mentioned, uh, to Evan Bancroft. I think in the last nine years, I think they've won eight, with Redlands winning it four years ago, I think, for the club championship. So, They've got a lot of depth there at uni. Um, great cricketers. I don't know how smart they are, just because they go to the University of Queensland, but they're great cricketers. And, uh, I think, I think, that, by, I think co- that rule disappeared a long time yeah. ago. And their club coach was Peter Clark, who's obviously with Cricket Australia. So yeah, the, the University in North going toe-to-toe. The old days where you, you played in the suburb you grew up with, was that club, or, or in uni's case, that you played there because you went to uni there, I think those days are long gone. Yeah, Matt Willens has got himself a contract for Queensland. There's a push Good to... Young bowler. Yes. I think we saw him in the Gilchrist he did, Ponting game. He, yeah, we did. And Carrara. he may... I'm just trying to think if he was in a Mars Cup game last year. There's somewhere where I didn't see him around. But he's been thereabouts, played, I think, a CA11 match. Jay, again. That was a very confident shot. Bit of uh, three stooges stuff there behind the wicket. Did they go for no run? I saw him in, yeah, certainly in the under nine national championships. Young Matt Williams. It's pretty quick. Well, we thought. Wait for Jay to come in again to Liam Smith. Arpish ball spinning, but feel a nice here. Gully and the University now four for thirty two. In the other game, Tubal chasing oh. 144 from Sandgate Reckler for 4 for 58. So the nerves in the sheds there at Ken Mackay. Oh. And honestly, 144 at the postage stamp out there at Tubal should be raining quite easily. One of the smallest grounds in the competition. That's the End of the O for Jay. How about that? Two overs, none for three, Billy. Ah, nice. Pretty, pretty impressive. He's bowled pretty well. And, of course, Ken McCoy Oval, probably one of the older original grounds still going around in club cricket. Hmm. Right next to the croquet grounds. Nothing wrong with taking a hammer to a ball. Ah, used to be another one of these grounds that would have the rugby league in winter there. The North oh, yeah. used to play when it was called Oxenham that's Park. A, yes, that's right. Right down here as we see 
bowling change, Andrew. Yeah, no, That's still, still white. Still white bowling. He's been good white now for 12, but he needs a breakthrough, Billy. Yeah. Well, again, One just more. things like they, they have slowed the scoring down a bit, valleys, but haven't taken that wicket yet. They haven't necessarily looked like taking a wicket as much. We're well, thinking about two here, and Smith has a look and says no. So, well filled in the deep there, boy. The scoring's down, but Redlands won't be too upset. They're still going at just on five and over and, and not have lost a wicket. So they'll go through till about 20 before they'll start to, I think, accelerate and get back up towards the six that they need to be at to reel in 322 runs. Lanky Donald White. Quicker ball. Driven straight back. Shapes the throat. Never happens. Well, the other game uh, just down the road, with a Manly at Bill Aubrey taking on South Brisbane. A lot of changes there as well for Winner Manly. Jason Flores retiring. Chris Lloyd. Nathan Rabnot was, but he's over here at uh, Redlands. So uh, Alistair McDermott and Peter George the year before. So new squad there at the Seagulls. And that's a lovely shot. Beats the infield. That'll roll all the way to the fence. Well, they've broken the shackles. Liam Smith, a lovely on drive. Certainly was. Never left the uh, surface of the ground from the moment that he hit it. And again, Pierce both mid on, mid off precisely. The bowler with no chance in his follow through either, and it just went nicely along the ground. Done for 68, halfway through this 14th over. Smith sits on 26. We talk about playing in the V at the start of the year, and he's, look at that. Boom, straight between the legs of Jimmy Pearson. Wide again, and that one's going to be slashed out to uh, cover for no run. Yeah, the Seagulls chasing 199. They're three for 87. Cameron Trask is back. He's 47 not out. Liam Hope Shackley has moved over to the Seagulls, and he's not out on 13. Uh, like a little bit of depth there, but it's a, it's a young side. Uh, the Seagulls chasing 199. On drive, finds the fieldsman. He's at the right length. Just hit it a bit too hard there, Jimmy Pearson. Yeah, the wicked takers there for the Seagulls. Liam Hope's actually getting 2 for 44 off his 10. Grayson Jones, 2 for 50. Joshua Fraser. New player into the stocks, two for 26 off his six. So the slower bowlers are getting, are tightening everybody up, Billy. And I think that's why Gody, Boyce, they need to come on and just slow it up because Jace doing a great job at the northern end, isn't he? He's been very stingy. That's the end of the over. None for 70 after 14. End up with seven runs off that over, just the one boundary and a, and a handful of singles. Pearson moves to 41. Smith meandering along nicely, 27 off 49 deliveries. We're going to see Jay continue for the Valleys. Yeah, he's got to bowl them out. He needs a breakthrough, and he's the man who can. Well, he may not get it this end. White might get it the other end because he's tied one the other way. But at the moment, the uh, both batsmen for Redlands looking set and comfortable. I just saw the team card there, and it had Marnus batting at like six or seven. I don't know whether he he will or not. He's, he might be tired after being in the nets at 6.30 this morning, so we'll see what happens. But I know he'd be tired. The poor guy, they had to get up to the bowl to him <laughs> at 6.30 this morning. Exactly. So you can see Marnus down there coming in at seven, actually. Yeah, not, no sure, not sure how they would have chosen who got the short straw to be the uh, the net bowler or two. Yeah. Get up that early. Mind you, though, I probably wouldn't mind bowling a few of the Australian number number three. I reckon you'd bowl him into form. Really, really quickly. You'd bowl him into form. By 6.35, the man's back in touch. He's got sore shoulders from swinging and hitting. <laughs> Get your bad shots out of the way. So, to going along nicely of the Tigers, none for 70. And I'm sure the sun's up at 6.30. Maybe they've had the lights on on the nets. Trust me. What other nets? Oh, just over the back here. Yeah, Good nets too. Yeah, they are. Those of you watching, wherever you are in Australia, or indeed in, around the world, we are in 
Peter Burge Oval, which is in Redland City. We're not in Brisbane City, Redland City, just south east of Brisbane. That's a thick outside edge, you would think. It's going to roll away towards the, the rope. Flick back in. They're going to turn for three. As Jimmy Pearson comes through. Just be ended for three. Well, I wonder how much of that was an intentional shot. Or did Jay actually have a win here? Oh, I think, I think it was a 50-50. He got the edge, but it was a pretty thick edge. It was never going to be caught by the, the keeper. And with no slips, it became a pretty safe yeah. shot. Lock on for the keeper. If you ask the batter, he'll say that it was a uh, perfectly played, played edge the through the gap. Yep. Down to Jay. Always is. Tries to do his own fielding. Yeah, at the moment, the both Redland batters are happy not to take the attack up to Jay. That's right. Let him bowl his uh, nice length. Jay again. That's been spanked to deep backward point. That's the uh, end of the over. 15 overs down, none for 75. Just plotting along pretty much run for run as Valleys were going. Valleys, though, were one wicket down at that point. Kath Raymond Shield continues or starts tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes, the girls are out. They usually start a little bit later, but they're going to kick start tomorrow. And it's uh, first up just over the over our shoulder here at EGW Wood Reserve. Uh, Winner Manning will take on Ipswich. And that's all these games start at 10 a.m. Western Suburbs take on Valleys at a graceful oval number one. And Sandgate Redcliffe will host Gold Coast. And that's at Trevor Hones Oval. And then Sunshine Coast will host University of Queensland at uh, Kerry Emery Oval or Elizabeth Daniels Park. So we see a bowling change from the uh, southern end. Cameron Boyce. Well, come on. And, of course, the, uh, the girls starting as part of the... KFC Queensland Premier Competition starting early with the WBBL starting next month. So the, uh, the girls need to get a bit of practice and games in for those that are in the heat squad. Well, Lord's Taverners, it continues, it starts tomorrow as well. Sunday Reddins will take on its switch out at, uh, over here at Fred Kratzman. North will take on Western Suburbs at Shaw Park over at uh, Ian Hilly Oval. Gold Coast will take on Darling Downs and South West. South Brisbane will take on Sandgate Reckless. Sunshine Coast take on UQ. Wyndham will take on Bally's at Bill Aubrey. And Toomble will battle it out with Wide Bay. Plenty of cricket on. Forget about the footy. You see Cameron Boyce coming from the southern end. Jimmy Pearson pushes that one out to deep extra cover. Thought about two. <laughs> Jimmy Pearson wanted two. And he's got... He's got further to run, being little. Well, the heat in the sun tells you that it's the end of footy season and it is time for cricket to start. Too hot to be playing football in a jersey. And so, all that is happening tomorrow. So, Kath Raymond and Lord Tabners starts tomorrow. Go to your My Cricket site or Queensland Cricket. And follow, get involved. Premier Cricket on that site there, you'll be able to find what's happening in all your cricket as well. Obviously second grade starting today as well. And a big thanks too for uh, K.O. Freebie for covering the, uh, the Premier Cricket. Ooh, half a chance and Smith is actually lumbering back into, in, into his crease. Kawaja sensing he had a chance, threw it into Pfeffer. So... This is what we've been waiting for. Cameron Boyce at one end, Xander Jay at the other end. Build some pressure. Boyce again. Slash that. A single. Andrew Goaty probably really looked at uh, Neil to see if he's a bit too wide. Should I move? But Goaty happy to do what he's told. Pearson on 44. This time again, another single, easy as you like. The calibre of Cameron Boyce, Billy, to bowl on the offside suggests to me they could afford to bring everybody around or bring one across into this gap. Well, it, well he is the leg cover. spinner, so with both right-hand batters, yeah. it, you could take one off the leg side. Yeah. Make something happen. Boyce again. Again, deja vu, Grand Hog Day, same shot. 
And you do that, six runs every over. Four runs comes off that over, the first over of Boyce. None for 79. One for 79 was where Valleys were at this 16th over of the match. Well, the Cass Raymond Shield action is live and free on KO for four weeks leading up to the WBBLC. So live and free on KO freebies. And look, to be perfectly honest, once you go on to freebies, there's that much sport on there, you've got to sign up for the subscription, I'll tell you what. And that way you get out of cleaning the yard, the bins overflow, oh, fridge gets emptied. KO, how good. Jay. Jeez, he's enthusiastic, and this is what they need to lift in the field. The diehards, they're struggling a little bit. At the moment, Redland's full of running. Pierce on 45, Smith on strike on 32. Take it there, Bowling's got the break through as Jay. He's built pressure, he's built pressure, and he's pushed Liam Smith back, and he's pushed back middle stump as well. It's gone between the bat and pad there, where it just turned back into the left hand, into the right hander, and a big gap between bat and pad. Just went straight through, took the middle stump, and the uh, finally first wicket falls for Redlands with the score on 79. Zandon Jay makes the breakthrough. We talked about him building pressure, maybe the wicket from the other end, but in this instance, I'll do it myself. He makes the breakthrough, and that's the end of Liam Smith. He started slowly, started playing some great shots, two great extra cover drives, but he's on his way to the sheds, and that brings Marnus Labashank to the crease. And what Everybody's been looking for. He dropped the catch. He got done for 94 runs of his bowling. So he's going to come out and have a bit of a bat. And well, is that what's going to bring the uh, bring some nerves to the sheds? Oh, I'm not sure if it's necessarily going to bring nerves to the sheds, but it's going to help Valleys feel just a touch more comfortable, mind you. Hard to feel comfortable if uh, Manus Labrishan with an average of 60 plus in test cricket <laughs> comes out to the centre wicket. It'd be like if you're playing grade cricket and Bradman came out. I mean, how the well, heck did we bowl to him? What was, uh, what was young Zoe's name who bowled Brian Lara? Zoe Goss. Zoe Goss. Well, I think of Zoe Goss against Brian Lara, anything can happen in cricket. You bowl a good enough ball, you're going to get whoever they are out. Yeah. So. I'm sure Zand and Jay woke up this morning saying, I hope I get to bowl to Marnus, but maybe not. But let's see how he goes. Oh. Marnus Labashane, first ball. Facing, I mean, not out. Well, could be wrong. Well, as I say, Bradman went first ball in his final innings. He did. There was no ball, apparently. <laughs> Look at the footage, very grainy footage. So Zandon Zay to Marnus Labashank. Marnus thinks about moving. Doesn't wave the wand. That's disappeared for one ball anyway. But does that make the story of Donald Bradman all that more intriguing that he got a naught on the last? Or would you rather he got a hundred and it's written in ink? I think it shows the fallibility of human nature. Exactly. Zandon Jay again. Foolish ball. Sprayed out to mid off for one. He gets off the mark as Marnus. Not everyone gets to finish on on the terms that mm. they want. Well, Ryan Harris said that himself. You know, injury yeah. ruined at the end of his season, so. Yeah. There are plenty of people have been robbed by injury, robbed by circumstance. Jay again. Pushes him back there. Jimmy Pearson off the back foot. Finds player in the deep. Get a single. 46. One for 81. One for ten for Sand and Jay. Some of Mick. Sister Sierra said playing in the Catherine Mont Shield for Valleys tomorrow. Oh, I've been blessed by three daughters who have got absolutely no cricketing or sporting ability whatsoever, so I get my weekends off. It's fantastic. And I know where they got it from. So Jay again. Marlis scoots down the other end. Wonderful over there from Zander and Jay. He's made the breakthrough. He's got one for 10, or one for 11 off his four overs. Jimmy Pierce on 46, Marlis on two. Scores one for 80, 
82 off 17, Billy. Come for 82 off 17. Finally, the uh, first wicket falling in that over. And we've just seen Lavenstein came out, just played pretty cool. He's obviously out here to play the, the long game. Certainly, Redlands do need someone to go the long game, the same way that Valleys had Wildermuth, that they uh, built their innings around his 113. Mm. So, Cameron Boyce, again, I'm just... Well, Marnus is on strike. Uh, no, Jimmy's on strike. Just like to see the field up. Put the pressure on... On Jimmy Pearson. That one in the air for a little bit. Bit of a buzz around the ground with the uh, Marnus coming out with Jimmy Pearson, two Bulls batsmen. And the former Bulls bowler and Boyce bowling to them. Boyce, foolish ball. Ooh, doesn't get onto that. Cameron Boyce, I've seen him use the, the, the crease nicely sometimes, goes in close and out wide. Comes into Marnus. That's bounced on me a little bit. I'll get a single. Well, you may get a bit of extra bounce as the leg spinner out of the, out of this wicket, whereas the off spinners might don't get as much bounce. Well, we did go out there and have a feel of the pitch, and like I said to you and, and the grounds, you could land a plane on that thing. We'll make well, it. There's not a the, mark on it. The car park that I parked in here today is softer than that wicket. <laughs> Sweeping shot, half an appeal from <laughs> Andrew. Uh, sorry, Mark Steger, the deep. <laughs> Deep gully, or deep, yeah, deep gully. Didn't get the appeal. But There's a lot of grass on the wicket, so that will stop the ball from being scuffed around and marked up a lot. And and we've seen that that sometimes the ball is sort of the slower ball is slowed down. See Andrew Gody having a bit of a chat to Cameron Boyce, experienced campaigner. Andrew Gody, quicker ball, and that's going to find the man in the deep, and that's what. Uh, that's what Andrew Goody is suggesting that time and time again that ball has gone straight to the man in the deep. In make a change. No, it's going to stick to his guns. As I said before, bring a man across. Voice again. Comes out of the crease. Throws that down to mid. Oh, sorry, uh, deep back with square leg. They'll come back to, to Marnus, scooting along. Gee, that was a bad miss hit by Lavenstein. He came down to the wicket and then just had to rescue himself out of it. The boys had really changed and altered his delivery as seeing Lavenstein coming down to him. And nearly He's half, half worried about getting yeah. stumped. He had to get something on it because he, he, he made it. But they're going to have a drinks break now. As we go ar around the grounds here in Redlands. As they come into drinks, Pearson on 47, Labnashane on 5, 1 for 86 off 18 overs, chasing 322 for victory. You want to take us around the grounds, John? Yep, around the grounds here, uh, Sango Redcliffe, uh, post sending to bat, 144, Toomble of 5 for 99, Matthew Renshaw out for 40. And. Ronan McDonald yet to come in, so uh, they require 45 more runs with 25 overs to go. University of Queensland sent North in, and North posting 190. University of Queensland four for 58. Batsman out for Ducks there were both the Claytons, Mike and Jack, and Ben Davis and Yana Kutsi are the crease. So. They require another 132 off 35 overs. A little bit of a late start over there at Webb Harris. Winner Manly. They sent the Magpies into bat. And South posted 9 for 199 at the moment. Winner Manly clawing the way back. At one point they were 3 for 51 or 2 for 6. And Cameron Trask is still at the crease. 55 not out. Liam Hope Shackley on 30. Corey Hunter out for 15. The new skipper. So that one hangs in the balance as well. It's almost election night here, Bill, going through the numbers. Ooh. Western Suburbs up against Gold Coast. Plays resumed down there. Two for 35 are the, the uh, dish lickers up against the Finns. I'm not sure how much that game's reduced to in overs. We might be able to get an update on that. How many over game that is of Bill Pippen. And Ipswich are up against Sunshine Coast. Sunshine Coast were sent in by the Hornets. Uh, sorry, 
The Hornets were sent in by the Sunshine Coast Scorchers. They posted six of 305. Sunshine Coast is six for 50. Harry Wood getting 115 there for Ipswich. Sunshine Coast, they're struggling. Wicked so far, two to Smith, two to Llewellyn, one to Lutter, and Jack Wood none for 12 or four. So, um, all, a lot of those games hanging in the bounce. This one may be leaning towards, I don't know, Billy, if we don't gamble here, um, although I do have lentils a lot during the week. Um, who's favourite after the first rinks break? Not sure. 236 runs. Redlands need to, uh, to grab the victory. Still with nine wickets in the shed. And Valleys, well, they've just got to keep them below 322, whether they bowl them out or, or restrict the runs. It, yeah, I, I still think it's sort of sitting. No one, no one's trying to take the game by the scruff of the neck. Whereas in the other uh, KFC Queensland Premier cricket matches, seeing around the nation, around around the city, sorry, that uh, those games seem to be a little bit more one-sided. This one. Still sitting there, either side can win it, yeah. but none of them are really asserting themselves at the moment. It's a bit of a cat and mouse type. So, Jimmy Pearson on 47, Sam and Jay making the breakthrough, taking out Liam Smith. He bowls to Pearson, full toss, and he'll get an easy single. Well, the crowd here at uh, Redlands uh, treated to the two. Incumbent Bulls players, Jimmy Pearce and Marnus Labuschagne. These two will no doubt be selected first for the first Shield game at Ian Hilly Oval, Ian Hilly Oval on the 28th of September. Jay, Tasmania, Tasmania at Ian Against, Hilly Oval. They still call the Devils or it was just Tasmania? Tigers. Tassie Tasmania Tigers. Tigers. But didn't they change like the Warrior Western? It's just Western Australia. Not allowed to call the Western Warriors anymore. Um, not South Australian sure. Redbacks, I think, might still be called the Redbacks. Victorian still Bush Rangers, I don't think the Bush Rangers. Yes. <laughs> Jay tries to lure Marnus out, but Marnus, you've got to get up early in the morning to beat Marnus to the nets and to get him out with that delivery. West Australia have now gone back to the black caps rather than the yellow caps that they wore as a state side. Well, they'll be lovely in summer, WA. Why don't they call the Swans? Black Swan? No. Swan River? Swan Beer? As we see, Jay. High in the air. Here's a chance coming around. Is he going to take the catch? Yes, he does. And what a scoop it is for Jay. He gets his second wicket. He makes the breakthrough. Jimmy Pearson's on his way. That's Marnus. Marnus Labuschagne, I beg your pardon. And the second wicket falls. Michael Jay. Uh, Michael Jay is his dad. Xander Jay picks up his second wicket as well. Marnus Labuschagne. Big sweep, but just really just top edged it high in the air which gave plenty of time for Donald White to come round and take a very comfortable catch on his shoulders. Might be the difference today because the Redlands Tigers spilled a lot of balls in the air here. Hasn't got hold of that. Sort of half a sweep there from Marnus. And he found White, well... Got underneath it rather than over the top mm, of it. Mm. So a big breakthrough here for the diehards. The Tigers lose their second wicket. And Zandon Jay, the man of the moment, two wickets... Got rid of the dangerous Liam Smith, who was building nicely, and then he gets rid of Marnus Labuschagne. Eh? He's probably pretty happy with his diehards teammates, but the crowd won't be happy. No. <laughs> Taking out the, the star attraction. Is it Simon Malenko coming out to bat? Yeah, the, sk the skipper. So the captain brings himself up the order ahead of Drennan and McInerney. Hmm. Not sure whether the... the batting card originally was just a, a maybe batting lineup. Marnus is never going to bat at seven. No, but just interesting that uh, Malenko comes out ahead of the uh, that lovely cricket term recognised batters. <laughs> well, he's got a bat in his hand. Is that what we say? <laughs> That's what we say. He's got a bat in his hand, you recognise batsman. Walk down the street and I went, he's a batter. He's got a pads on. Yeah. As we see Jay Gets off the mark, does... Sorry, no, that was uh, Jimmy Pearson. Now, bring Simon Malenko on straight. They did cross. So this can be an interesting challenge now for Pearson. Who oh, Jimmy Pearson. 50. Well, he's brought up his 50. Congratulations. I haven't picked up on that one yet. Neither but his half-century's 
come up. Pearson well, I think now. it's because they changed. Okay. People didn't realise, yeah. as I did, and my mistake. Um, but Jimmy Pearson, 50 or 47. And he's on. Malenko on strike. Thinks about a single, doesn't do so. So Jimmy Pearson's... Well, Pearson may well have to be what Wildermuth was to the um, Valley's innings where he batted to get the 110. Um, thought that maybe um, Ladenstein would have been the batter to, to get the century up for Redlands if they're going to chase down this 322 that they need for victory. All right, well, we're going to jump out and, uh, and Evan Bancroft come just quickly. Jimmy Pearson, 50 off 47, two sixes and three fours. And the man of the moment, Zan and Jay. Can he keep going, Evan? Thanks, Johnny. Bowling very, very well, young Zandon, and uh, he's got the two wickets. Billy, bowling well. I've just sort of come back in here, mate. Yeah. What, what, what have you seen? Well, I've seen that the game is just sitting, sitting there. No one's taken it by the scruff of the neck. I thought, I thought Redlands would have come out early and asserted themselves and started to chase quite aggressively, but they've just been happy to just plot it around. They've got plenty of singles. They've still been turning the scoreboard over. <coughs> 90 runs off 13 overs is... Sorry, if 19 overs, there's nothing to be sneezed at. But it hasn't been the big hitting that I thought they may have done just to try and take the game early away from Valley. So Valley still feel very much in this game. But they do two for 90. Cameron Boyce back on. The big wicket of Lava Shane last over. Um, going for a big shot probably early. Probably a little bit loose for that early in the innings, but um, he plays sometimes a bit like that and very disappointed as he walked off the field. Boyce bowling to Jimmy Pearson, two for 90 the score. Pearson goes back and back cuts it to, to the covers, to Kawaja. They batted very well, though, but they just they've got to be careful losing those wickets now, Billy. Well, as I said, they've, they've just plotted along. I would have probably preferred to see them push it a little bit harder than what they have and, and to try and take Valleys out of the game. But all they... they certainly, yeah, they've still got eight wickets in the shed, so... Here's Boyce again moving in, bowling to Jimmy Pearson. And Jimmy plays an on-drive, a lovely-looking shot for one. And Simon Malenko on strike. Simon Malenko had a magnificent year last year in the one-day competition, back from down south from Tassie, and uh, back playing cricket for Redlands, who was part of their premiership winning side in 2016. Hits the ball as well as anybody. And it's great to see him batting at number four, facing Boyce. Oh, kept a little bit low, went for the cut. Through to the keeper. I like this. Boyce taking the ball away from the uh, right-hand batters. We saw that Valleys had a lot of left-handers early in their innings, which made it hard for the uh, bowlers, the spin bowlers, to really get on top. It was not what they were used to bowling to, whereas Valleys, their innings starting with a lot of right-handers. So both yeah. Jay and Boyce do take the ball away from the right hand. Boyce bowls again. Malenko lays back. No run. Very good over here from Cameron Boyce, bowling very, very well, and that was a great over. He's got none for nine off three overs. The score is Redlands two for 91 off 20. Jimmy Pearson's 51 off 50. And Valley's just got the big wicket of Manus Lubbershane in the last over. Going for a big one over mid-wicket. It was a fine catch taken on the boundary. Well, this is going to be a wicket um, very much where the batters will get themselves out that there's nothing in the wicket and we, we've seen that with both batsmen that have been dismissed for Redland Smith where played all around the ball from Jay and it took his middle stump and then Marnus with a, a skied sweep shot that pretty much the fielder didn't have to run too far to catch. He didn't at all Billy. And Xander Jay again to bowl to Pearson. He pushed it straight to mid wicket. Ooh. And those... Very well backed up then. There was no... That was a tight single. The fielding wasn't quite there to run him out, but it, you've got to do it in one-day cricket. You have to try and put that pressure, and at the moment, the Redlands batters haven't been putting the field under pressure. If anything, Valleys have been putting the pressure back, and while I said that it'll be Redlands getting themselves out, it's been the pressure particularly from Jay and now Boyce. Oh, Milenko down the wicket, then stopped. 
realised that he wasn't to the pitch of the ball. Jay saw him coming, darted it in. Malenko pushed it to the mid to cover for one. And that's what it's been. Both um, Jay and Boyce have just kept the batters in the crease. As he moves in bowls, full toss. Jimmy Pearson knocks it down the mid on. Only one. Malenko thought about two. Decided that wouldn't be a good idea. We saw once Labnashane try and go down the wicket to Boyce and merely s snicked it, if anything, back with a square leg and nearly got himself stumped. Sander Jay again. Malenko, very respectful. Plays it back to the bowler. As mentioned earlier, Xander Jay's dad, Xander Michael Jay, played a lot of cricket in Brisbane and overseas. Fine young cricketer. As he moves in. And there, <laughs> Malenko looking for two. Coming back on the arm. And a sweep shot that he loves. He loves the sweep, Malenko. He loves a lot of shots, but the sweep is one that he does use and goes to. Xander Jay still bowling very well. Two for 20 or 5.5. Last ball of the over to Malenko. Malenko's on the move. Billy? Tried to be on the move, but again, just pinned on that crease. Two for 96, comes off 20 overs. Pearson, 53 off 52, run a ball. Malenko, 3 off 8, just settling into the innings after losing that big wicket of Manus Lubbershane. So they're going to just take their time for a little bit at the moment. Target of 322 on this beautiful day at Peter Burge Oval. It's fantastic. The crowd is actually getting bigger. A bit disappointed they didn't see their hero, Marnus Lubbershane, get a big score, but they're enjoying watching Jimmy Pearson. And now if they see Malenko, these kids will be knowing all about it as the ball could go deep. But it is great, Billy, to see so many here today as Cameron Boyce gets ready to bowl the next over to Jimmy Pearson. Uppishly down the ground. Not mm. quite near a field, but it was uppish. Little leading edge there, Billy. Didn't quite get down to down to the pitch of it and again the bowlers just the pressure that both Boyce and Jay's been from the other end building against the batsmen they're not I'm feeling confident enough to get down to it that's right I know he just Milenko likes using his feet he's taken that just pushed onto his legs and he's just swept it behind square for four lovely way to, to get going in his innings he'll move to seven off nine Boyce just pushed that down. Very disappointed with himself with that one. Just as leg spinners can sometimes do, Billy. They can yeah. just sort of lose it down there. But a lovely shot by Malenko. Sometimes just a fine line between a good ball and a bad ball. Boyce looks around, talks to his skipper. Is there going to be a move? So he moves in again. Goes up. And Malenko has got a bit of that too, and that'll be six. That's a great shot by Malenko into the breeze. But he knew straight away when he hit it, it was going to go all the way. And that's a big six over towards the Wellington Point State School with the big trees that have grown there in the last few years. And no fielder out there. There's a fielder at mid-wicket and one mid-on on the rope, but no one at that cow corner position. Fantastic shot, though. Back plays it through, just knocks it out to deep cover for one. And Valleys are going to, uh, sorry, Redlands going to need that because while they are sort of pretty much uh, run for run with Valleys in a comparable moment, Valleys did have Goad and Wildermuth go crazy for a little while that got them up towards that 320 mark. They did in that middle, middle stage of the innings where they did get away when Redlands dropped those two catches, Billy, yeah. which didn't help their cause. Jimmy Pearson now, just in that stage of the innings where he's got to go through, he's 54 or 54, and needs to bat through the innings now and get a big 100. And that's a lovely sweep shot, just behind square, brilliantly fielded out there on the boundary, but he will come back for two, gets there comfortably. Nice bit of fielding by the youngster, Jay, who's obviously confidence in bowling, helps you with your fielding. He's in the game, he's in the game, and that's always good to see. His, um, his young sister, Sierra, is playing in the Catherine Raymond Shield and she's playing on Sunday for Valleys. So the family are 
some good cricketers in the family. It's great to see. Well, they certainly would have known Friday afternoon what their weekend was going to look like. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, Michael being daddy, loves his cricket. He's sitting out. He's over there just enjoying it. Very good cricket in his own right. Very funny man as well, too. Great to see a bit of a crowd shot there. Two for 110. Off 22 overs. Jimmy Pearson's 56. Simon Malenko, 14. Nice little start by him. Jay, two for 20. is going to continue from the bay end. The Waterloo Bay end. Wind coming from left to right on your screen. Uh, it's helping to push the ball back into the right-hand batsman as well, which will help Jay as the left-hand finger spinner. Malenko just played that one back with respect to a bowler that's bowling in form. Gave that one a bit of air, got it on the full down to mid-off, just takes one. Jimmy Pearson back on strike on 58 at the moment, or 56 from 55. Run a ball. And Malenko all of a sudden took his while to get going, took a little while to get going, and now he's 15 off 13. Beautiful off drive for one. Yeah, Billy, you wouldn't have seen this sort of a crowd at a club game for a while, mate. It's fantastic, uh, isn't it? I'm not sure if I've ever seen this much at a, at a club match. Just at a, at a run of the mill club match, maybe grand final day or something like that. But first game of the season. It's great. Obviously, the, the lineups in the in the team. Oh, that's a big, big, big six. That's cleared the net. Oh, that's a beauty. That nearly ended up in the sports club. The people playing bocce over there, they were watching for it as it came over. The, that's gone a long, long way by Malenko, and that's what we know he can do with the wind that time. Yeah, well, he's playing with the breeze and Beautiful. most of the netball court. What a great six that was. Mind you, it's a, uh, it's a hard netball court too, so it would have would have um, shaken the, um, the ball a little bit. Yeah, that was a great shot. To get him underway again. Malenko 21 now of 14. Nigelay's back on that one and hits it out to deep cover for one. Like seeing that, Billy? Yeah. The big Dorothy, huge big hit. And instead of just trying to do another one, he just lays back, takes a single, says to him, 22 off 15, two for 109. And I'll put Jimmy back on strike and uh, you take it from here, Jimmy, for the rest of the over. One ball to go. You see how Jay comes back from it. Not bad, not bad, but a good over for Redlands. Jimmy just took one there to finish it off. And that'll be the end of the over. The score now two for 120. A couple of big sixes from Malenko. One into the wind and one big one, really big one. That yeah, well, nearly landed in the bocce court. Well, they've now pushed themselves just ahead of where Valleys were in their innings at the moment. As I said earlier, though, that Valleys did accelerate um, at one point. No, they did. That was that Wildermouth um, andrew Go partnership. It was a fantastic partnership. And they that, dropped a couple of catches in there, but no, they batted very, very well. That took the game away from Redlands uh, in a bowling sense. So they'll certainly be looking for that to happen. Cameron Boyce again bowling now to Pearson, who uses his feet and hits it down to deep bit off for one. And that may well be the reason why Malenko's coming ahead of the likes of Drinan and McInerney to just accelerate the innings a little bit. He tended to bat there a little bit last year. Occasionally he did come in a, a bit early and just sort of came out and exploded. But, yeah, I would have thought they might have had the other guys ahead of him today, but no. Oh, there he goes with the sweep shot. Back of the bat. There's not two there, or is there two there? He didn't get away too quickly, not quickly enough. Jimmy Pearson saw that his, his mate wasn't on the move and said, no, we'll just take one. 59 to Pearson now, 22 to Malenko. Redlands two for 122 as Boyce bowls to Pearson. Use his feet again. He uses his feet so well, Pearson, and watches the ball onto the bat so well. Yeah. 
still very much a ring field. Just the three players out on the rope. They could have up to four. Sorry, they have got the fourth one. Out. Cameron Boyce just decided to push that one through a little bit quicker, but you're right. Is that, what have we got there? We've got the four out at the moment. Mid wicket, mid on, mid off, and cover. Oh, a bit of air. Very well bowl. Good and he's out. out. He's got him. And it's obviously come straight off the back of the bat as he's tried to sweep, popped up into the air and walks, basically. Pretty out. much gave himself out. Didn't wait for the umpire to, to make the signal, which threw us for a moment because oh. we just thought it was just the, uh, the wicket keeper having a bit of an appeal. But, yeah, I think it's just feathered the back of the bat, gone up in the air. Off Pfeffer had to juggle it a bit because I think it came off KFC, his shoulder. KFC replay now. He goes for the big sweep straight off the back of the bat. Into the keeper's hands, bounce out of the keeper's hands and caught. And Malenko, a little cameo, but he won't be happy with that. He would have no. liked to have gone on. He was on He was on his way, and unfortunately he's out. Redland three for one, two, three. And it's going to be a wicket that at this stage of the game now, this is where Valleys were three down. Yeah. Really, and they put that good partnership on. Yep. So they're going to have to, um, to regroup. James Baisley come into the crease, who also likes to give the ball an almighty whack. But he needs to probably settle into his innings at this well, stage. They're, they're a long way off, in some ways, Redlands. <sighs> yeah. They're still 200 runs behind. Long way to go. I know they're back. Long, a long way to go for, for as, as, as good as Baisley is. He's the pinch hitter rather than the long hit, the long innings hitter. He, he just, he's just coming off a, a 100 in a, in a trial game and um, off not many balls. And that's the way he plays. And I think that's the way he'll play today. Yeah. But again, it's just one of those situations with lots of batting to come. But in it, we're just in a bit of a the um, a bit of a the game's in that sort of a, a, a state at the moment, Billy, isn't it? Where if they lose another one, they're in trouble. Yeah, no, I would have gone back to a bit more of an established batter to to, to take along at seven and over rather than send someone out who may who may come good and get to twenty to thirty and over, or he may be gone in and over. Yeah, his batting has improved, though, Billy, a hell of a lot in the last couple of years, and he's, um, I think he's asked for that responsibility to bat a bit higher. So let's um, hope he... I hope, he, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, as Boyce bowls to him. He goes back and hits it straight back to cover for no run. And that's the end of the over. A good over. I don't think yeah. Boyce would probably class that as um, the best ball he's ever bowled to get a wicket, but... It doesn't matter how you get them. No, it still goes in the book the same way, the same way that the fours go in the book the same way, it whether sure, it's the centre of the bat or the edge of the bat. It sure does. And that now, we're looking at the scores there now. We've got Pearson not out on 60. Liam Smith was bowled by Zandon Jay for 32. Good little knock from Smith. Malenko just recently out. Caught Pfeffer bowled Cameron Boyce for 22. Manus Lubbershan. Lubbershan caught Donald White bowled Zandon Jay for 6. Zen J7 overs, 2 for 30. Cameron Boyce, 1 for 25. And Mark Steckerty has none for 33. And the big guns coming five. back. Wildermuth coming back on for Jack. Valleys. This is the, the challenge, because as much as the spinners have done it, you've still got Wildermuth and Steckerty in this. It's a very strong Valleys attack. It is. And I'd say now, too, Jack Sorry, Wildermuth, when he bowled his first spell, he just come off his 100. It was a bit stiff. He would have loosened up a bit. He's run around the field a bit. I'd say this spell with the wind will be a little bit sharper. The breeze coming in over his left shoulder. Jimmy Pearson just takes it. He just gets onto his legs. And Jimmy Pearson, that's just bread and butter for Jimmy. And I reckon he's coming downhill in the run-up. The first, first, his first spell, he was sort of up the hill. Yep, it is. You're better, you're better off bowling at this end because you've got a bit of a breeze. And um, Steckity being the more senior bowler. Now he gets the new ball and he gets to choose, but now it's always great for the fast bowler who is bowling into the wind to say, when they say, hey, come and have a bowl with the wind. And Baisley will be on strike. See what Wildermuth does to him. And he's hit that straight to mid-off and hit it like a tracer bullet. That's how he bats. As yep. you said, Billy, it is, it's, it's a bit of a... He, he's an all-rounder who bowls very well and bats very well, but he, he probably... You won't, um, you won't be knocking him around too much, but if he gets a good ball, hopefully that's what he'll do. But a good start by Willemouth too. Nice yep. and full. 
But it's going to be a good contest between these two, uh, well, I was going to say young guns, but Wildermuth now into his late 20s. And 28. And there's a cover drive straight out. Beautiful shot by James Baisley. Out to deep cover for one. But Wildermuth is starting to come into the... I think he's coming into the prime of his career. Bowled so well for the Bulls last season. And the heat at different times, and his batting has just improved a lot. It sure has, Billy, and I think that he's, I think he's, you know, he's now a dad, and, um, you know, cricket's, he loves cricket, but it's not everything. Sometimes you find these these young blokes that they become a parent, they realise that cricket, they love their game, but it just becomes a bit easier when it's not as, as much pressure. Yes. And he's looking, looking to pierce and thinking, what will I do? I don't want to get on his legs. He does a little bit shorter, probably pretty straight. Pearson just pushes it around the corner again for one. And now Jimmy now, this is where he needs to take this deep. At 62 off 61, we're three down. The, the Redland side are three down. And um, they're looking now to take it, take it deep. Valleys in a very good position at the moment too. Mm. Jack Wildermuth moving in again to Baisley. That came on him a little bit quicker than he thought. He got it on the, the bottom of the bat. He gets a single. No damage. Uh, I'm sure uh, Wildermuth's going to be too upset in seeing what he just saw then. No. Because, as you said, he, he will go for it. He, uh, he and he knows, be, he also... Wildermuth will be happy to know that he's going to go for it. He knows Baisley's game too. They play a lot of cricket together. Yep. And um, he knows that Bays will, Baisley will have a crack. So now he's uh, moving into bowl. And Jimmy Pearson again just plays it back to Willemuth. Good over. Score now three for 127 of 25 overs. Need 195 from 25 to win. Billy's having a break. Thanks, Billy. And the great man, Johnny Devine, joins me. Oh, I don't know about that, mate. I'm feeling a lot great now. I just had a lamb pie. A lamb pie? From the Redlands, uh, Redlands Canteen. They have made a mozza. So there's a, <laughs> thousands of people here. How, how, good's the, how good's the food? It's been fantastic today. They're toasties. Yep. Um, we had the... This morning, they, they honoured Matty Conwell, who mm. we lost um, last year. An absolute ripper. Of a, of a human and this is all his family were here and they've got a jersey going around that's been donated by Manus Lubbershane and that's being auctioned or raffled off at the end of the day he's signed it uh, in Australian Australian shirt and the club do great things for for people like, as he bowls that's Bowls gone now. big Bowls. that's in that's in the headmaster's <laughs> office at Ormiston College. It's a great shot by Baisley. He's just waited for it and waited for it and hit the big six. And going back, it is great what they were doing. And it's um, this morning in Australia, they're raising some money for the, the family of Matty Cornwall. It's like a meat tray going around too at the moment. Yep. So I'll get, uh, I'm going to get some tickets in the meat tray because I've been, I have been buying tickets in the meat tray for about 25 years. And I reckon I could have bought three... Uh, Half the cattle from Texas. I'll <laughs> oh, come up short. Voice to the Baisley. This one goes through. <laughs> so you never won a meat tray? I've never won a meat tray. I've won bugger off what doubles in footy, nothing. Come up short. But I'm not gonna give up, man. So no, you keep going, but it's always for a good cause. Maybe today's the day. I guarantee Voice, whoa. Ooh. I guarantee you've had a plover, meat, plover tray, I'll probably win it. <laughs> tell you what, if they keep coming here, there'll be a plover tray later on. Plover, I promise too. you. Baisley takes guard, waiting for Boyce. Pushes back and missed time zone straight back to Boyce. You can have a look way out at mid wicket. Sun's starting to come into the eyes of players. Let's wait for Boyce to set sail. Baisley taking his time to take guard, does so now. Back foot. He's just, he's just, he's in that position, isn't he, Basie? You've seen a lot of him bat too, John. He's just, he sometimes, he's just waiting, but he, that was good to see that. Well, he's, he, he's probably a little bit more circumspect than probably Mark Segerty. Mark will come out and just say, look, I'll swing it. If I hit one, then I'm off. 
whereas uh, James is a little bit more more uh, precise in the in, in the shots he's going to play. But since I've been uh, I've come off from commentary, I've come back and I've noticed there's been a field change slightly with Mark Sigley coming into uh, to uh, point and Andrew Goody. Now they're going to bring another play out here. Cameron Boyce is bowling a lot of stuff outside off thump and they're going to try and dry up these runs. I think this is a good move here by uh, by Neil. Just because Boyce is just everything's outside off stump. Comes in again. Rocks back and that's going to go to that fieldsman. Well done Mr Neil. Very well done and um, they've seen that Jimmy scored so many runs through that area today. So Jimmy's still looking good though on 62 off 63. Redlands 3 for 134. Baisley is 9 off 9. Wildermuth will be bowling again. He has bowled 5 overs, has none for 19. So around the grounds there's uh, Toomble close in on Sandgate Redcliffe. 5 for 127. They only require another 17 runs there for victory there. UQ struggling. 6 for 81. Trying to chase down North 190. Winner Manly. 6 for 142. That one's a nail biter over Bill Alderley chasing 199. And Western Suburbs. 4 for 83 against Gold Coast. So I don't know how many overs there are down there at uh, Gold Coast. Uh, I don't know how many overs per game that one is. Sunshine Coast, well, all out for 83. Ipswich Horns have absolutely stunned the Scorchers. Pardon the pun. Oh, there's a ball and a half there from Jack Wildermuth. He's got his line now. He's got his line and he's bowling with the wind. They love it, don't they? They love it. Earlier on, he had about coming bowling into the wind after just scoring 100. Bowled, bowled well in the first spell, but now he's loosened up. He's ready to go. Baisley just played down that one, as you can see, just played the wrong line. Watching the ball. It's, uh, he's certainly an athlete, Jack Wildermuth. He's, he's built up nice. He was a scrawny kid a few years ago, but now he's just full of muscle. He's, reminds me of yours truly. <laughs> Basically, he hurried onto that one. Yeah, they, they spend a bit of time in the gym, the, the young blokes today. Did you ever do any gym work when you were there? No. No, no, I didn't, as you can see. I, I need to do a few push-ups. But, um, no, it wasn't a big... We just bowled, I suppose, with how it worked yeah. in those days. But, totally. And, uh, but they're strong, though. These guys are strong. It gives them an extra yard or two. Yeah. But I think they've settled down on a lot of that stuff now. They've changed. They've gone back to, you know, do a bit of gym work, but settle down. I mean, bowling's pretty important Bowl. as well. All those muscles work. Is Jack Willemuth from the northern end. Shortish ball on the back foot goes Baisley. No run. Just at this stage in the innings with Bays, I just hope, and I think he's matured enough in the last couple of years that he realises when he does miss time a couple that he just waits and he needs to wait. Not try and play that big shot if it's not there. If the big shot, if it's there, play it. Yeah. But just wait a bit at the moment. That, you know, your run rate's OK. Jimmy Pearson's on 62. Just take your time, James. Mm. James Baisley, obviously Queensland Bulls contract. Would love to get his batting a little a little bit better. Here's an opportunity against quality in Jack Wildermuth. Right arm over the wicket. Finds that play. Now, yeah, since I've came back, Neil's brought two players in close inside that circle just to shut down those runs. Build pressure. Uh, Bangs, you talked about pressure. If they can build it up there, slow it down, play to there, take the game to Redlands. Um, it might work in the back end. 3 for 134, they were Spe whistling long, weren't they? You're so right, John, especially at this stage of the game. The 26.4, the 27 over game, they're, they're, they're doing it well. Because this is when you're trying to strangle us a little bit. Yeah. When you can get away and they didn't knock them around. And it's very good captaincy. Well, he's got a gun bowler in Jack Wildermuth. That one's come off the hip. Pushes it down to backward square. White comes in. Good arm. To tall unit. But, yeah, that's right. I mean, you can sometimes sneak a few overs in mm. at this stage where he just, the batsmen are sort of in their game a bit, and all of a sudden they've gone and not scored the overs and they've put a bit of pressure on them for later on. So at the moment they need 188 from 23.2 overs. So it's not, the well, wicket's if, down. Well, if you remember the 30 over mark, I think you made a point that they were 150. So they're around about that, even contest. But I think they might have only lost one wicket, but... Really no more about that. This is Jack Woodland. Bree starting to pick up here. Peter Burge over. Quick run. Taking on the arm. Safe. And Pearson hits it down. But I think that was right. They were 150 at the 30 over mark, John. And um, that is very close. And they might have lost a couple of quick ones where they did. That's when, remember, Wildermouth and, um, and, and Goaty oh, took them on for a bit there. Well, Jimmy Pearson had to get the little legs pumping, whereas... Baisley lobbed down the other end. But, uh, <laughs> Jimmy Pierce has got to do a little bit of running. 
He sure does. I saw Brad Murphy over there before the coach of Valleys. He just got back from Darwin. He was another one in Darwin. I mean, it's, it's huge, the cricket up in Darwin now. Brad's, yeah, he's wearing um, crocodile shoes. You notice that? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Brad <laughs> looks like he's, he's an he a ripper. He's, he's a ripper. been around. He's coached here. He's co he just keeps playing and I mean, coaching. He, but he didn't buy him from a shop, you know. He, no, he, he, stole, he, he wrestled it. Yeah, and got him in the death row. Yeah, he would have. He um, no, but he's fantastic, Brad Murphy. He, um, you buy you buy uh, the, the clubhouse of Valleys. He comes with it, I think. I think so. As Boyce is coming in again. Boyce to Jimmy Pearson comes out of the crease, goes high, yeah. goes long. Is it deep is enough? It enough of it. I don't think he has. Jumping, yes, no. He has. It's gone over for six. Jimmy hard in his mouth there, I would say. And at one stage, then, Johnny, I thought that wasn't going to get there, but it just popped over. I think it was. Uh, it was almost looking like a baseball. Uh, man in the deep there, he could, had the back fence to jump high and take it. I think it might have been Usman Kawaja down there. <laughs> he did not get all of that no. at all. So he used his feet, but great six, great shot. Well, and that's probably as Boyce comes in again. I'll come back to that in a second. Boyce, Pearson plays it. <laughs> They've slowed him down a little bit. Jimmy Pearson's decided to take him. He, he was premeditated. I've been tied down a little bit too long. He went for the big one. Could have come undone. Comes up with six. What do you do? You go black, red, and little casino? Bit of, same little thing. bit of risk-reward, but yeah. yep. Boyce again. Comes out of the crease. And that's going to go down to mid-on for a single. Using his feet nicely. Jimmy look, wouldn't look out of place on the dance floor at Fridays under the mirror ball, Jimmy. <laughs> he, does. he actually does use his feet well, doesn't he? It is one of his strengths, and uh, it's great to see cricketers using their feet to a spinner. Well, they say the same thing about boxers. If you can dance, you can box. Use those feet. Yeah, it's probably... Same applies to the spin bomb. That's gone huge! That's going to land in Morton <laughs> Bay. It's on the Stradbroke Ferry. That is a magnificent six by James Basley. <laughs> Just popped on his legs and, and the ferry. Yeah, it is. It's on the ferry. That's, that's it. It's Everyone's a, uh, scattering on the deck. <laughs> on the deck over to Stradbroke. And we're not that far from no. the, uh, the bay here, are we? No. Okay, so you... Uh, Replay. Have a look at this one. Not much effort, just all timing. Bushka, see you later, Pill. And <laughs> man in the deep's going well. <laughs> the amazing thing is, too, Johnny, he didn't get all of that. The if first get... thing you do as a fieldsman down there, you look to see where it lands so you can find it. Yeah, yeah straight to the sun, too. You can see him out there. Yeah, boys, again. Can he come back? There's two mm. sixes in this over. Good quicker ball. Very good quicker ball. That's the class of boys. He decided I'll throw one in there, but. Baisley was equal to the occasion and just knocked it down for a single. Now, is it getting to the point where they start throwing all their uh, eggs in one basket, uh, Bally's? I'm just wondering whether... I'm just to see how many overs is... Pearson lays back and hits it out to deep cover for one. Yeah, Jay's got three overs to go. Mm, do you waste them now? Or not waste them, do you try and get the breakthrough now? He's got two far. Yeah, oh, you've got to think about it. He has been there their best bowler today. He's bowled very, very well. Do you bring him back? I'm not sure. This can just keep going and going and going for a while. Now, there's your 151. 28 overs. So, their two valleys were 151 after 30 overs. So, it sort of gives and Jimmy, Jimmy's a great player when it comes to the game. He knows what's going on. He'll, he'll know in his mind exactly how many runs he needs an over. I wonder if that injury to Andrew Gody is worse than I thought because he hasn't come on. Um, he's there at... Uh... He's there at uh, cover, number two on his back. Strange, That's... though, isn't it, if you've you got an injury and you're feeling in the covers? Yeah, well, you think you're going to use that, uh, that leg muscle to get to the ball quickly, but uh, maybe, it's, maybe he's just stuck to batting for the rest of his career as Jack Wilmoth continues the attack to Jimmy Pearson. That's gone off the hip to backward square leg for one. Even saying that, though, John, I suppose when you're in the covers, I mean, all these guys are running. You know, they're out here on the boundary. They've got to run, run, run around in the short cover area where he is. Yeah, well, you, don't, you haven't got to slip. No. Uh, you don't have those sort of things. But, yeah, I, yeah, I concur with that. If you're... Uh, well, there he, he's sort of bowling one back to... Maybe he might come on for a couple. They really miss him. They'll miss him if he can't bowl. As you said earlier on, he gets he swings it. Swings it, and he's and he's always on the on the money. He just he, he tightens up. He's as a Scrooge with the runs as Jack Wildermuth comes into basing the big unit. Swing at that one. Whether there was anything off the deck. A little bit loose that one. Yeah, he put his foot down, but it wasn't in the, in the right spot here. He wasn't quite to the pitch of the ball with his left leg, but anyway, he's still there. 
beautiful day, mate. You get that breeze about. It does come in. It's a bit like the Fremantle. What do you call it? The Dayboy Doctor. Doctor. It's um, it does come in off the uh, off Waterloo Bay of an afternoon, yep. and the last sort of hour or so, you'll get a bit more breeze. So where Jack's bowling from, and you've got to be a bit careful batting where Baisley is going straight because it can hold up. Baisley waits for Jack Wildermuth. That's down the leg side and appeal. Caught behind. Baisley can't believe it. Pfeffer can, and so can Jack Wildermuth. They make the breakthrough, and uh, he's a little bit reluctant to go, James Basie. He goes and grabs his hip to say, oh, look at the mark. But anyway, you're on your way, Sunshine. Yeah, he's out, basically, for 17, a good 17. He didn't look happy with that decision, but that's cricket, and um, they were very confident. They shouted big, didn't they? <laughs> well, they did shout big. There was a noise, obviously, but it wasn't the one that came off the bat. It's... As you can see there on the KFC replay, he was put his bat high into the air. <laughs> and he's, uh, he's, he's, on his, he's on his way as Lee Drennan comes to the crease. And there's a guy that can knock him around. And in the final last year, he got a magnificent 90, Lee Drennan, which got him back on track. Malenko had come out and smashed him. You remember that, Johnny? He got a yeah. really big yeah, yeah. fire. And he had Sammy Hazlitt at the other end who just played one of the great innings of all time. But Lee Drennan doesn't get a lot of credit for that knock that got him home in that innings. Right, well, James Basie goes to the sideline and that brings uh, Lee Drennan to the crease. And uh, that's a nice little segue. Uh, Lee Drennan does a podcast. So do you, Bangers. <laughs> I do, I you do do, do a, a Pangers, mate? Yeah, yeah, no, we do do a little one here called Just Having a Crack. We have a lot of fun with it. It's cool. We... we uh, Got us, kept us busy during COVID, mate. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. You've interviewed a few uh, creeping greats? You had a couple on, yeah. They have it with Greg Chappell and a few of those guys. And, uh, no, it's good. Yeah. Peter Anderson on recently was a bit of fun as well. Yeah, just having a crack. Have a listen to that. And we got the chocolates. Those of you who are looking for some uh, extra cricket other than what's here live and KO, KO freebie. Well, mate, Greg Blake, he's actually doing a bit of work at Turnbull at the moment, so he'll be very happy with the result down there at Turnbull. They're going, well, they look like they're going to get home. Yeah, they were, they were copped a bit of a hiding over the years with Turnbull. They just couldn't win a win a raffle, oh, speaking of which. Um, but now they're starting to float well. They got into the T20 final. Can't need to get beaten, as we see Malenko. Can he make another breakthrough, put the jitters? Whoa, there's a ball right in the face of Lee Drennan. Well, that's got to bounce too high to run it into Mario. Oh, look at that. He's a ripper, ripper lead runner, and he? he just, he's been around, he was at Valleys, and he went down, back down to Adelaide. Plays a bit of Aussie rules too, doesn't he? He does. But for the Bombers, uh, not Bombers, uh, for, um, for Alexandra Hills, look at that one. Oh, that's... Uh, well played, actually. That's very well played. So we've got some batting to that come, the Redlands guys have got a little bit of batting to come, but they've got to be a bit careful at the moment. They've lost the fourth wicket. Yeah, Jack Wildermuth, well, he's got his first wicket. Still two pills to go on this over. Drennan waits for him. There's high in the air. Pfeffer's underneath it. He's going back. Lachlan Pfeffer takes the catch there. Jack Wildermuth gets rid of Lee Drennan. And, oh, the Tigers are a little bit worried in the den. That's a, uh, a huge wicket for Valleys. Losing Drennan, who normally is one of the ones that comes in and just ties things up for his team. And today, losing him early is a big big wicket. Well, Lachlan Pfeffer, he got the little legs pumping down there behind. It's a good catch. Behind, uh, yeah, behind Gully, leg Gully. Let me look at this. It's high in the air. <laughs> Lee Drennan has made about a shot of survival, perhaps. But he's going to really rather play that shot again. And it's actually interesting there. He, it looked like he was thinking about playing the hook shot. And then when oh, I've just come in, no, I won't play it. And then he gets... How's your memory? Was there a man down here for him? Uh, there was a man well, down yeah, here as so well. There. There was a, that shot. Yeah. yeah, there was a man down there and he pulled out of it and, and you know, he gets into the dressing room now. Go, oh, why didn't I play that hook shot? Exactly. Why didn't I go all the way with it? And who have we got coming Nathan out here? Rabnott. This is Nathan Rabnot, Bay to Bay. Yeah. Former Seagull comes out to, uh, to bat with Lee Drennan, out second ball after two short balls from Jack Wilderman. The first one he... He negotiated, and the second one, well, he's found Lachlan Pfeffer. But a lot of work there for Lachlan Pfeffer to get to that uh, catch too, uh, Bangers. He's a, um, he's a very accomplished wicketkeeper, isn't he? He's, he's highly rated, and uh, there'd be a lot of states that he'd be playing in the... Well, Lachlan Pfeffer, obviously, in the Bulls uh, lineup. Um, as a bat. Great backer. Ba yeah. Great back yeah, as a batter, yeah, but a great backup as a keeper. So. Oh, fantastic to have him there. So this but brings, now, yes. So Jack Wilman will know not to bowl short, especially nobody in the DP for Nathan Rabnott, who loves to pull the ball through mid-wicket. Plays that one to mid-off. No ball from Jack Wildermuth. Is that the first no ball of the day? How's everybody's memory? I'm not sure. You know, it's interesting yeah. to see um, 
Nathan Rabnot. You're changing clubs at this late in your career to come down and play at another club. And he was going to give it away, and he decided, well... Well, he know, gave away, and then he's going to go to the Gold Coast. Yeah. And then he changed his mind, himself and Christopher Lloyd, and then, they, then he retired, along with a, a few other... Well, he's not, not a redhead, which is probably the reason why he didn't retire. <laughs> he's got like a lot Dermot of... Good... Lloyd and, uh, <laughs> and Floris. He's got a few good mates down here at Redlands. I thought he might just want to have a game with them. Maybe that's how it works sometimes. Play white ball, as we see Jack Wildermuth come in again. That one's been pulled behind square leg. Like I said, anything short, Radnott will be all over it. Gets a single down the fine leg. End of the over there for Jack Wildermuth. He makes the breakthrough, sends Lee Drennan on his way, along with Baisley. Five for 154. Pearson 73 off 71, and now has to bat even deeper than we thought. 100, we were saying earlier, and he needs to get 100. Now he needs to get 150. <laughs> there you go. How hard could it be? <laughs> and Wilmoth, what a great over that was. Two wickets, two for 24, and he's enjoying bowling with the wind. John, as we said before, enjoyed bowling with the wind. That's it. But that was just good, fast bowling. Good, fast bowling. So, Redlands, sorry, two more, 17 more required. Who's coming on to bowl now? It's uh, we're looking at uh, Steckity's back on. Yeah, well, they're going for the throat, aren't they? I was wondering when they'd actually bring their... Well, I thought they'd bring the... Well, that's Goat. Yeah. No, it's Goaty back on. Goaty is bowling. There you go. Now, I can remember... The final, like I said he bowled about 4,000 overs that day. I, I know this run up off by heart. Here he comes. Nicely straight on middle stump and gives a single away to start with. As we go around the grounds here, Toon will require another 17 to defeat Sandgate regularly. They're 5 for 127, chasing 144. UQ are 6 for 81, chasing 190. So I think we might be able to update it a little bit more. Let's double check. Those results, Andrew Goaty turns from the southern end, running away from the railway tracks as uh, Nathan Rabnott's not quite ready yet to get off the mark. He waits for Andrew Goaty. Foolish ball finds that down. Looking for square. two. Yeah, Jimmy's been out there for a while, probably thinks <laughs> <laughs> a bit gassed. He probably thinks Rabs is over 30 now, and maybe not. Yeah, no, there has been another. Toomble have won that game against Sandgate Reckler, five for 145, chasing 144. University of Queensland, 6 for 98, chasing 190. That's in the balance, as is the game between Winter Manly and South Brisbane. Winter Manly, 6 for 159, require another 40 runs. Great updates all day you've been given there, John, as Goad runs in. It's knocked around out to mid-wicket by Pearson. So it is Goadie or Go? Goadie. Goadie. He prefers Goadie. Go yep. yep. I went to school with his dad, Steve. Oh, really? Yeah, good bloke. Ripping Blake. There's a lot of valleys as, as well, as you know, John. Yeah, yeah. But I always called him, I always called him Steve Go. Go. Yeah. So I was wrong. That's right. He's... I'll bring him up tonight. He'll say, who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a, a little half volley there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I got into trouble. I, I called a uh, brunt ball shot in the Shield game. And didn't I cop it from every, every spectator around the world? Indians, everybody should have gone to Specs Overs, everything like that. It was about 300,000 300, viewers. Is that Absolutely right? bagging me because it was a brunt ball and I thought it was out. It's, Jeez, funny, how, it. it's funny how it can work sometimes, mm, isn't it? Andrew Goaty now. <laughs> nervous is Nathan Rabnott. He's on one. Late cut. Goes past the umpire. Damien Mealy's made a comeback with umpiring um, John. Oh, great guy. Yeah, I played, yeah. played with. He's a very, very good umpire. But many a few years ago, he gave one out and they didn't appeal in, a, in one of the T20 <laughs> games. Oops. And he's still copping it now. <laughs> but he's back umpiring first grade at the moment. And it's great to have a guy like him back with us umpiring because he's a class act. The Gold Coast game has been reduced to 25 overs. And Western Suburbs are 8 for 105 after 23 as Andrew Goady comes in again. And that's glided to a point. Well, they're going, going back, back for one. Yeah, quick single lead by Rabnock. True. Thanks, John. We've got a special guest just popped into the uh, commentary box. Sean Lloyd, the president of Redlands Cricket Club. G'day, Sean. How are you, mate? Good bangers. How are you, mate? I'm really well. What about this crowd here today? How good is this? I didn't expect uh, this many, but I'm uh, surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised the amount of people. Uh, we advertised hard uh, during the week. Uh, our advertising committee in the background were uh, fantastic. And, mate, we're really, really lucky to get it secure. Such a good crowd. And, mate, the social media... 
guys that work with the club. They do a magnificent job. They do a fantastic job day in, day out uh, during our regular season. Uh, they're to be commended. No, it's fantastic, mate. It's a great game. We're 5 for 159. And probably at the moment, I'd say that uh, the, the, the visitors probably might be just a little bit on top. I'd say so. Unfortunately, I don't want to say that. But, uh, look, Jimmy's known to um, definitely anchor in, in innings and it's um, not the first time he's been in this situation. And your new Bay to Bay um, player from Wynnum, Nathan Rabnott's joined him. Jimmy Pearson is on strike. And he's got hold of that. And that will be in the middle of the between the two deep square and fine leg for four very close to six but a fantastic shot and i thought then then jacks has taken the the opportunity to put a bit of pressure on him and give take a bit of a risk risk reward but a great shot by jimmy pearson moves to 80 off 75. yeah lordy you'd be happy with everything mate You're not running out of food are you and all that's it or you guys are all over it uh currently we're just sending a couple of bikes down the road to uh get some cheeseburgers oh how good that it's been a great day mate and, and it all started off um on a sad note um maddie conwell who we lost a year ago much loved yes yeah, definitely uh there was um tragic circumstances when we let we um, lost last year Mac, uh, conwell um, we we're very sad at the club. Um, I was talking to um, his wife this morning, actually, um, and um, yeah, very emotional. Still, it's very, still very raw. It's um, the club have been magnificent through the the whole process of the um, of how tough that's been. And today we've got a, a jersey or a Marnus has donated. What's he donated? Yeah, Marnus has, has donated a uh, an Australian uh, uh, playing shirt for us. He signed it. Um, we've, um, part of the proceeds of that is, uh, so we're going to raffle that off. Um, proceeds of that will go towards uh, Ashley and uh, to help her out. She's uh, got her hands full. She's got uh, triplets. She has. They were down here today. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful kids beautiful that are. Kids. It was so lovely. I had a chat to Ashley earlier on today. And um, they're well done with that, mate. And I know there's been a lot, lot, um, lot said and done. And he was a ripping guy, mate. Come on, I know you guys were very close. Mate, the club is in a great spot. You're looking great. It's fantastic. We the ground's are looking, looking beautiful. This time of year, it's looking fantastic. We had a bit of um, reno renovation during the off-season on Burge over here, and um, our groundsman Chris has brought it up. An absolute delight today. Um, we're seeing a lot of carry and a lot of uh, the bold, fast bowlers are enjoying a bumper or two. Or oh, another bumper there from talking about bumper. Um, Jack Wildermuth, who's bowled very well, batted extremely well this morning for 100. Nathan Rabnott just tried to follow that one be a bit careful because we lost the wicket the uh, redland side did lost the wicket a little while ago and uh and i've got to be very careful that mate today sean in in my i've done, done a couple of wees being with my um association with the club <laughs> but what i, I, I love valleys yeah. and I, they're a great club and whoever wins today it's good I know you're on our side, bangers. <laughs> no. Uh, you, you, there's no we. It's uh, it's 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 only Tigers here. It's uh, it's quite funny. Alex from Queensland Cricket, he's been. Whenever I say, looks at me, say you can't say that, and I, and I'm, I'll get better at it. But it's great to see. It was a lovely shot there. It was played down to third man to score five for 165. But mate, just to finish off, uh, Lordy, the club, as I said, is in a good place. You, you've got some great people here and some great sponsors. Yeah, with any any club here at um, look. The backbone, our um, any um, community sport is our volunteers. Uh, we're no different, and um, you know we we, we 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 love our volunteers. And um, look, you know we're supporting our grassroots cricket through our, our affiliated uh, clubs within the Redlands as well here today. Um, they've got uh, tents here to support. Run that. out on here! Whoa! This takes Rabdon on the leg. Yep, keep going, mate. They've got uh, tents here to sign up for the juniors, so yeah, we're just trying to increase our numbers and cross, you know, the Redland Shire here to make sure that um, the cricket uh, future for tomorrow is looking, you know, nice and healthy. You're doing a great job, Lloydie. Good on you, mate. Keep the committee going. We'll pass over to, to Billy and John for the next few overs, and yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, the Redlands Tigers, 25 years down here at uh, Peter Burge Oval. Bangers doing some great interviews. Spoke to Ryan Harris earlier. And it's been been a uh, cavalcade of stars as we. It has been a bit of a who's who. Who's who? Yeah, we had uh, Terry Spencer on, the CEO of Queensland Cricket. He was here. And if we wait for Andrew Goody to continue from the southern end, five for one sixty-six, nineteen overs to go, and Jimmy Pearson getting closer. He slowed down a little bit, Billy. He's on eighty-two off. 78. 
And Andrew Gady, he won't give any too many runs away. He's got it. Yeah, look, they've, they've turned the halfway mark. Well, it is the halfway mark in one day cricket that over 30 you double the score and that's where you get at 50 overs. And it has them on track to get the 320. However, it's the five wickets that I'm a bit concerned about. Yeah. For, for, concerned for a red, red so oh, I'm unbiased. Um, none of these were my, my clubs as growing up, but that yeah. five wickets down makes the doubling the hard problem for them. Well, in, in, in all honesty, the uh, diehards do bat a little bit deeper uh, than Redlands. I no disrespect to Sinfield and Co. That's going to be found in deep extra cover for one, uh, well, well, and also for uh, Honan. These are new, new young young players. Yeah. So the challenge, the challenge. What, well, what Valleys did well was that Wildermuth built the century, but there were two half centuries, Kawaja mm. and Godie's uh, half century that was in less than run a ball really kick-started them to get along. So in the end, they only went seven wickets down for 320, um, and two of those were wickets that were pretty yeah. cheaply got. Yeah, yeah. They went for the swingers. Godie comes in again. That's Redlands just haven't been able to do that. Pearson's there. Um, on 83, which is run a ball 83, but no one else has got the half century or gone on. A couple of little cameos of 20 ish, but that's not really enough to do much. Yeah, it's just the 32 from. See, so Milenko yeah. basically came in early to try and be that pinch hitter, but in the end, they're not the ones that could battle on. They needed someone to double those scores to get 50 odd in that pinch hitting role, yeah, not 20 odd. One knee there. Single. That said, the game's not over, but no. that's just uphill now for Redlands. Valleys will be feeling just a little bit more comfortable. But I still don't think Valleys have done much <laughs> to get the score at this point. But so, Gody again. Let's getting into his work. No sign of that injury this morning. They'll think of two. They had a little bit of a look at each other. Comes through Radnott. Radnott looking at Jimmy Pearson. Radnott thinks to be aware that Jimmy Pearson's, Pearson's been out there since the start of the game. But Pearson's a real ferret between the wickets. I, I, would, I, I would like to be... I had the ability to turn twos into ones, whereas Pearson's got the ability to turn <laughs> twos into threes. <laughs> I, turn, I, turn, I turn threes into ones. Um, a real nail by having over Bill, uh, Bill Aubrey, 6 for 168 of the Sea Eagles chasing South Brisbane's at 9 for 199. They 31 runs required, 6 overs remaining, so 5 runs and over required over there. Western Suburbs, 112, 25 over match due to rain down there. Beautiful sunshine down there. Pull out the mankini, go and have a look. No. No. University of Queensland uh, need 70 more. They're 6 for 120, trying to chase down North's 190, and that's in the 31st over. So they require 66 off 19 overs. As we see, Steggity come back in attack, and that's been whipped to mid-wicket, or square leg, I should say. Jimmy Pearson, I dare say, if Nathan Radnock gets one like that, we're in trouble, Bill. Well, that's what they're going to need, 150 from 17 overs. That's a, a, a fair bit of work. It's yeah. more than a run a ball. I just wonder whether he's done the right thing, hasn't he? Uh, as we wait for Mark Steggerty to come in. Lovely shot, finds Gully. No run. Like it's pretty easy for Josh Neal. He's got the bowling attack to do it, uh, anchored by Steckerty and Wildermuth, but but both Cameron Boyce and uh, young Xander Jay did an outstanding effort. Did. Well, Wildermuth, he came on, made the du double bait breakthrough, takes himself off, he's still got two overs to go, he has two for 31 off eight, and Boyce has still got three, Andrew Godey's still got another, well he can bolt the innings out if he wants to, as we see Steckerty comes in from the clubhouse end, Rab not tries to quarter, is half in the peel, has it carried? No, it's come off the pad, I think. They're asking, I think. Well, it carries out. Yes, it's yes it's it's looking out. to see whether it carried through to the keeper. The square leg umpire says it has. And the main umpire has given Nathan Rabnot out. Rabnot's not too sure. 
And he's going to have to make his way back to the pavilion when they lose their sixth wicket. Controversial. You'll hear that Peter Burge. Well, the Rav not certainly uh, putting his 10 cents, still putting his 10 cents worth in. You're going to need to uh, remove him off the ground pretty quick if he uh, mm, wants Jimmy, to keep himself out of trouble. Well, Jimmy Pearson is asking to just keep going. But the, the umpire's conferred. That's why I didn't think yeah. it was, there was bat in it. Yeah. While well, he looked at the square leg umpire. You hear the noise. Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't a matter of uh, it not... But did it carry? The square leg umpire had a good view of that. He's raised his hands like the Pope at the pulpit. And well, I think it carried. we could see from here that it could carry. So it was, for my thing, it was whether that noise was bat, bat or thigh pad. Mm. Well, but the, the if you have a look on the screen there, it says he's out. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the way it goes. Lock and Pepper yeah. takes his fourth catch and of the match. Rabnock can uh, watch it on the highlights package tonight. Mm. That's the beauty of it, as opposed to our era, where uh, <laughs> you could go back into the dressing room and say, no, it didn't carry, it didn't carry, and there was no footage ever to prove whether it did or didn't. It didn't bother. It was like LBWs. No, I was never out. So, has it come so off bottom, the battle bottom edge. So, it's hit, it's hit, he's hit it. I think he, yeah. I think he concedes that he's hit it, he's but he's hit spun it. around the... He didn't think it, obviously didn't he didn't carry. think it carried. No. But it, it certainly carried, Pfeffer got his gloves underneath. It was a good bit of keeping because it was diving to the ground pretty quickly by the time it came through to the keeper. Well, they've lost their sixth wicket now. Six for 172. It keeps just getting that harder and harder. McInerney, the South Australian batter, comes in, the left-hander. And he's got... Well, there's a lot of work for Jimmy Pearson. It's, it's just not... Yeah, he's, They've just got... You mentioned Billy. He needed somebody else. That, yeah, like I said, Lockwood Smith, 32, and that was off 57 deliveries. He's the next top scorer. And then Simon Malenko, 22 off 18. Yeah. Malenko or Baisley, if they were being brought in that early, had to get a half century each. Well, that's going to be your wide ball. Second, he finishes the. Uh, that's, that's Interesting. Yeah, the I think square leg umpire called it the wide, as he as he should. I think he's and no. I think he he's only the, called him for just that's the first the bouncer in the in the over. I don't think he called wide at all. Okay, I know that they looked. I thought there was a signal coming. We'll find out shortly. It's flying over the top, no. isn't it? Anyway, no, as you were. To put it in as a legal delivery, so. McInerney. Waits for Mark Steggity. Good feeling there from Andrew Gody, but not good enough. He's got a hand to it. It's going to slow it down. I'll turn for two. I'll think about three. It's a long, long way away, and he'll come back. Good running from McInerney. He gets three to the total. He's off the mark. And Steckity proving himself, as as you mentioned earlier, and we've talked about his uh, Bulls career for quite a long time, a better bowler in that second and third yeah. spell than the first spell. He tends to get a lot of uh, a lot of wickets, uh, middle to tail enders, because of the likes of uh, Michael Nisa or Luke Feldman of late or Cameron Gannon seem to make the breakthrough, but Steggity, it's a team game. That's one... Rises on Jimmy Pearson before he glides it down to third man for a single. It's going to be a pretty fair Bulls attack this season to look at Nisa, Wildermuth and Steckity. Yeah, and then you've got uh, Doggett. Doggett around. Um, if, if they want to play the fourth bowler or play the um, the spinner and Swepson. So pretty fair, and Wildermuth, of course, being the batter and bowler. Yeah, well, I certainly hope that, uh, as we see Andrew Goody come back, uh, continue in the attack. Yeah, it'll be interesting, uh, this team selection for the Queensland Bulls, which is on the 28th. There's no red ball cricket, I don't think, leading up to that selection process. We'll no. sort of ask Ryan Harris here. Bangers might have asked him. I'm not too sure. but So there's, and yeah, there's more form for, uh, for Bulls players than there are for Test players. As Andrew Goatey comes in. Love the shot. Good fielding. I'll think about two. Well... Steggity feels nicely. Jimmy Pearson's Jimmy Pearson's wife is about to have a baby. Well, this oh, minute. About this minute? Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> okay. But Jimmy's I there thought, you go. I thought there was some hot off the press. I was going to say. Information we, that we knew that Jimmy did. Should we tell it? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, a lot of these players, we talk about the retirements of uh, Scott Henry, Andrew Goaty's expecting his second baby. The, 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 these things come into, a, into effect in, in the 
career choices. Uh, family always comes first, so Jimmy Pearson. Um, I think the name John sounds absolutely delicious. John Pearson. It's almost regal. Ooh. Goatee. John Billy Pearson. Finds the fieldsman at extra cover, no run. Does Andrew Goatee just puts in that nagging spot? You just can't get him away. He's at that, that pace. He mixes it up. Occasionally you'll see him bring that ball closer to his right ear. And he's always seeing it moving the field. And he's only moved that play five metres, Billy. Yeah. Big deal. But it's made uh, it's gonna make McInerney think. That something's about to come differently yeah. as a bowler. He puts it on the leg side. Field by Stegarty. Another single uh, comes along, just not seeing the big flurry of boundaries that they really need to get. Well, you've got to build for the last six overs, haven't you, Bill? And then one forty-four off yeah. ninety-nine delivery. So it says that uh, one and a half runs a ball. Gody lumbers in. Pull forward of short leg for one. Jimmy Pearson gets off eighty-seven. And that's going to suggest that Pearson, yeah, needs to get to that 150, 160 mark. Yeah. University of Queensland lost their seventh wicket on their chase for 190. They now have 57 to get with three wickets in hand. Sorry, Billy. No, I was just going to say that, yeah, that young uh, Timmy Pearson's got to get 70 yeah. out of those runs, yeah. so he really does need to get himself to 150, 160 and be there at the end. Yeah. Winner Manly. Seagulls require 13 more against the Magpies of Bill Aubrey. And they have four wickets in hand with plenty of overs in, in the tank. Western Suburbs scored 112 in their rain short match of 25 overs against the Finns. So the, the puppies, well, 25 overs, you'd think they'd get that pretty easily. Gold Coast, pretty good batting side. Ipswich slaughtered the Scorchers. Six to 305 and... Sunshine Coast all out for 83. And Stegard again comes in. Andrew Goaty gives gives it to McInerney. Yep, not a good start for the uh, Sunshine Coast Scorchers. No. And that's the end of the over. So very animated conversation between Andrew Goaty and McInerney, and that will be a drinks break as uh, they go to the sideline. We'll go around the grounds. But just a reminder that tomorrow the Kath Raymond Shield gets underway. And the f tomorrow, 10 a.m., all these games start. Winner Manly Redlands is combined, so I will take on if switch here at uh, Peter Burge at EGW Wood Reserve. That's the one that's on the on the main road. West Western Suburbs. Oh, so they're playing it here on Peter Burge. Wow, there you go. Um, Western Suburbs are up against Valleys. That's a graceful oval number one. Sandgate Redcliffe will take on the Gold Coast at uh, Trevor Holmes Oval. And Sunshine Coast will take on the University of Queensland at Kerry Emery Oval. The Jody Field Shield competition doesn't start until the 19th of September. The Lord Taverners starts tomorrow. And that is... Redlands will take on Ipswich and that's at Craftsman Oval here at uh, Redlands. Norse will take on West at Ian Healy Oval. Gold Coast will take on Darling Downs in South West Queensland at Bill Pippin. South Brisbane will be at Bellberg Park against Sandgate Redcliffe. Sunshine Coast take on UQ at Reed Park. Winner Manly will take on Valleys at Bill Albury. And Toomble will take on Wide Bay at Oxenham Park, Ken McKay Oval. So there you go. There's, uh, I think that might be Lachlan Border there in the crowd. So that is all happening tomorrow. And... Um, Special note, the under-19 girls competition trophies named after Kirby Short. Ah, wonderful wow. accolade to uh, to um, one of the pioneers, if you will, of along with Jody Fields, Kirby Short, uh, uh, dual win winning captain in the uh, B women's Big Bash League. Yeah, so the under nineteen trophy named after her. Back-to-back -back premierships. Yeah. So yeah, the women's game extending into the under 19s So Jimmy Pearson's out there. He's on his knees. I mean. Uh, he Some doesn't, hydrolytes. He doesn't look overly comfortable, but no. he's had an innings where he's uh, kept for a whole 50 overs and now so far batted another 34. So 84 overs of uh, either 
keeping or batting. Mm. They'll start to take out of you in the first game of the season, no matter how fit you are. A few young fellas here watching this now, Biter. You would think it is all to do for Redlands, Valleys on top. 143 off 96 Bulls. I don't know. Who's that pair over? A lot. A lot. So there's your uh, team list uh, sheet, Kenny, uh, Billy. We'll run through that. Jimmy Pearson, of course, 88, not out. Liam Smith started, well, a couple of good shots there. But only for 32, and as we said, they just didn't go on as we look at the bowlers. And a wicket to Steckity, two to Wildermuth, two to Zand and Jay bowled very well, and one to Cameron Boyce. Yes, well. and, it, and it goes back to that was a key bowling partnership between Boyce and Jay totally where agree. the two spinners just uh, bottled up the uh, the batters Jay ended up getting the two wickets which yeah. became vital and picked up the important wickets of Smith and Ladnershane he bowled a uh, clean bowl clean Smith didn't he went straight yeah. through the gate and backed it up again to get rid of the very dangerous Marlis Ladnershane who missed time to a sweep shot, if you will, down to uh, square leg, and the Marnus is on his way for six. Simon Malenko tried with one, four, and two sixes all out for. He was out for 22. Caught by Pfeffer off the bowling of Cameron Boyce. So you're right, Billy, in that middle section with the slower bowlers. They made the breakthrough. So Mark Stegney into the attack. Hurries on to. Oh, well, there was never a run there. I'm not nah. really sure what they were thinking about, but anyway, Pearson. Or might have a word to. And where we're uh, calling the match from, we're very much side on to it, and you can just start to get a feel for the true pace of Steckity. He's uh, yeah. he's bowling pretty quick. So Late in the day, still just as quick as it was at the start of the day, the start of the innings. Foolish ball, and that's going to be square drive along the grass at the point, only the one. They're looking for two every time here, aren't they? It's just a, got too much on that Jimmy Pearson, so they only got the one. And Mark Stegley, I think, is going to come. No, he's still coming over the wheel. The umpire just might have been coming around to the left-hander. McInerney on four. And again, a big challenge for Redlands. Do they... Uh try and go the big hit or do they just decide to bat out the 50 overs and turn it into batting practice? They'll come through for a quick single. It won't be anything too lethal coming from Valley Steelsman. Yeah, uh, Conor McInerney, South Australia, debut averaging, averaging 20. Great to see him in Queensland. Conor McInerney, ex-South Australian first class top order batsman. I don't know whether he might have run into Former player Josh Dascom, who's now down in South Australia. I think Josh is still down there. He's watching. Well, Send me a text. A couple of Bulls players have headed down that way. Nathan McSweeney. Yes. Now they're going to push. They're going to try for two. They should get it. And they will turn. And two more. Pearson moves to 91. Mark Steggerty. Just the one wicket. He's certainly bowling with some pace. I don't know, he'd be faster, him or Jack Wildermuth. Mm. Close, isn't it? It is, it is quite close between the pair of them. They're both yeah. pretty quick and slippery. Yeah. Jack Wildermuth looking, looking at me as if to say, it's me, mate. Steggity. That's a quick ball. That's whipped off the pads here. He's going to find a man in the deep, just a single. It's not going to get the victory, though, for Redlands, just this... Knocking around for single, but the challenge is they've got to take the risks. As I said, do they take the risks and maybe get bowled out early, or do you just play out and, and go down by 60, 70 runs? Well, remembering that uh, batting bonus points come into it if there's equal points, so they need to be mindful of getting uh, keeping the run rate rate up. Even if they lose, they need to bat out the overs, obviously. Even if they can't get to that total, as Stegerty comes in again, they go through for another quick single, taking on the arm, has a shot, no problems. There's the Kawaj that they're feeling in the covers. 
That is the end of the Mark Steggity over. And he's seventh, one for 44. And Pearson. So the required run rate is just over nine, Billy. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on that, 9.13. And there they are. Absolute chaos from those pair. They should both be locked up. Where They should be frog marks from Peter Burge Oval. I'll tell you what they have got is uh, sore throats from uh, squawking all that. Well, it's just... I'll Arthur and Martha there. They rule. They rule big time. Mr. and Mrs. Plover, I call them. As we see Andrew Goaty continuing from the southern end. Lovely drive down to the man on the beach. Just a single, allowing that to go through to get McInerney off strike. And Jimmy Pearson. Take guard against Andrew Goaty. I don't like know how many times these two have bowled and faced each other. Well, Goaty bowling, obviously. Jimmy Pearson, a keeper. This one quite moves to uh, backward point. Andrew Goaty, can he get the breakthrough, put the final nail in the coffin? That's going to find us from Kawaja. We're in the number seven. So a bit of a hush around Peter Burge Oval as we try. Jimmy Pearson, can he get a hundred to match Jack Wilderman's effort? And he'll bat and himself I... into some good form ahead of the Shield season. Mm. That's an appeal. Out. Andrew Goaty strikes. Jimmy Pearson falls on 92. That's the breakthrough. Andrew Goaty comes to the party. Mr. Postman, the mailman, delivers. And they're now 7 for 186. Yeah, that one kept just a bit low on, on Jimmy Pearson, caught him on the front pad pretty plump. The umpire certainly gave it some thought and consideration. It wasn't a rush decision. And uh, Jimmy Pearson out for 92 off 90 deliveries. Uh, unfortunate, not, certainly deserves his century yeah. today. Battered as a, well, he's not the captain of the Redland side in this match, but certainly it was a lead from the front type innings, which they needed from their opener there. Caught on the, on the crease line, so... And warm applause from the uh, the locals. Yeah. There's Jimmy Pearson. There's a little replay here for KFC. Long way down, but the umpire, yeah, they just said Bill took his time to make his decision. and Yeah, it hit him low on the pad, so it was never going to bounce over. And there's not a lot of seam off the deck. No, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just not, going I'm not sure anything any really moved straight. <laughs> in the air. So Dylan Kritzinger and Connor McInerney. The tail, can it wag? As we, Andrew Goaty gets his first wicket. And strangely enough, Lachlan Pfeffer not involved in that dismissal. He's already got four catches. Yeah, he's earned his uh, keeping money today. Mm. Yeah, he'd be disappointed with uh, just the 10 this morning. Yeah, he started off pretty well. Yeah, just a slash outside of something as Goaty comes in, and that's Kritzinger. Getting off the mark with a single to square leg. Two balls remaining in the over for Andrew Goaty. Yeah, the wicket's being shared amongst uh, most of the Valley Bowlers. Donald White um, still yet to take one, but certainly took a, a, a nice catch, took the catch to dismiss Marnus Lavender, saying just as important as a bowling wicket. As we see Goaty come in again. McInerney. Oh, that's going to fall short. Andrew Goaty just makes his way back. So University of Queensland, well, they're 9 for 146 now. They still trail by 44 against North, so... Well, unless the tail... And that tail isn't... An, well, it might be a little bit stronger since Scott Wallace retired. He did get a lot of runs, did Waltz. Goaty again, and that's going to find... Extra cover again. So Will Crook and Harry Walker are at the crease there for UQ. So you would think, I could be wrong, Norse might just get that one at the end of the over. Winner Manly required just the one run to defeat South Brisbane. They're six down. And there's uh, one over left in that game. Grayson Jones is on 41. Top scorer for the Seagulls, Cameron Trask. Liam Hope Shackley making his first 
appearance in Seagulls colours. Put a 40 on the board. We can see a change of bowler here too with uh, Cameron Boyce. Interesting, with the wind. On. With the wind, eh? From with the, the wind, yeah. yeah. Maybe try and entice the uh, Redlands batters to have a go to see if they'll pick up some cheap wickets that way. And as you mentioned before, Ipswich just absolutely put the sword to the Scorchers, winning that one by oh, lots, 222 runs. And make it a pleasant drive home for the Ipswich boys. Yes. Foolish ball has been... Push straight down the ground here at Peter Burge, just the one run. Here, Sunshine Coast all out for 83. Wickets going shared around. Smith, Llewellyn, Wood and Luddit two apiece. And Sean Luddit just getting the other one wicket. So that's a massive win there for Ipswich. There's Boyce coming in from the clubhouse end. He's got something behind that as Boyce, but they'll get a single. Yeah, showed all his experience. Got taken in one over, but the rest of the time just bowled nice and tight lines. He's been around first-class cricket for a long time, played a lot of BBL matches. Boyce, a quick ball. That's going deep, deep, and just inside the fence, four runs. So Kritzinger, is he going to try and make something out of nothing? So at least that one landed inside the fence and we get the ball back straight away. Yes. Up down in the creek. We've had a couple go down into the creek. Good shot there by Kritzink. Puts his foot to the ball, swings through it, sweeps it nicely over the backward square leg for four. Boyce again. He rocks back, tries to smash one through extra cover. Beats the infield but not the outfield. I see some fireworks coming, Billy. I don't know whether that's the right... Ploy, considering you need to bat the overs out to get your uh, net run rate. It came down to uh, getting you into the finals. Not Boyce. Being tidy. One for 54 of his eight overs so far. Ooh. That's nice, a quicker ball. Nice delivery. Yeah. Going back on the back foot. Get, got that one out. <laughs> He's in all sorts of trouble there, McInerney. But no, at the end of the over there, good one there for Cameron Boyce. Yep. 13 overs remaining. 126 off 78. I'm not sure how good my maths are. I'm not going to so try to do that one. Nine and over. There we go. The netball courts behind Peter Burge. This is a Redland Sporting Complex so they play bowls over the back, the, uh, the Wellington Point Bowls Club and then Bocce over a bit further and obviously the three ovals here Kratzman and EGW Wood ovals plus Peter Burge as Gody comes in again and that's been pushed down to long on for just the one So big area is the Redlands where population expansion is getting bigger, close to uh, Stradbroke Island. Yeah, big catchment area for cricket all the way through from uh, Wellington Point all the way down to Redland Bay. Yep. And then back in towards, well, back in towards Cooparoo, I guess, in the end. Capella, yeah. And the Gabba itself. One, two bounces down into the deep, just the one run. So, Andrew Goatee not allowing anything that's hittable. Could sing on strike. Andrew Goatee, I'll try and get his stats up. It must be absolutely phenomenal. He comes in to bowl, finds mid on, just a single. He's yeah, been pretty tight today. Hasn't really gone for that many boundaries. Just a lot of ones and twos. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't uh, come on early. As we, I'm just going to bring up Andrew Goaty's record. 
as he comes in again. Just bowls at the same peak, speed and pace as he as the first over. Thinking about two? No, I don't think he was ready for that one at all. Was uh, McInerney? He was happy just to take the single. Okay, Andrew Gody, 344 matches, highest score of 179, best bowling figures 8 for 61, over 10,000 runs, had a strike rate of 100, with 20 tons and 48 fifties as he comes in again. Short ball, smacked or spanked as we brought to the Peter Birch commentary down the mid on. And for bowling, he has taken 443 wickets, Billy. An average of 26. And I'm just trying to see if there's a... It doesn't say how many fifers. So, there you go. He's played a bit of cricket. McInerney. Oh, big left-hander. Waits for Andrew Goady. And straight bat. Finds Mark Steggerty at extra cover. No run. And that's the end of the over. Billy Deans is going to jump out as we... Well, obviously, uh, Lee Drennan's going to come in underneath the headphones. And he obviously didn't hear any of my commentary. Otherwise, he wouldn't be standing next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, how are you? The voice of Queensland cricket, mate. Uh, yeah, uh, fell for the old five-card trick from Mr. Wildermuth. Yeah, I think I was out scared, actually, unfortunately. First ball was a quick one at your, at, at your melon. Yeah, I didn't play that much better. And then second one, even worse. So well, just, uh, it was going to hit me in the beak, though, so I was pretty happy to make it out of there. Yeah, we don't want you... Uh, yeah, we don't want the elephant man doing... Uh, we got the chocolate, so we'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, the toss earlier uh, as Cameron Boyce comes in again. Absolutely. Sweep shot. It's a nice shot. And equally well fielded. Come back for two. Well, just on that, uh, you've got to be disappointed with the fielding today from the boys. Yeah, definitely. It was, uh, it w no, it wasn't at all what we were after. It can be hard, I guess, that mm. we probably haven't done as much fielding as you'd love to in pre-season. If training starts at 5.30, you've got about half an hour worth of light. So you probably learn quite a bit from your first couple of games, I think, with in terms of fielding. But that was, yeah, definitely 320 that they got is a, is a much lower total if we, if we hold on to a couple of relatively simple chances there, you'd say. Boyce comes in again to Chris Singer, goes for a single. Um, all six games today, the side that's won the toss has sent the opposition into bat. Unusual. I don't know if you know those stats. No, I didn't. Was that always, um, uh, Evan Bancroft suggested that's what you guys like to do, you like to chase, or do you, is it a case that you like to bowl first and get a good, uh, good, good short total to, to run down? Yeah, I think it's a little bit to do with this ground as well. Peter Burge Oval, we, we definitely had, that was our recipe for success last year, was chasing, chasing totals for sure. Um, but it definitely this particular ground, you can, it can nip around for the sort of first hour and, and feel like it's quite difficult to bat on, and then probably here now is where you want wickets in hand and, and to be batting nice and deep into the second innings. That's where it seems to be the best conditions we, we've always thought. All right. Thoughts of a second run there. Uh, big crowd here today. Um, and also uh, on on uh, KO TV, Premier Grade Cricket. How good? That's awesome. It's, yeah, it's a really, really cool. It's certainly a, a great experience, something that I've never been a part of before. So I thought that was fairly impressive. And, and it makes sense. There's so many good players playing. Obviously, the first innings, Jack Wildermuth's uh, Jack Wildermus innings there in the first innings was chanceless and one of the best that I've had scored against me. And then he's coming and bowled as well. So yeah. he's seen some very, very good players. Yeah, obviously, Usman Khawaj is here as well. Um, he, we wait for Cameron Boyce to come in again. Yeah. Waiting for him is Critzing. He's on 13. Foolish ball. And that's going to be pushed out to mid-wicket. Thinks, goes down yeah. and tells him no. Um... Yeah, I think the, the thing with the Redlands, obviously Jimmy Pearson gets the score, nobody else really contributed to make this uh, a, a more uh, challenging run rate. Definitely, yeah. We've left ourselves with a, with a lot of work to do for these two batsmen. There's, they both can bat. So Mack and Ernie played a couple of games for the Redbacks, South Australia. Crit Singer, obviously, really exciting young prospect. So still some hope there. Uh, but we've, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy's really played a lone hand. Um, in terms of what he's provided this innings, and then everyone else probably left a few out there. Um, 
Mate, what's going on with the field places, mate? He, he sent you everywhere, didn't he, today? Uh, <laughs> mate, you, were, you, you, you and Marnus were just doing, uh, catching an Uber. If you had a look at the uh, the run chart, you're almost playing AFL. I know you're a very fit man, but, geez, you're pushing the friendship with some of the field places, mate. Well, were you I happy was, with that? I was actually meant to play our AFL grand final today, too, <gasps> so I'm not, I haven't been updated on the result there, how the boys went, but uh, I felt like I probably ran more today than I would have in that game. <laughs> it's, uh, you, seem to be I mean, you can take it as a little bit of a compliment because it means they want me in the game, I guess. They want me in the hot spots. But mm. but certainly, yeah, I don't think the cardiovascular system was quite as happy with the result. So could you have... Uh, that wasn't in the back of your mind. If I get there quickly, I'll just go over and play in the third quarter, fourth yeah. quarter, something oh, like should, that. I Where's the final? That, I should say that now. I think it's at Sandgate, so a little, oh, bit, wouldn't a little bit too far away. But, mm. yeah, I'd love to use that excuse. But, no, unfortunately, uh, my abysmal dismissal had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Andrew Goaty. And that's big. High, high, and over the fence, six. So, needs to be done, McInerney. Someone was very happy with that in the crowd. Mr. And Mrs. McInerney. Yeah, well, he's from he's from Adelaide, so I wouldn't have thought he's got too many fans up here, but someone's taken a liking to him. Might have been the Tigers themselves, but yeah. uh, just the start of this year, that you've obviously were the season launch, a lot of retirements from great players. So it's, a, it's a new era in the Premier Grade competition. Yeah, absolutely correct. I think particularly for, for someone like University, a club side like University, we see... They've been such a powerhouse, certainly ever since I've been back in Queensland yep. since 2018. They haven't lost too many games of cricket, uh, and they've had a lot of players who withdraw, and, and notably sort of Scott Walter, Scott Henry, Michael Phillips, and the, the Mitch Fry. There's so many, actually. Yep. Uh, so that that would be definitely a new-look side. But then, yeah, throughout the competition, there's been there's been probably a couple of retirements from players that have contributed heaps mm-hmm. of runs and wickets uh, across the years. But I think the competition's still going to be fine. You look at the calibre on display in this game, and, and you know that we're in pretty good hands. Andrew Goody again. That one's been smacked down. That will be one bounce. Two. Certainly trying to take the game on now. OK, the competition, obviously, white ball cricket leading into the uh, the Shield competition. Uh, not ideal preparation for uh, for uh, the uh, the Shield boys, but uh, they had a good summer. There's a lot of prospects there uh, coming through. Jack Wildermuth, um, yourself, obviously, uh, you're probably behind Jimmy Pearson as a second-choice keeper. So Lock, we, we Lock might see... Lock and Pfeffer, I reckon, might be in front of me. We so. might see a bit of uh, Tonya Harding stuff happening <laughs> with the Iron Bar on some of the wicket keepers by Lee <laughs> Trennan. But uh, the depth for the Queensland side is, uh, is certainly um, is strong this year. Bowling, wicket keeping, batting. Uh, there's no reason why we can't go all the way. Absolutely, I, th- I would think so. Yeah, you say that it's not ideal preparation, but I think a lot of 50 over cricket. There's a lot of time for okay. certainly those top order batters to still just have time in the middle to bat on turf and to bat in game situations. So I think they'll actually get more out of it than than what you potentially realise. You know, not playing. I think they might play one game of red day cricket, uh, red ball cricket. Sorry, before they leave. Andrew Goody again, that's hit on the ground. Stephen says, I'm not going to field that one. <laughs> uh, COVID, mate, obviously uh, that stopped training a little bit. Did you get up to anything now? Did you uh, try and master a little bit of macrame? Did we try some more c- cooking dishes? Uh, I know there's a lot of work with uh, we've got the chocolates, uh, the dad jokes. Is yeah. there anything, anything you did in COVID over the last 18 months that you didn't do before it all happened? Like, are you... No. Watching a lot of Judge Judy. <laughs> My cooking's pretty ordinary, so KFC got a workout, which was good. <laughs> uh, download the app, which kept me busy. Uh, what else would I have done? We got the Sounds chocolates. Like nothing. We got the chocolates. It's good, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it gives you a hobby. So when we've had those lockdowns and we've had. Um, you know, no group training and no big groups and, and things like that. Uh, then it's it's been it's been. I guess awesome to to be able to have like a project to to rip into while I'm sitting at home. So right. yeah, probably the week at the chocolate stuff's been good. Whole a couple of preparation like we had Nick Benton on one of those episodes who was on Big Brother. So I found myself watching a lot of those episodes, which I probably wouldn't do. Okay, boys, trying to uh, slow this charge from McInerney and Kritzinger, and. Do you know a lot about uh, these these uh, two players? Yeah, absolutely. McInerney is living at my house at the moment. Is he? So, yeah, he is. Uh, so he's he's from Adelaide. He plays for Woodville um, in Adelaide, yep. South Australia, and um, up here for yeah, just just because the season starts so much later down yep. there in terms of where they've got footy going for so much longer and sharing grounds and things like that. So. He's come up and get some sunlight, get some sunshine and play as many games as possible. So Speaking of Lee Drennan, the uh, wicket keeper here for the Redlands Tigers as Cameron Boyce comes in again. It's been slapped down to mid-on for 
to White for no run. Uh, Valley's always, always going to be a tough uh, assignment first up. Uh, you see where you're at in the off-season. Um, what have you seen today suggest they can't go all the way? No, certainly with this side, they, they go a long way. Obviously, we know that they lose a lot of players because they're all so good and playing for Queensland, so you won't see them the full-grade cricket season. But uh, with this side particularly, they are very, very impressive, and that's a nice shot. Lovely shot behind square leg. Four more. Well, it's keeping us guessing. Still uh, nine and a half overs to go. You, you just don't know what might happen while well, you've got wickets in the shed. So are you... Um, next week, who you got... That's an excellent question, actually. Mm. Uh, I can check for you. That's right. Over just one week at a time, you know. So your AFL season's advantage. over, so you'll be into the uh, <laughs> yeah. in, in, into uh, concentrating cricket. on your cricket next week against. Yeah, you cricket. Better find out. I mean, I was concentrating on my cricket this week as well. It might not have been evident out there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was definitely trying to go well. Uh, next week we have Redlands Tigers versus Stangate Redcliffe. All right. Oh, that one's just uh, popped through. There's half an appeal from Boyce. <laughs> Nobody else went up. No. Except for the guy in Someone the grandstand. grandstand. Happy to umpire as well. Yeah. Which is excellent. Yeah. Sandgate Redcliffe up uh, up there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, did it Sandgate Redcliffe, I think we're away. We might be home, actually. I could have checked that at the same time. Toe of the bat there. That gets pushed out to midweek. Thinking about two. They're going to take on the arm. Yeah. And not. home safe. So they're well, going to make a run here. here to be fair, yeah. if they're awake. But no. no. McInerney and Critzinger, this partnership's starting to build here. 102 required off 55. And they came in and the score was... It certainly can be a ground where runs can come quite quickly in the back up, particularly, I think, hitting down towards the school. That's where we saw a lot of sixes hit this morning with the breeze there. So a 36-run partnership between these two. Uh, going on the back of the partnership of... Oh, Blazing and Trent, it's just zero... Yeah, no, that wasn't a great one. The, the zero partnership wasn't quite what we were after. Second grade, uh, the second 11 competition returns, I'm hoping, for yeah, Queensland. does it? So, I don't know much about that. So hopefully uh, you'll get the, the, the nod on that one. Do you enjoy that concept? Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's outstanding. It's it's great. It's a really good just the calibre of cricket. There's plenty of great players on display. Uh, and it's it's just an awesome. It's the only opportunity we really get yeah. to sort of play four days of cricket when I'm when I've got the opportunity to play those games. Yeah. So that's uh, that's something that's pretty cool. And there's a lot more sort of thought and, and tactics that go into it when you know that you have to bowl the team out twice as well. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Andrew Godey, uh continued from the southern end. I spoke about his stats before. Andrew Godey, he's he's played a bit of cricket and played it very well. He has. He's only playing white ball cricket this year. Yeah. Um, but he's still been very, very good at it. I think he got 57 off 34 balls today. So. That's big. That's gone as well. Keep an eye on where that goes, kids. Six as well to McNerney. Oh, dare to believe Redlands. They're starting to come back. Seven for two, 29. Wow. Just, this is the hitting end, I think. This is where there you go. A lot of runs scored. Oh, oh, now that's a, that's a good point there, uh, uh, Lee. Is it? Is there? A, much difference in either end, apart from the breeze. Obviously, he comes in later in the afternoon, but is it one in a little bit quicker, do you think? Yeah, I think it always feels easier yeah. to hit to that end, just because yep. the carry from the bowler bowling at this end as well, it feels like you're able to get on top of the bowler a lot more. Um, Steckity and Wildermuth have been truly quite tough to face from the yep. other end because it's quick and it's bouncy and it's getting through. And oh, good running, and, uh, Andrew Goody. coming back. Ooh, geez, a test of the arm here. Well, Valleys aren't home just yet, are they, Lee? Well, this is what Valleys did so well. Dylan McLaughlin, actually, I don't know what he ended up with, but the role that he played and just his ability to get Wildermuth back on strike all the time uh, was very, very... Very impressive, and it made a big difference for them uh, because Wildermuth was hitting the ball so cleanly, but we was able to get back on strike so many times because Dylan, every time the ball would go to a boundary fielder, he was coming back for two. So yeah. we need our Dylan to do the exact same thing. McInerney, 34 of 28, so he's he's going to be the dominant striker, I think. Were you involved in the uh, the catching synchronised diving thing down there? No, no? that was that pretty good. Abnod and Connor McInerney, yeah, that could have been one of the all-time great catches. Wouldn't it? So, would have been very good. Andrew Goaty comes in again to McInerney. He's going to let that one go through. Andrew Goaty looks straight back at the uh, umpire to suggest uh, maybe it was a little bit wide. McInerney thinks it was. He thinks it was wide, that's for sure. Still two balls to go. Well, you and I are going to jump out and uh, and even Bancroft and Billy Dean will come in to take us home in this could be a no at the end. Yeah, absolutely. Eight overs to go. Just a little bit of hitting required. That's going straight That's down. Is it going to split between them? No. no. Chris, Head, 
just quickly before we jump off, how do you go in these situations when you're watching a close tussle? Are you a nervous man? Do you go out the back or do you hit the smarties? What do you do? I think I'm, I'm pretty nervous, but I, I also have to always watch. I'm not one of those people okay. that can't bring themselves to right watch. I, I just sort of I live vicariously through the people batting. I really get invested in the game and, and hope and <laughs> hope that they can win it for us. That's <laughs> right. for sure. Especially when I've contributed nothing. <laughs> well, I think you did a lot in the field, mate. I plenty, think you did a lot yeah, of travelling. kilometres. Yeah, you, I think you got your 10,000 steps easy. He's out. Gody comes in again. That's going to be smacked out to uh, deep mid off for no run. That's the end of the uh, for one run. One run yep. End of the over. Seven for two hundred and thirty-three. Eight overs remaining. Ninety-eight, eighty-nine, uh, forty-eight off eighty-nine balls. Evan Bancroft and Billy Dean will take you home for this uh, KFC clash. And here we go. How about that, Billy? Getting that insight from Lee Drennan in the middle of the game. How good's that? What a ripper he is. Very brave man to say that he got out because he was scared. <laughs> he actually did agree. He did I would agree. never have ever admitted that, even though a lot of times I was. I think he's joking now. I think he did agree that he was going to go into the hook shot and thought, let's just pull out of this one, and then all of a sudden got caught in no man's land. But it's been a great partnership by these two lads. And Connor McEnany batting very well, and as we heard before, living with Lee Drennan at the moment. So hopefully a bit of that's rubbed off. So a, and we've got some very good batting too from Dylan Kritzinger. He's looking really good. He's come yeah. up... He's, Playing, playing a good little hand here. We need 89. The Redlands Tigers need 89 from 48 balls. Seven for 233. And looks like Xander Jay is coming back into the attack, who bowled superbly earlier on today with two for 30 off seven. Good seeing her off the Good back, seeing foot. back foot. That's a magnificent shot. Running around only for two. Just it's, waited for that one. They're still struggling to find the boundary as regularly as what the Valleys batters did. The Valleys regularly found the fours and the sixes. And that really gave them a good hurry along. They've had to sort of dig back a bit, haven't they? But anyhow, here he is again, Xander. Oh, no, he's gone for the big one and he's going to be caught. Cool. Dylan Kritzing is out. And Xander Jay picks up his third wicket of the innings. And what a, what a great performance it has been by him. Well, he's just, it's just put pressure on the batters the whole way through. That They've never had a gimme ball um, through his spell, and it's just made the batsmen make shots that they normally would not have done. Kritzing, it, uh, he did have to keep going. There was a short one. He just, he just got, a bit, got it a bit early, got the back of the, the bat there, and it's gone up in the air for an easy catch. But good little knock from Kritzinger, and uh, unfortunately he didn't go through. But and we've got, coming in the bat now... Young Sinfield, who is a very good bat, averaged about 30 last year in first grade, and um, also played. He's playing a lot of school cricket last year. He's a, he's a uh, but bats very well. Got him home in a couple of these games last year in the one day games. So very good little player, and with the way that McInerney's batting, there's still there's still a chance. They'll keep working hard. I've given up on him. <laughs> I, think, I think 89 off 47, two wickets in hand. There's yeah. no space left for mistakes. No, there is no mistakes. Which is, which is what where Chris Singer found himself. He had to, he had to keep going. They've got yeah. to go two and o, to a ball. Yeah, they do. And so you're going 12 and over. Still what you want to do is just try and get as close as possible for the run rate. You're playing for the stats. That's right, Billy. And I think I suppose I am showing a little bit my Redlands, <laughs> my my Redlands um, heritage, hoping that um, they'll make a game of it. Not hoping. I'll tell you, if they get, if they get it, it will be <laughs> one of the most outstanding games of uh, 50 over cricket in club history. So two left-handers now batting, joined, going back for two, and um, a good little start. There's still Wildermuth with two overs to go, and Stickety. There's still a quality bowling. Like that's it's been the challenge for Redlands all day that they just haven't had a chance for a bowler to go at. No, you're right, Billy. And I, there we go. He's got that though. That's a great shot, and it is Drops. gone for six. Has it? It's a great effort, and the deep by Andrew Godey. And I think it's just gone for four. It's just gone for four, yep. The umpire's signaled four. So that was McInerney because they did cross when Kritzinger got out. Yeah, big challenge there um, because he was looking straight in the sun to take that catch and coming straight into his... Here's the KFC replay now. Yep, he's got it there. Here we go, back to bowl again. Oh, well taken by the keeper, Pfeffer. He tried to put that into orbit. 
But again, some fine bowling from Jay. Three for 38 off 7.5. One more ball to go in this over. And he just pushes it down to deep mid on Mac. And then it's his job now. I think Sinfield can stay with him. But another fine over. Three for 38. The score eight for 241. Need 80 to win off 42 balls. McInerney 42 off 34. Sinfield yet to face a ball. Had a bit of a chat in the middle. We'll see if uh, Goaty's still going to continue to bowl. Right arm tight delivery. He hasn't given too much for the uh, batters to go at. That's actually a good little spell. And maybe we thought... Earlier on, John Devine and I were wondering why he wasn't bowling, whether he was injured. But the plan was for him to come on in those middle overs, and he's done a good job. I mean, one for 41 off seven in that in these middle overs is a great effort. Yeah, that's 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 pretty economical bowling for the fifth bowler in in the side. And that one wicket was James Pearson, which is the important wicket today for 92. But he'll be now bowling to McInerney. And that's a lovely drive for one. So he's done it very well, McInerney, in his first yes, um, yep. outing for Redlands. He's come down from, well, South Australian originally, but been in Darwin in the uh, winter series that's been going up there, the T20 series. Long way to get to Brisbane, isn't it? South Australia, up to Darwin and back down here for a game of cricket at Redlands today. Yeah. Great to have you here. And, he's, and he bowled well too. He did. I don't recall him bowling for South Australia, but he certainly uh, held his end today. So Sinfield's role here is just to knock a couple of singles around. He's come out. He can do that too. Goads running into bowl to him. And uh, as I said, knock a single around. He goes for the big cover drive. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's there to hit, he's got to have a crack. He's got to get the bat on the ball. He's... Uh, He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a bit of a plotter, but I have seen him play some big shots. And you probably need a couple of those, yeah. Billy, to get him home. Big ass, as I said, yeah, he's got some talent, but he's still, still a kid learning his craft at this level. And Goad showing every bit of the experience that he has. Just running in there and bowling a nice full Yorker. And that's what he'll keep doing. Um, it's good to see that he's not injured. As we were a bit worried earlier on, but he's uh, runs in a long run up for a, a long run up for a, uh, a medium pacer. As he runs in again to bowl to Sinfield, and Sinfield just taps him away for one. Go dives. Probably thinks he wishes he hadn't because there's only one run in it anyhow, and the old legs are just sitting there going, "That was probably silly, Andrew." <laughs> it wasn't. They've been around the uh, the east set up as well as Redlands for for a long time. If I'm right in recalling, two two outstanding junior cricket. Well, they came late juniors or came into seniors as juniors into East, being Greg Ritchie and Shane Watson. Yeah, well, Shane Watson definitely. Um, he was a junior at Redlands. He didn't didn't actually play. Might have played East Redlands. And um, Greg Ritchie came over from Valleys a bit later on to okay. captain ah. to captain East. Yeah, he did after going through Wynnum Goads now bowling in. To McInerney, who's has he got a bit of that? He has. That's a Dorothy. That's a big six over mid on, and he hasn't given it away. The South Australian, he's decided that I want to keep this game going for as long as I can. And Jack Sinfield says, "Well played, great shot by McInerney over mid on." You know, Greg Ritchie came over to East um, to captain the okay. side, and uh, he captained the '89 Premiership side, which is uh, we had a few come through. Yep. Stewie Law come over for a couple of years too. Go uh, back in to bowl again to Being McInerney. From Ipswich, I remember Fat Cat and Shane Watson coming from Ipswich down to the Brisbane scene. 49, has he got a bit of that too? That's another six, flat six. And that's his 50, move from 49 to 55. What a great knock it's been in his first knock for the Redlands at Cricket Club. Batting, great batting by McInerney. And they're giving him a great round of applause. What a great yes, knock, Billy. Really. It was, a very good knock. It, Important one, perhaps, in the in the scheme of it. I guess while there's lo life, there's hope. He's got it down to 66 off 36 balls. Still very much two runs a ball. He would have, they'd love to have this one or two more wickets there, but he has hit that 
flat. Yeah. Andrew those... Gobe was still recovering from the dive and maybe just thought then that he he was just over pitched, just trying to trying a bit hard, as he always does. He's just a a gutsy cricketer, Andrew Gobe. I love cricketers like 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 him that yeah. just give it a go and keep trying. Every club needs a journeyman like that. They sure do. Xander J back on to bowl his ninth over. And that's a nice shot too. Straight. And that was by Jack Sinfield this time. So he takes two. Eight for 258. Needs 64 from 35. Yeah, nice little test for Xander J here. Have both batters that are really going for him this time. Keep his nerve. And that's over cover. Lovely shot. That should get him another two. Nice arm. Your end. Good call by McEnany to let Sinfield know that there was a chance of a run out. Lovely throw from Donald White. He's got a lovely arm and a very good fieldsman. Bit of pressure back on now, Bill. Yeah. Taking it back to the Valleys players. Another pull shot just for one. Out to deep mid-wicket by Sinfield, who has just decided, I think, that I'm going to go as well. You need a bit of help? I'll go with you. Been very impressed with Connor McInerney. And also Xander Jay at the same time. Oh, he's got that one. Has he got enough of it? Field is looking into the sun. Looking into the sun, and six is that a six? It is a six. It's no. a four. It's a boundary four. But both fielders out there have lost it, but they are looking directly into they the sun. They are looking directly into the sun there. It is a tough position to be in, but that's another boundary to McInerney, who goes to 59 off 38. Need 57 to win off 32. And it's game on. Goes again, fielder out there into the sun. He's lost it as well. Oh, it's gone over his head for six. Did not see one bit of that. And that's a Dorothy and another six to Redlands. And another six to McInerney who moves to 65 of 39. They need 51 to win from 31 balls. Billy, this is looking good for a ripping finish. Well, a lot of pressure back on young Xander J here. Got been gone for a four and a six. He's taking a bit of a fancy to that deep mid-wicket boundary. He's gone for 15 runs in this over already. Has one more ball to go, and it has been a great spell. I mean, Redlands are going for it at the moment. I'm not going to take anything away from his bowling. He bowled 3 for 54 off 8.5, and he's got another over after this. What would McInerney do here? Oh, went for the another big, big, big hit. Missed it. Through to Feff. Brilliantly taken. Not out. And that's the end of the over. The score, 8 for 271 of 45 overs. Redlands need 51 to win from 30 balls. That brings it back into a T20 type scenario. McInerney 65, it is. You're right, Billy. It, so it, it, in this day and age, we go, well, that becomes gettable when you get back below the two and over. You, you're so right. And to look a, at this. Ball. Look at the crowd there now. A few of them chewing a few nails. Ball coming down. Look at the crowd. We've got a great crowd. 65 off 40 now. Jack Sinfield, 6 off 6. And it'll be interesting to see who comes on now to bowl. And it is, as we thought, Steckity. The big guns, Billy. Well, he's going to have to go that way, Valley. So they've got to bring Steckity and Wildermuth back. You don't want to be caught short with overs left. And those two hadn't bowled out their 10 overs. So... He's just going to now, he knows they're going. He's a very, very good cricketer. And he's probably going to bowl pretty full. He's got a deep mid on. He's got a deep mid wicket. He's got a deep cover. He's got a fine leg, deep fine leg, and a deep third man. So they're all out. Where does McInerney go? Not quite ready to go. Well, he's going to have to go, uh, judging on how he's batted in the previous overs, he's going to be playing an arc down towards mid on cow corner. Here he is. And that's a beautiful little late glide for one. It takes him to 66. And that'll be the challenge that Steckity will be trying to make sure he doesn't get in underneath him. And yeah, happy to, to play those glides just for a single. He moves um, the deep 
square leg around to a deep mid-wicket. Knows something about young Sinfield, that that's where he'll probably go. Well, same with that traditional left-hander. Well, it's actually McInerney play. back on strike. That was Sinfield, the two lefties got us there. And he will, uh, McInerney, <laughs> he's they're nearly, they're nearly together out there. They know where he likes. But he has hit one this one. He'll go a bit squarer, hopefully, for himself. That's a beautiful back cut to deep cover. Sinfield 7 at the moment. That's another one to McInerney. He moves to 66. 49 from 28 balls. Two wickets in hand. The second would be happy just to go a run a ball in this over. Again, just to up the uh, strike rate a little bit more to make it harder for the Redlands batters. That's right. In comes Sekety now. Another big swing. They'll be looking for two here, but they won't take it on the arm. Challenge four again for the Redland batters. They can't afford to make a mistake, so they're only one ball away from a dismissal, which again throws it back in favour of Valleys. It sure does, Billy. Steckity one for 47. It's been a good over so far, just singles. And McInerney was thinking to himself, I probably need a four or a six here. And that's about to umpire. This says that's your warning. That is the warning. That's the one for the over. Which is good because you get it in the last half of the over, not the first half of the over. McInerney walks down the wicket. He pats the wicket. He now knows two balls and over to go. 48 from 26 balls. He will be looking for the boundary. And there's a big area down here in front of the commentary box, Billy. Lovely shot. He's gone that side, but this time straight to deep mid-wicket. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, do have that big space from cow corner right round a fine leg, but the pace of Steckity makes it hard when he's not bowling him short to get him around that square of the wicket. Still 47 from 25 in a T20 game. You're right in the game. That's four overs to go. But the wickets in hand, Billy, is the issue yeah, at the moment. There's only those two wickets left, and one of those wickets will be batter 11. Yes. It's not as if it's batter three that's one of those two wickets. No, you're correct. Here he is bowling now to Sinfield. And that's a beautiful cut shot from Sinfield for one. Put the pressure on the fieldsman, but it was equal to the occasion. And a great throw back into Pfeffer. That's the end of the over. A very good one from Steckety. And he was just showing his class and why he's a first-class cricketer. Just five runs off that over as well, so... A great over, Billy. 46 from 24 balls. McInerney 67 off 43 now. And it's been a fantastic knock for the for the debutante for Redlands. All the way from South Australia via Darwin. Must be tired. We'll be a bit sore on the legs. It's a long walk. <laughs> it's a very long walk. But it is a great effort. As we heard earlier on, Lee Drennan saying he's living with him at the moment. And he's settled into the club in a great way. He's, he's a good fella. And... Him and Jack, Jackson Sinfield here are working together very, very well. So it's great to see nine off nine. This is experience. But they've still got to go, don't they? They still have to go. Sinfield's now facing up to Wildermouth. It doesn't get any easier. You go from one shield bowler to another shield bowler. And we knew they were there. Billy, you picked it. They were, they were to come, weren't they? Steckety and Wildermouth. Wildermouth's day, two for 31 and 100. Not having a bad match. No. They're both, and both these bowlers, Wildermouth and Steckity, are death bowlers in the BBL, so they know how to close out in innings. Bowling to Jackson Sinfield, or Jack Sinfield, as we call him. And it's a lovely start by Wildermouth. First class bowling. Just took his eye off that as he tried to cut it, Sinfield. Bit annoyed with himself, knowing that 46 from 23, they'll just get... It gets a bit harder every time you have a dot ball. As he walks back to the mark, Wildermuth, having a bit of a look over at, at cover, saying don't creep in too far there. That's a good shot. Coming back for two. No, he's not. McInerney was halfway back down. Sinfield said no. But it's one run, and it does get McInerney back on strike, who's taken a big liking to that deep mid-wicket boundary, heading towards Morton Bay. And as 
John Devine said earlier, the Stradbroke Island Ferry. The few out there. You can see the deep mid-wicket, Billy. Yep. He's, he's got his hand on his... The sun's directly into his eyes. He, has no, he just knows they're playing cricket there because he can hear them, but he can't see them. This is tight now. The Valleys guys now, you can see them. They're all a bit on edge. They know. They're favourites. But they've got to stay in the game. And that is a lovely shot. And that is six. What a great shot by McInerney. Straight over mid-wicket. He didn't target the Stradbroke Island Ferry, but he targeted the bay. It was a slow ball from Wildermouth, and it just McInerney just rocked back, waited for it to come, and then just put it where he wanted to put it. And that, again, was what they needed. 39 from 21 balls, and there's a game of cricket on here. Some of the people that did leave earlier are probably on their way back. As he moves in again. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Two out to mid-wicket. Only one. McInerney moves to 74 of 45 balls. Sinfeld 10 off 11. They need 38 to win from 20 balls, Redlands. Valleys need two wickets. Jack Wildermuth, two for 39 off 8.4. Be bowling to Jack Sinfield, who's doing a great job here. He's put that down, it's going to bounce in front of him. It's one of those ones where you go in, you don't go in. And I think that Sinfield had his heart in his mouth, but it's still another single. But yeah. it was a bit of a worry there, Billy. I thought he, he might have thought he was going to get caught. Well, he did, and, and the challenge, as you said, for the field, McLaughlin, I think it is down there, whether to, to go in and try for the catch or not, I think he still made the right decision and just keeping it to the single. Nothing worse than going in, missing it, and it rolls over the right for four. One ball to go in Willamette's ninth over. He's bowling to McInerney on 74. Bowls. Straight to cover, no run, as in no, no chance of a run out, just one run. Single taken, 37 to win from 18 balls, which is three overs. So they've got to keep going, Billy. That they do. The three overs will be this one plus one from Wildermuth, and then Steckity gets the last over. It's 12 and over. 12 and over gets him a tie. And the way they're going at the moment, they're in the game. They're in the game. I'll, I'll give them that. They're in the game. And to have, a, to have these polars at the moment of Steckity and Wildermouth to finish is exactly what they needed. But on strike will be McInerney, who's batted very, very well today. As we said, all the way from South Australia. It's great to have him here playing club cricket. This makes it stronger. And Steckity runs into bowl to him. He said that straight up in the air. I don't know whether they can get to this. He's running. It will be a very good catch. It is, and it's a great catch. It's a fantastic catch out of deep mid-off. And what an innings that was. What a fantastic catch. He ran in from about 40 yards there, Billy, didn't he? Well, I'm glad it wasn't me coming in to take those catches because that was never easy. And while in the end he got there in time and, and perfect technique in sliding in underneath the ball rather than trying to catch it at his knees. Here's the replay it here. It was never straight easy, up in the air, Billy. Have a look at this. Did. Talk us through this, Billy. McInerney got right in underneath it and the fielder come running in a long way, slid underneath it, so he took it on his chest, which is the perfect technique so that if it does at least slip it's going to slip onto your chest and you've got a chance to bobble it back up into your hands. He, he sure it is. Here comes Big Home and, and that's a great innings. He's getting a great round of applause McInerney in his first game for Redlands. Put them back in the game but had to keep going so no shame in that shot at this time in the game when he's coming to bat. He had no. to keep playing shots. And Jack Beath was the uh, player that took that catch. And uh, he'll be dining out on that catch for years to come. Yeah, good pick up there. It was a great catch. Well done, Billy. He ran in from... It's basically deep mid-off. 
Yeah. And the ball was just starting to hang in the air a little bit because as it does, they've got the breeze coming in. So now we've got, they did cross. And young Jack Sidfield, can he be a hero? 36 from 17 balls. He will be a hero if he gets them home nine down and honing. But we need to be part of it. There'll be a picture of him on the uh, clubhouse wall if he brings them home. He, um, just good for him. Even, even if they don't get home, Billy, it's fantastic for a young kid like that to be out there. Young lad batting at this time of the day. It's in his hands, though. He's a toast of Southport School as well on Monday if he does. <laughs> he will as second he runs into bowl to Jack Sinfield. Bowls a short one. He knocks it out to mid-wicket. In runs the evergreen. Andrew Goad or the ever-red. Nice little throw in. Andrew, Andrew looking a little bit tired, Goaty. Well, He's big, done a great job today. Big innings and, 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 and a big spell of bowling. A great spell of bowling. He just gives his all. Just sort of touching his He's got a bit of a hobble string. going. A little bit of a hobble. I think that's just his walk now. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> just, just a permanent <laughs> I think, hobble. I think John Devine said that earlier when I said he had a hobble. He said that's just how he walks. Now he's stacking his bowling to Lachlan Honan. Oh, oh, oh. Nice big... He's out. He's out. He's, and that's the end of the game. <laughs> and that is... That was... What he didn't show, a lot, that didn't was. show a lot to to that one, but it went through and there was no appeal. Honan just walked up the wicket and it, Valleys have won. I think it was Pfeffer that just went, yeah, and that was enough for the umpire to put his finger up and says, all over Red Rover. Well, what a great performance. What a great game of cricket we've had here today. Redlands 9 for 287. They were before that one and all out 287, chasing 321. And as he went through, he did get a little nick on that, didn't he, yeah, on the KFC replay? The bottom, but he just bottom, walks off to the other yeah. side there. But what a fantastic effort today. A great chase by Redlands. Lost a couple of wickets early, unfortunately, Billy, which didn't help them. Didn't help them. And, and in that, got, I think got lost in a way. And I'll go back to the James Baisley decision. I still think that was the wrong one. Should have brought McInerney. It was either McInerney or Drinnan. Yeah. One of those two in ahead of Baisley. Um, yeah, and he was high that, side's a wonderful gift to have. It is, it is, it is. But it's a great. It was great to see Sinfield get him through. Great bowling performance from Sket, some Thackeray. Great bowling performance from Jack Wildermuth and the young Xander Jay. He bowled very, very well. Yeah. He, he went for one over, which he didn't do a lot wrong. Where we got a bit of stick, what fifteen, I think, Billy. Yeah, yeah. But today we've had a hundred from Jack Wildermuth. The boys are coming out to to all shake hands. We've had a great knock from Jimmy Pearson fantastic some great bowling it's been a great afternoon's cricket and a great morning's cricket here at peter burge oval it's been what do you reckon billy enjoyed we've, it we enjoyed it immensely we've seen some good skill good setup for the season for the kfc queensland premier cricket season the, the one day kookaburra cup kicks us off where we've seen redlands go down the holders of the one day cup from last year going down to valleys but not to be embarrassed or ashamed by it it was a it was a strong fight it was a strong fight. It was a great afternoon. Thanks to John Devine uh, in commentary with us here today. And thank you to Billy. It's been a great afternoon. I've enjoyed, enjoyed the day with you, blokes. Yes, it's been good. It's been good cricket, good fun. And thank you to, thank you to Redlands for hosting us.